I doing here? Wait a minute. You want me to intro the Opie and Anthony show? You got to get Hey, it's Larry King welcoming you to the Opie and Anthony show right here on Sirius XM Satellite yeah, Radio. Oh, fuck yeah! This place is insane. You guys like to cuss on there. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a weird show. Great guests, interesting interviews, and of course, your phone calls as well. It's not the most talked about, not the most written about, and certainly not the most listened to show in the history of radio, but I'm still proud to intro it. The show is so disorganized. Oh, shit. It's so fucking bizarre. Everybody's not politically correct. Opie and Anthony were saying this. Well, then turn off God dang Opie and Anthony, you dumbass. We're experts, and we already know this is going to be great radio, so shut the fuck up. Will else are you going to be able to say that and get paid for it? Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pride that I presented this, by the way, one of the highlights of my career. The Opie and Anthony Show. By the way, who's Jim Norton? This sounds different. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Without Opie or Anthony... My name is Sam Roberts. Everybody else is here. Jim will be here. We are doing a live show, ladies and gentlemen. There's no reason for you to go anywhere else because uh, Obi and Anthony are not here today because they're involved in the biggest court case in quite some time. I mean, every news channel that you go to from last night into this morning is talking about this case. It's one of the biggest things to happen Legally speaking, in quite some time, not only in pop culture, but I mean, it's 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 across CNN, it's across the Morning Joe. Right now, is just talking about it. There are people lined up outside the courthouses with signs, protesting because Opie and Anthony are somehow entangled in this court case. And by this court case, I mean, of course, the Sandy Kane lawsuit. Uh, Sandy Kane, as we all know by now, is the geriatric stripper who's been part of the Opie and Anthony show for some time. Uh, she's been coming in for years and years and doing humiliating things, but they're things that not only did she volunteer for, but she was paid for and enjoyed doing so much that she admitted on the air that she enjoyed it and came back for more time every time. Time and time again. Danny's here, Travis is here, Troy is here, Erock's here, Kenny's outside collecting evidence this morning because Kenny is acting somehow. I don't know how this worked out, but he is acting as Opie and Anthony's attorney in this case. Um, I've never seen a man wear as many hats as Kenny, but he's gone from uh, officer of the law to security professional here at Sirius XM to now uh, attorney, Club Soda Kenny. So he'll be representing Opie and Anthony in this, in this case against Sandy Kane. Now, apparently, uh, she, is, she has filed a lawsuit against Opie and Anthony because Opie smashed her guitar and because... Uh, Opie and Anthony made her get doctor bills. <laughs> she, yeah, she so professionally <laughs> phrased it on the summons, doctor bills. Um, what doctor bills? Like, I, mean, I would yeah. love to know the, First the of doctors all, that she's visiting. There's no such thing as doctor bills. It would be, it would be <laughs> medical costs or something like that. And second of all, there's never been anything that's happened on this show that's caused Sandy Kane to need a Band-Aid, let alone a doctor. I mean, medical professionals, uh, that wouldn't be our fault. Because she's obviously a mentally ill person. Um, and, that- and you know what, though? I think she would get, like, just doctor bills because she's probably, the, like, she probably goes to, like, those first yeah. med places just where, like, quacks. she doesn't have a doctor. She just, you walk in, you pay, like, there's, like, a flat rate. Right. And so now she, and she's just asking for a receipt. Can I have a receipt with <laughs> exactly. that? Exactly. So she can that's like, bring that's it up exactly in a lawsuit. But, I mean, nothing happens to her. We actually, she brought this lawsuit up. And, of course, I mean, we're going to take everything seriously here. Uh, at Sirius XM, that's why they call us that. And so we're going through Sandy Kane audio to find out if she has a case, if there's anything we should be worried about. But I mean, Danny, I didn't know it was Travis and me that were looking through old stuff that Sandy was complaining about that on the tapes, she's just going, this is great, I love this. And like literally, she's talking about how much fun she's having doing what she's doing on the Opie and Anthony show whether it w- and in the in the video we watched the video yesterday when Amy Schumer and, and uh, Ari Shafir were in here uh, it's on YouTube of her getting uh, it, the the video is called ritualistically abused but she wasn't actually getting abused that was just something cute we made up for YouTube um, but she's there she gets yogurt thrown at her she makes a little joke 
You know what I mean? She gets gravy dumped on her. At first she's upset, then she makes a little joke. <laughs> yeah. Then she starts laughing and she goes, good radio, right? <laughs> I mean, this was the only place in the world that would promote her. And now, uh, this is the last Sandy Kane bit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Buckle in, because this is it. This is, I mean, this is going to be the biggest Sandy Kane bit, because this is your one-stop shop for Sandy Kane coverage, for the Kane case, for Sandy Gate. Sandy Gate is today, and, and we're going to get Opie and Anthony on the phone. I'm going to try to get, uh, if they're in town, see if they want to stop by before the court case. Um, I don't know any details about what time it is or what courtroom it's at, so I don't know if, you know, because people were Twittering me last night asking if we could have some kind of public gathering to support Opie and Anthony. I, I don't know anything about yeah, it. I'm sure that would in no yeah. way be incredibly embarrassing for everyone involved. <laughs> yeah, there'd be Kurt Love and two other guys just <laughs> holding signs and Bobo saying, did you get my tweet? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I don't know where it is. We're not doing any public gatherings, but I do hope that Opie and Anthony make the most of this and do show up with uh, judges' robes and powdered wigs on because we have to get some kind of publicity about this. Like Sandy Kane, uh, she thinks obviously she's doing this for the publicity, uh, but what she doesn't realize is this is like a a big shot of publicity, which is negative because we're just pointing out how absurd the whole thing is, and that will be it. And then she will be silenced. I mean, we may never play her bits again after this because it's just so like really, like we're the only show left that would promote you. Like, I know, you know, years ago she was doing other shows, but we're the only show left that would put her on. Yeah, but she still has her, her cable show, right? I don't know if she has her <laughs> cable show. I've heard she does a local access cable show. I've never seen the show. Nobody's ever sent me tapes. It's never come up online. It, I, don't, I don't, I'm not quite sure that it exists, but she always claims. And that's the other thing. She's out in the middle of Times Square. This is what she does, quote unquote, for a living, is she steals the naked cowboys routine. If you're not familiar... She uh, 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 took the Naked Cowboys gimmick of wearing a cowboy hat and underpants and did it in Times Square, but yeah, with claimed... A, with a guitar. And <laughs> right. by the way, she can't even, like, she's all upset about this guitar that's broken. The record should clearly note that Sandy Kane does not know how to play the guitar. No, it has, she has no idea how to play the guitar. She just kind of holds it and strums at it, but and, she's not really playing anything. And in this lawsuit that she's filing, which is against the main complaint is that Obi broke her guitar... <laughs> Not only did Opie give her four hundred dollars for a guitar that on that video she claimed was worth two hundred, she took the four hundred, she spent it on God knows what, and she went out to Times Square with a bumper sticker over the hole in the guitar and kept playing it for I mean at this point that was nineteen months ago, and she's been playing it the whole time. She stands out in the middle of Times Square here in New York City and she pretends to play guitar and she tries to charge people a couple bucks to take pictures with her when in actuality I've been out there I've interviewed her out there in Times Square and what happens is maybe a couple people take a picture with her but people generally just point and laugh at her take pictures of her from a distance and she yells at them to give her two dollars which they never ever do uh, which is great uh, so she's basically Elmo yeah she's just an old wrinkly Elmo yeah a shaven Elmo <laughs> yeah just abusing people in the middle of Times Square, but that's the only vehicle she's going to have after this. Like, at least she had some, like, you know, Opie and Anthony fame that, like, if an O&A fan were coming to Times Square, they would they would pay to get a picture of Sandy Kane. I know Struff, who's a big fan of the show, has went and paid Sandy Kane for a picture because he wanted to put it on his Facebook. Oh, well, Sam, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to vote Sandy Kane. Probably not the brightest person. You don't think so? Probably not the brightest person. Um, we'll go to... We're, we're opening 80 it. years old on Section 8. We'll go to Tony in Brooklyn again. Probably didn't make the best decisions. Uh, Jim Norton's going to be here in a little bit. We're going to be talking to Opie and Anthony today. Uh, Levi Johnston is coming I in later. I love his pants. No, not Levi <laughs> Strauss. <laughs> Levi Johnston, oh. who dated uh, or who fathered a child. With Sarah Palin's daughter is going to be in here, and Brittany Cream Andrews. Pie Johnston. <laughs> yes, Cream Pie Johnston himself. <laughs> and Brittany Andrews, I guess from Penthouse, uh, one of those nudie bags. She's going to be in here, too, in a little while, so uh, stay tuned. That's why we couldn't cancel the show. It's a very packed show, but Tony in Brooklyn, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. Legal advice. Say that again? I want to give you a little legal advice. Yeah. Don't say that Opie broke the guitar 
Opie allegedly broke the guitar. Yes. <laughs> if you look at the video, he is allegedly smashing the guitar on the floor. <laughs> exactly. Everything was alleged. Yeah. Well, what I like, and you're right, Tony. Thank you for bringing that up. And Tony's right. This is all allegedly, folks. There's no evidence that, well, there's clear videotape. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it's still alleged. What's great, though, is we're watching this video yesterday of Sandy Kane just getting horrible shit thrown on her, yogurt and gravy, interns picking the chair up and throwing it out of the studio. <laughs> and in the end of the video, and Johnny Fairplay from Survivor, shitting, literally, in her hat. Like, taking her hat and making a number two in the hat. And what it comes down to, at the end of it, is us saying, this proves our case. Because not only did Sandy Kane come back after that appearance, but after everything that had happened, she put the hat on for $100. <laughs> after being thrown out of the studio, after having everything thrown at her, her wig was torn off, uh, shit was in her hat, <laughs> Jim said... Sandy, how much money would it cost for you to wear that hat that Johnny Fairplay just sit in, shit in? And instead of Sandy saying, no, guys, you humiliated me, you've abused me, you've, you've done horrible things to me on a national platform, she responded <laughs> quick, as a, quick as a flash. You've never heard anybody respond so quick. Hundred bucks. <laughs> Hundred bucks. Which Jim whipped out and said was the smartest money he'd ever spent. Um, Troy, this is a huge story. I think we need some kind of Sandy Gate sweepers. Okay. You know what I mean? I think we got to really jazz this up. <laughs> hey, man, come on, man. <laughs> yeah. We need, we need some kind That's of... That's fucking hat, man. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> Sandy Gate sweepers. Uh, I mean, maybe <laughs> if you have any Sandy Cane drops to throw in there. Because she was... Uh, I mean, she's hilarious. I loved when she was on because I thought the things that she said were so <laughs> unusual. I mean... Google image Sandy Kane at home so you can really see what she looks like. If you're just waking up, I apologize that that's the image that you have to wake up to. But just so you're all on the same page, because... And if people, you don't have internet access this morning, just put yeah. on an old episode of Tales from the Crypt. And yes! The same exact... And picture that bald guy in a wig with pasties on. And that's Sandy Kane. Um, she would regularly, when men would say, Sandy, I'm not attracted to you claim that they must be homosexuals. <laughs> you got a small dick. <laughs> yeah, that they, they had small penises <laughs> and were obviously gay for not being attracted. Danny, yeah. you spent a lot of time with Sandy. As a matter of fact, <laughs> now, she thinks that I don't like her. I yeah, think. well, she referred to you as <laughs> that fucking intern, Danny Ross. <laughs> well, see, I like, I'm a fan of Sandy Kane. I like her, all, all of her appearances when she comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. She's just, you know, I like her voice. I like her cadences and her weirdnesses. It's great. I love it. But when she comes in, I always just like, I just give her the stink eye. That's just been like the bit with me and her since, since I started here, you know. So <laughs> every time, every that? single time she comes in, I just look at her like, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just for that reason alone, she hates my guts. Well, you're that fucking intern, Danny Ruff. <laughs> Look, Club Soda Kenny, I mean, let me tell you something about Club Soda Kenny. Like, he's a goof on the air, but when he has a job, nobody takes it as seriously as Club Soda Kenny. And he, I, I'm telling you, even though this is a goof court case that there's no way that a judge should even hear it, like... This could be, he could have been OJ's attorney, he's working so hard. He's going to get, there's no way OB and Anthony are, are going to have anything any kind of penalty for this. Is it safe to say that he lives for these moments? Yeah, because he, he's, the type, he's just waiting. He's sitting in the cut, waiting for the be a hero moment. And, I mean, he's there for it. He's been collecting evidence since yesterday afternoon, sending out emails. He's coming to that courthouse, Club Soda Kenny is, with audio, with video, with print. I mean, there's going to be no stopping Opie and Anthony with Club Soda Kenny on the case. Um, we should go to the phones. It's, again, it's, this is the Obie and Anthony show. Don't get confused. We are live covering Sandy Gate 2011 as Sandy Kane brings Opie and Anthony to court. O and A will be here. Uh, Norton will be here. Well, I don't know if O and A will be here, but we'll at least try to get him on the phone. They have to go to court. Norton will be here, uh, and we'll have a couple guests. Uh, Dom. Hey, Sam. Hey, just curious. I mean, I've watched a shitload of these, these little, you know, people's court and everything else. Mm -hmm. I got O and A are sitting there. I mean, I don't know how much you know, advertising costs on satellite. How come they're not suing her or countersuing her for all the free advertising <laughs> they've given her over the years? Opie and Anthony are countersuing for plugging Sandy Kane's CD that nobody bought. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think Opie and Anthony are even going to bother with it. I mean, they probably... What would you sue for, crabs? Yeah, it's like, they'd probably have a better case than Sandy Kane does against them, countersuing her. But um, I don't think they're going to bother countersuing Sandy Kane for advertising costs of her CD, I Love Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, if, if there's one person... By the way, I slate that in there. Not a, oh, man. <laughs> If there's one person um, that, I'm not even going to say bought the CD, figured out how to get it. Like, I don't even know where to get Sandy Kane's music, and <laughs> she's on our show. We, we were the ones promoting her. Um, Matt in D.C., you're on the Opie and Anthony show. Hey, before I talk about uh, Sandy real quick, I just want to say, Sam, your mom is sexy as hell, and I'd love to lick her tight little asshole once. It's <laughs> <laughs> very kind of you. I, I mean, don't think it's that tight, though. I don't, I don't know. Well, That's what I was going to say is now that Sandy's going to be off the show, I pray to God that this is the return of Stalker Patty. You're hoping that there's a lot more Stalker Patty bits. I mean, look at the Stalker Patty. You want to talk about P Stalker Patty is, is, is somebody who cares about the show. I mean, she'll get naked and put a Krusty the Clown mask on. And then pretend like she don't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but then she, she does it. She lives I never for understood it. that with her. Why do you like Stalker Patty so much, Matt? I just remember listening years ago when they shaved her head, they gave her a wig, and they pushed her out of the building and took the wig. <laughs> Ever since then, I was hooked on stalk the pity and the hey, of the chocolate. Linger longer, right? What? Linger longer, right? Oh, for years. I yeah, that's right. Hey, that's right. Thanks a lot, Matt. And you're right. I mean, as far as cadences go, Stalker Patty is the queen. Um... And Kobe in Indianapolis is feedbacking in. Sam, don't forget, Sandy Kane used that guitar that she's suing over being smashed on America's Got Talent. She <laughs> yeah, went on the, the same one. She went on the biggest TV show on network TV of the summer and auditioned for her big break with this guitar that apparently doesn't work. I mean... Why do you need to have a new guitar if you don't play guitar? Like, your whole bit is a prop anyway. I know. It's, it's just a prop. She doesn't play guitar, and the guitar was not... Opie gave her double what the guitar was worth already. Easily. And she doesn't play it, Easily. and she doesn't need it. Um, River Rat Doc is uh, feedbacking in. If you wear a hat with shit, you must acquit. And I think that's something Kenny needs to write down, because there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, that that's going to be big. Um, everybody was uh, tweeting me last night asking for clips of some of the famous Sandy Kane moments. Uh, Eric, do we have the guitar cutting string? The guitar cutting string. The guitar string? <laughs> yeah. The guitar I, string cutting? Um, I have just a, a short clip. It's 53 seconds. Okay, good. Because this is, uh, this is one of the things that, that bothered Sandy Kane so much. Again, this is the Opie and Anthony show. People uh, need to understand this is a huge show. This is why we're taking this show live. We were going to throw it to Worst Of, except... We wanted to make sure that nobody thought that we're just going to do worst of all day because we're going to do our best anyway to talk to Opie and Anthony. Norton's going to be here in a little while. Uh, uh, Bristol Palin's ex, Levi Johnson, is going to be in here. Some porno chick is going to be in here. Brittany Andrews. So uh, make sure you stay tuned. But I did want to play uh, a quick clip. Club Soda Kenny, I've been telling the people how diligently that you've been working and rising to the occasion. Sam, do you consider yourself a talented person? I do. Well, talk about something else other than Sandy Kane. This is the story. No, it is the story tomorrow. Well, what's the story today? I mean, why are we... You decide. <laughs> well, that's, I think I'm here to make sure that people know about Sandy Gate. Yeah, tomorrow. Not today. No. So what about the clip I was just about is to it, play? What, what do you say? Your, may your brightest tomorrows be your worst yesterdays? <laughs> what do you like, say? Something like that. Yeah, it's What do you right. say? I'm not going to say it because I think you got it right. Oh, all right. But uh, how, how confident are you? Are you? Are you nervous? Is that why you want us to move along? No, I, I, don't, I don't like to lose. I don't think you... I've never seen you lose. Yeah. All right. So, so why talk about it mm -hmm. and give her her defense, her, her prosecution evidence? But we're not giving her a prosecution evidence, are we? Talk about something. Look, look what's in the paper. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Uh -huh. look at the headlines. Love ever blasting and pictures of guns. <laughs> I put 11 bullets in NYPD hobby. Hey, Kenny. <laughs> yes, sir. What do you think about that new Facebook? Oh, oh, yeah. I saw, oh, shit. I saw on your Facebook status that you were unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook... Uh, changed. 
Yeah. And why is that? You, are you just not good with change, or you think that they've made some mistakes on Facebook as we cover Sandy Gate? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we'll cover Sandy Gate tomorrow when the real talent is here. But Obi and Anthony are going to be contributing to the show today. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, we, I mean, what are we going to play? War stuff, so everybody tunes out. No, just just do what you do. All right, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, but you're not doing it properly. So talk to me about this Facebook problem you have. It sucks. Why? Because it sucks shit. But what's the problem with it specifically that you don't like? They, they, they shouldn't have changed that format. That fucking stupid ticker thing on the right side that you got to like scroll down. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not easy to do. It's, a, it's amazing that uh, you're such a Facebook guy. Because for the longest time, you said you were not going to ever sign up for Facebook. Well, I'm not looking to hook up. Let's <laughs> let's be clear about that. A lot of a lot of women have gotten the wrong idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, people are always asking me if Kenny's DTF and I got to be like, "No." Yeah. 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 Why is Kenny on Facebook? Is he is he down to fuck? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to like uh social network. I don't know why, but <laughs> Jim Norton is here. Jim, we were just going over the changes to Facebook because Club Soda Kenny didn't like us talking about Sandy Kane. So we wanted to talk about the new Facebook. I heard there was a change, uh, the page switched or something, but I, did, I don't know what happened. Yeah, it stinks, Jim. What's, what's, uh, <laughs> what's the new page? It's a whole different format. Like, they have, like, a, a ticker scroll. Like, look, look at Danny's thing there. It's hard. Oh, I then did actually see like, that. I fucking hate top it. Top stories. I, I, yeah, I, Facebook what? is annoying me because I don't like that top right thing with all yeah. what my friends are doing. Yeah. Can you take that off? Yeah. No. What's the point of it? Isn't it the same thing that's in the middle? No, but it's, like, different. And you can't delete on Facebook. What's annoying now is you can't delete... Like conversations you have, they all save in your email, which is fine. I mean, it's not like I'm giving out nuclear secrets, but it's a yeah. fucking mail. When I posted yesterday that I wasn't happy about the Facebook thing, like uh -huh. there, there was like a lot of like comments. Was everybody liking your status? Yeah, yeah, everybody was in agreement with me. But then one person says, "Hey, Kenny, don't worry about Facebook. Worry about the court case." <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something, people. I can multitask. That is one thing about Kenny. He is good at multitasking. Yeah, think people can poke you, like, or ask for a pillow fight or a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you like get you a little All gift. Right, listen, listen. Jim is here now. Jim mm -hmm. has his own agenda. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I'll tell so, nine thirty. I'm fine. Yeah, he's just kind of here for. We'll talk about Sandy tomorrow. Is uh, do we have coffee? Yes, we will get coffee oh, and you, breakfast. Penny. Oh, you rule. All right. So, thank God you're here, Jim, because Sam was getting off on the wrong foot. So, well, what do you think? What's happening so far with the case? Well, Kenny, Kenny <laughs> wants us to talk about anything but the case on the day that everybody was wondering about the case. Well, yeah, the case is kind of what people are wondering about. We, we don't, plus, we don't have any new information to report. It's right. Not like we can report anything. Right. I um, mean, Kenny's been, know. I was saying, uh, Kenny's acting attorney just about... Because he's going crazy finding all this evidence. He's not going to, he's going to make sure that O and A walk out of there unscathed. Because Kenny's walking into that courtroom with piles of audio, video, text. I mean, I've never seen somebody. None, of it, for, none of it pertains to the case. No, it's all yeah. just. It's probably all homeless Charlie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got confused. I thought it was about that guy. <laughs> you see, see, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. So now the other side knows what we got. That, I mean, we, of course we have evidence. Yeah. Yeah, but what, why tip our, why show our hand? It's, like, it's a court case against Sandy Kane. Yeah, exactly. You're not exactly, <laughs> you're not exactly meeting big opposition. Yeah. I you mean, just DNA evidence. The fuck, uh, someone shit in her hat. <laughs> the prelude to I, your evidence. I take it very seriously. The, the prelude to me talking about your evidence was. That this case is so ridiculous that a judge probably won't even bother listening to the evidence before he throws it out. I don't. I don't even want to want it to get to a judge. What, what does it get to before I the judge? I want to get this resolved, and I Why? want to get in and out. Well, it's small claims court. There's got to be a judge, right? <laughs> you don't talk to the lady outside first. No, no, there's there's a choice of mediation. Which means what? What does mediation mean? That, like, you, you know, you discuss, like, this is what I say, this is what we say, and then that guy decides in the middle. Oh, kind of like the <laughs> arbitration. Yeah. Okay. But there's no way that O and I are going to give in at all. Why would they? I mean, there's, they're not going to make any deal where they're like, we'll give you a little bit, because they're going to give her nothing, because that's what she'll get. 
Why don't you take some phone calls? Because right. everybody wants to talk about Sandy Kane. She doesn't deserve any, any money. I don't think that they did anything wrong. Yeah. Honestly. I, I mean, mean and, and that's what we were talking about, how it's like every time she's come in here and something's happened to her, you don't she's come back from You don't even know what her more. allegations are, so you don't even know what you're talking about. Hey, they read the summons on the air. Yeah? So I, Yes, I do know what her allegations what are. What are they? Well, I'm not going. Well, we don't want to go over her allegations, well, right? And, and tip off the other side. <laughs> yeah, us is the other side. Her allegations are that um, the uh, guitar was broken or whatever, and there's it's just there's, silly. And there was doctor bills, and then her hat was stolen. <laughs> and my hat. bullet holes are <laughs> in it, which is, I mean, even you have to admit, Kenny, we did fire bullets into her hat. <laughs> been documented yeah, I not mean, a secret there's twipix yeah. yeah there was nobody in a grassy knoll this was yeah okay. anthony said i'm going to take this hat to the firing <laughs> yeah. range and do this then he came back the next day and said i went to the firing range <laughs> yeah and I man did and my fucking hat had bullets in it man your honor i would make sure that she's not accusing that fucking intern daddy ross of anything <laughs> Because we know that she doesn't oh, like him. Yeah, well, I don't know if that was brought up or, or whatnot. But, I, don't, uh, I don't think it was. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what, I, what, what there is to talk about there, but I would love to know if I could talk about that. See, I'm only bringing up stuff that's already been on the air. Yeah. Like, so, so you. Well, yeah, I, I know it's up to me, but I'm, I, I don't understand why you're worried about it at all. You have nothing to worry about. You're... you're Fully prepared for a case. No, I got nothing to worry about because my name's not. I'm. I'm not. A, I'm not a defendant in this one. Well, I don't think oh, Team Opie and Anthony has anything to worry about. Yeah, I think they're in the right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think that you know, once you get to the courthouse, whether it's the arbiter or the judge or whoever is is talking to you guys, will see that Sandy Kane is a lunatic. Do you want him to have a trial by jury? <laughs> that, I mean, I think it would be great. The more press we can get out of this, the better. Because, I mean, whoever suggested that they show up in judges' robes and powdered wigs yesterday was right on the money. Because we should be turning this into the biggest court case New York has ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. They're not going to be shock jocks in the courtroom. Why not? They're ordinary citizens. <laughs> but this is not an ordinary case. Right. It's the naked cowgirl who wears pasties in Times Square and who's 79 years old. Most ordinary citizens aren't suing radio people for <laughs> defecating in her hat and shooting it. Yeah. It's not a normal court case. <laughs> Johnny Fairplay shit in my yeah, hat. Yeah. He, said to, he said to me, I shit in his hat. He repeated, I shit in his hat. <laughs> yeah. It's my cousin Kenny. Um, <laughs> Rick in Ohio, you're on the Opie and Anthony show. Good morning, guys. Hi, Rick. Uh... Well, I just wanted to make a point that uh, at small claims court, there's no lawyers. Right, there are no lawyers. But there is Club Soda Kenny. He's acting attorney. Yes, there, there is a cadaver. <laughs> there's two with Sandy there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks, Rick. Okay. But yeah, Jim, before you got here, we were just talking about the case and everything. And after like, I don't know, 25 minutes or something, Kenny came in like, move on, next topic. And we were like... Why? Yeah, there's nothing that's really secret with this one. Everybody no. kind of knows what happened. Uh, you know, she decided to sue. I think it was a bad move on her part. Yeah. It's like, because you keep coming back. You shouldn't have kept coming back to the show when you know what the nature of the show is. And that's what I said, too. Like, when we were watching the video yesterday with Ari and Amy in here, um, when you offered her, when we did all these things to her that she might have a complaint against, and then you could see in the video, she walked right back in the studio, and you said, how much to put your hat on? with the shit in it, and instead of saying, you guys have humiliated me, this, you've gone way too far, blah, 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 within a second, she said, 100 bucks. 100 bucks. <laughs> I don't remember that, but I'm sure I asked it as a joke, like not thinking she would ever do it. <laughs> you never think someone's going to put a, sh a hat with shit on it on. And she gave you an amount of money that you was so Very easy to come by. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I actually have 100 yeah. bucks. I'm not even going to ask the room for money. Yeah, it would be, she said 5000 man. And then we were like, ah, you know, it would have been funny if you could do it, but 100 bucks, yeah. You can do you realize that, that this show has had two instances of someone putting a shit hat on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Both were winners and both are filmed. <laughs> yeah. um, I wonder if Sandy Kane will wear her wig to court. It'll be weird to see her without her wig on if she's not wearing it because she just had that dried out brown hair otherwise. <sighs> Just a nightmare. Uh oh, Kenny's coming back up the hallway. He might not want us talking okay, about this. this for, oh, yeah. For, enough of me for Kenny. So don't come. There's something on the fucking. There's like peanut butter on the side of the mic. Ew. Uh, Who's using it? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Sean, you're on uh, Opie and Anthony. 
Hey, what's going on, guys? Hello, Sean. Uh, hey, I just think I just want to give some props to Kenny. I think that's just awesome evidence that he's got uh, her playing the, the guitar in question on America's Got Talent. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be blindsided, man. They're never going to see this one coming. That's just that's awesome. That's a great job, Kenny. Yeah, this this is not the fucking Kennedy assassination. No. They're not being sued by a high-profile attorney. Everybody, it's Sandy Kane. Everybody knows what happened. Yeah. She's pissed off, and she's just she's just looking for attention. And she took the the guitar that Obi broke that she's suing over, allegedly, and uh, went to America's Got Talent and auditioned for America's Got Talent with that with same the broken, guitar. And there's no allegedly. He broke it. <laughs> he bro yeah. And he's okay with breaking it. He somebody, said he broke it. Somebody called up and said, you should say allegedly. No, we watched video yesterday. He smashed yeah. it under the ground. Yeah, you don't need to say allegedly with him actually breaking the guitar in video. He broke yeah. it. Yeah. And he paid her for it. Well, listen, we're going to, we should take a break you so you can settle in. You just got in your gym. I'm fine. But uh, Opie has said he was going to try to come by today before the uh, court case. He said that, but right. if, if they can sleep late, they're going to sleep late. <laughs> I don't know the only reason I came will. in today was because we had Brittany Andrews and Levi Johnston, and they couldn't be rescheduled. Yeah, um, if they could have come in tomorrow, I wouldn't have come in today either. Levi Johnston is going to be good. I hope so. I mean, I've, his book is, uh, is out, and uh, I read like 200 pages of it, and like the last 60 or 80 pages, I just kind of skimmed and took pieces out of for notes. It's great that you could just write a book about... Your girlfriend's mom that you didn't like. Oh. <laughs> it's like the, you have that kind of like clout. Everybody would love to do that. The, yeah, but the catch twenty two is your girlfriend's mom can like really crush you. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, he's never going to come out looking like a good guy. No, and I didn't like him until I, I read this, and it's like you know what? I'm sure that some of this there's two sides to every story. Uh -huh. But uh, she seems really unpleasant. Like if she didn't like certain things he said in the media before, she is going to hate this book. Well, I can't wait till he's in. We will take a break. But we will be back with more of the Opie and Anthony show without Opie and Anthony. But Jim Norton's here. The rest of us are here. It's going to be the a name, great time. What should the name of this show be today? Norton and Friends is a good one. But what should we yeah. call it today? Um, well, Coke Logic su suggested uh, instead of Opie and Anthony Live. Instead of Opie and Anthony? Right. Um, uh, how about uh, Sam Norton? That's really For good. Sam and Nor Sam Norton. <laughs> That's good. Norton. Yes. Sam Norton. The show will be back. Stay tuned. Serious XM. The virus. The Opie and Anthony Show. Uh. How great is that? Celebrity Friends. My favorite new bit. Here on the, uh... Free Rock Jimsome Show. What did, uh... <laughs> it's, uh... Jim Norton and myself. Because Opie and Anthony have their, uh, Sandy Kane... Yes. Court case to deal with They're today. They're gallivanting in court. Yes. They're gallivanting. I feel like the Opie and Anthony show is becoming a brand. It doesn't yeah. refer to two people anymore. No. Although somebody, yeah, that's what it was. Chris in New Jersey suggested the title The Morning Jam with Jim and Sam, which I think at least <laughs> it'll get people up, you know? Yeah, it really does. It kind of, because it's got both names included in it. Yeah. Um, and it just, it really says something like times are about to get wild. Plus, it's like, you know, for the commercials. Will you wake up groggy? Need something to go with your toast in the morning? How about some morning jam that's, with Jim and Sam? That's good. Well, how about jam with Chip, Jim, and Sam? Something. Do you know how tempting it is, by the way, to do Chip until 10 o'clock? I know. I it's gonna, really hard not to do. I was going to say, people really enjoyed when Chip showed up on the after show and was answering calls. We should try to see how long we could do Chip until people don't enjoy him anymore. There, there are people that wouldn't, because the goal of Chip is... I do like when people, as a comedian, I like people laugh at and think it's funny. Mm -hmm. But there is a part of me like, Bob Kelly really hates him. Yeah. And that makes me happy. Like, Chip should be able to be used to really bother somebody. A lot of women, I find, hate Chip. Sure. Like... Because he reminds them probably the dummies that they're fucking. <laughs> he probably reminds them of the dumb guy who they're with who tries to be funny in front of people and uh -huh. who's never funny. But, like, Jess... My fiancé doesn't like Chip. Oh, good. Uh, Jonathan, your, your manager's wife... Hates, hates Chip. Fucking Chip. <laughs> he, like, like Jonathan told me, oh, oh, I thought of you the whole time I was out there because he gave me like 50 new stories of annoying his wife. With so my, great. Like, he'll talk to her parents or her friends, and they'll say something like, yeah, we got to go to bed, bath, and and Jonathan will just start going, sis, sis, and he won't even do Chip, right? <laughs> he'll just go like, sis, bed, bath, and beyond, yes, sis. 
And that's all he does, and his wife's like, just fucking stop it. it does, not only does he do the impression completely off, but he doesn't include a chip joke. No, he doesn't at all, and he hates chip. Like, I, <laughs> I, I derailed him 40 times when we were out just throwing chip in. Like, because he, he least expected, I love to throw chip in. Mm -hmm. And he just, people, he has to acknowledge him. Like, uh, he go like, ah, that's good, Chip. That's good. <laughs> it just stops everything, and it really annoys him. He but he can't it. be mean to Chip because, like, Chip is one of his clients. <laughs> like, Chip's on, but Chip, you can't win with Chip ever. No. You can't ever win. Well, that's what I was talking to Jez about last night. The, like, that's what the beauty of people calling in, that people call in, and they try to go with whatever Chip's vibe is. Like, if Chip is attacking something, they'll call in and try to attack it with Chip. But Chip will tell him that's stupid because he doesn't like other people having attention. Yeah, it's not a team effort ever with Lyle Chipperson. You're never going to get on the same team as Chip. Lyle wants it all to himself. Yeah, he wants it to himself, but he doesn't understand what a subtle cunt he is and how he sabotages everything. Yeah. He just does. Um, I don't know what Cole... I, Cole Glogic. Hey, uh, scissors up, Sam and Dave. That's Jim, not Dave. Yes. Be respectful. Oh, and it's Jim and Sam. But Sam and Jim is yeah. fine. Hi, uh, Sim. Sim. Hi, hi uh, Coke Logic. Hi. Hey, I uh, just had a question for uh, Jim. Sure. And, uh, sorry, I'm fucking tired of shit. I'm sure you're drunk oh, again. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. I'm not Alcoholic. drunk. Alcoholic, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but is there, you, you break in the chip and it's like, um, uh, you do it in front of people you don't know or comedians or famous people and stuff. Has there been a time that people go, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple of uh, uh, times, but not really. Normally, it's very rare. That, like when we eat a lot of times, we'll go like she. Like mm -hmm. when, when Sam and I were in uh, Comic-Con, literally yeah. every meal we had, I would say, well, she will have this and I'm having that or her. And nobody ever calls you out on it. But once in a while, someone would go like, she? And then that was it. But it, it's never happened in front of me. And you did it to literally everybody you could. Like the car guy who picked this up was like, uh, do you need a water? And Jim would say, well, I'm fine, but I don't know about her. And, and he would just do it to everyone. And nobody, everybody goes, oh, okay. Nobody calls you out on a chip. I've been called out on a couple of times, but it's extremely rare. Um, somebody look like, what are you, what? What are you talking about? Because they think that you're kind of a retard or there's something wrong with you. Which Chip is not a retard. He's just very aggressive and angry. <laughs> yeah. But he's not retarded. He's just got personality flaws. Yeah, he's just an aggressive personality flawed person. You're right. I said personality twice. Although, what is, doesn't he have uh, uh, Asperger's or something? Yeah, oh, and he has a bit of autism. Yeah. Like, uh, we, we learned that the other day, the chip just hits the bell, and he likes the sound of the dinging. Yeah. A bit of Asperger's. How do you feel about other people doing the chip impression? I love it. Anthony hates it. Like, whenever chip shows up on Twitter, fucking Ant hates. Uh-huh. I go fucking nuts when I see sis, sis. I literally, chip tweets make me laugh out loud. Because they can't lose. If they're terrible, they're perfect for chip. If they're funny, they're perfect for chip. That really is the easiest way. Um, oh. Speaking of Anthony's tweets, I did want to bring up that he got into one of his uh, awesome-to-watch yeah. Twitter arguments with the entire Twitter community yesterday over this uh, was it Troy Davis I don't situation. Know, I don't know. I, I read a little bit about it, and uh, it kind of reminds me, I guess, of the, uh, the Mumia Abu-Jamal case in mm -hmm. uh, Philadelphia where a cop was killed. Black guys, you know, accused or go to death row for it, and people, it becomes the cause celeb yeah. to get him off. And then you read certain aspects of it. It's like, well, there was some doubt about it. Something the prosecutor said, though, kind of, uh, I don't know if we have it in this article, but one of the, the prosecutor who has retired said, yes, this case was a travesty or something. To, I'm paraphrasing. It's a travesty, but only because it took so long. Um, there's the presumption of innocence or something, but they took what could be, a sh what appears to be a shadow of a doubt um, and made it look like it was a shadow of a doubt. Like it, it was, it was an impression of a shadow of a doubt. Basically, she was saying she was saying that he was absolutely guilty. Yeah, I mean, I was reading uh, articles because I didn't know much about it until right. yesterday, to tell you the truth. And uh, I didn't see anything that was super compelling that he was innocent. Like, right. I guess there was doubt as to whether or not he was guilty. I think the lack of of evidence. Like, was it? Like, yeah. Was there not a lot? Of, would, well, I mean, was he, the court case rushed along? Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't rushed along. But he was he was convicted mainly based on on the testimony of nine witnesses. All eyewitnesses, yeah. And the, I mean, they never found the gun. They never, you know. Uh, but there were shell casings that apparently matched, you know, uh, 
a gun that he was previously convicted for in a shooting. So, well, did they arrest him on the spot or did he run? No, he uh, he ran and he was uh, he turned himself in after uh, after the man who he says shot the cop went to the cops and said, no, Troy Davis did it. But who said it first? Uh, the other guy. I, I don't, so I the don't other guy might have been out with Troy Davis. Yeah. They were together. Troy. Okay, so Troy Davis might have shot this guy, and the other guy... And then uh, the other guy went to the jail, and I'm not going to fucking... Yeah, because he realized, murder. holy shit, what just happened? This guy just yeah. killed somebody. And then, uh, but I, I guess. The but thing, over the years, like seven of the nine witnesses yeah, what, recanted their testimony. Yeah, and, testimonies rough. And said that they were, you know, they were coerced. And I mean, they, pri- they you do try to get confessions that you want out of eyewitnesses, I guess, from time to time. But it's a tough. So, so the question is. The question is whether it was him or the guy he was with, because yeah, it had then, to be one of those. And then other people say that, you know, like, this other guy has, like, confessed to doing it, like, when he was drunk, and, you know. Was it's this, a tough case. I mean, this guy, he wasn't a good guy, you know? Like, he'd yeah. been convicted on other stuff before. It's rough with the death penalty, because yeah. it'd be one thing if, like, okay, we'll leave him in jail for a while and just try, eventually something will happen, but when you got to kill a guy... Yeah, I don't know. You got to yeah, really make tough. sure. Yeah, yeah, because they they say it, it's like we are the argument is well, if you know a hundred percent that he did it, it's okay to kill him, but the court system has it built in where they feel they know something a hundred percent, but then they can refuse new evidence. Like the Supreme Court did a weird thing with this one where they actually gave him a chance to prove his innocence, which normally you don't have to prove your innocence; they have to prove, and it was a higher. Uh, I guess preponderance of evidence than the. Well, it's tough to prove your innocence. It's a, it's a lot tougher to prove your innocence than to prove somebody's guilty. Well, they wanted more evidence to prove he was innocent, yeah. but the Supreme Court normally doesn't do that. Yeah. And yeah. I think he couldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, or he, he just, they didn't feel it was strong enough, so they sided with the prosecution. But this wasn't like, like the West Memphis 3 thing, like everybody said they didn't do it. This wasn't that cut and dry. Yeah. It was or it wasn't? No, no, no. It, oh, it, it wasn't was not. cut and dry. But no. it makes me hard. It, it's hard for me to be on the side of the death penalty. I mean, of course, a cop killer, I think, deserves to be put to death. Yeah. But I just don't, I don't trust that we're 100% right. Well, yeah, so, no, because so many mistakes have been yeah, made. There's so many times that it's been proven that, that, oh, this guy really didn't do it. Oh, he's been in jail for 25 years, and now he's being released. DNA you know? gets yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And the fucking fact that prosecutors, you know, fuck prosecutors on some cases. Like, when you look at that guy, Nifong, or whatever his name was, in the, uh, the, uh, the three Duke guys, mm-hmm. who was a, the prosecutor who was fucking being a total twat and was disbarred for his behavior, they're dirty too. Sometimes they don't want to admit they made a mistake. They don't want to admit they prosecuted the wrong guy. Well, that's that. That's why the West Memphis Three had to had to put in an Alfred plea because the prosecution doesn't want to admit that they were wrong. The they fucking knew prosecution. They were wrong. Why wouldn't you order DNA evidence if you put a guy in jail? You shouldn't have. Yeah. It's fucking terrible. Like be a person, be a human being. Like you have to admit. Yeah, I made a mistake here. Like, it wasn't just one person who did it. It was a whole... Obviously, everybody was has to come together yeah. to put somebody in jail. One person can't put a guy in jail. So it's not like one person has to stand up and say, sorry, I blew it. It's like we all come together and say, yeah, look, we might have rushed to this. The fact that they, they don't... The prosecutors or whatever should be the ones looking for uh, DNA evidence. Thank you, Kenny. And trying to get guys free if they put them in jail. They don't care. They, they, they got really the don't. win. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like they want to make sure that they have a good record, that they yeah. have enough wins. So it's like whatever whatever person you put in front of them, their job is to put them in jail, not to figure out whether to they're... to do the right, right thing. Their job is to get the death penalty for wow, them. Wow, welcome to the Liberals Radio Hour. We really sound like <laughs> flamers. Yeah, Ant's probably going crazy yeah. somewhere like... That was a piece of shit. Yeah, Fuck him. Well, that's what he was doing on Twitter last night. <laughs> well, like, no one's. Compl- I mean, we're all sitting here, but no one's complaining about the white supremacist who was killed yesterday. I, mean, I think you know, we know he was guilty. Sure, exactly. I mean, about you know, I'm, I'm not against the death penalty when no, but, when it's been proven that you dragged a black man for miles. That's what I love about Ant, though. Like we're all sitting here saying, well, you know, I guess it could have been. It could. Ant was never so sure of anyone's guilt in his life yesterday. <laughs> he knew that that man killed that cop and needed to die today. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm up in the air. I just think that poor people, I don't even think it's racial. I think it's just m- poor people have a much higher shot at getting it because they can't afford the defenses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just, I don't, uh, I don't trust it. I mean, but w- w- is this other guy saying anything that was with him or what happened to I don't the know. other guy? Is he in jail? I imagine uh, now I he's not going to confess. So. Yeah, I know. I imagine he's going to keep that under his hat if he did do it. <laughs> just kill them both. I, I mean, that way. I don't like fucking pro- uh, uh, eyewitness 
stuff only being uh, enough to get a guy put to death, though. Yeah. Because eyewitnesses are fucking idiots. And they never found the gun? No. Hmm. But then again, nine people saying they saw you do something. That's a lot of eyewitnesses. Yeah, were they changing their opinions because they started to feel guilty? Like, that, oh no, this, the weight of what I said is having this guy killed? That probably has a lot to do with it. Like, like people going back and say, well, it could have been someone else. I mean, was I coerced? What? When, in actuality, the cops are probably more forcing them to remember. Like, no, think about it. Think, was it, was it, what? And finally they'll say yes, and then, yeah, maybe they do feel guilty. Yeah, it's a tough one because I don't think anybody's disputing the fact that he was there and that he was part of this gang that was, you know, like... Ooh. Well, you know... <laughs> gang of ruffians. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the lords. Uh, so, so like, I, like I said before, like he's he not he's not a guy that we're... We're fighting for his freedom. No, I don't because... think anybody's fighting for his freedom. People are fighting for, uh, you know, a new trial. Yeah. Although, I mean, I don't know if you want a new trial and give him the opportunity to figure out a mistrial and a way to get out of jail, because he shouldn't be out of jail by any stretch of the imagination. Well, they could have well, committed a sentence. Yeah. But he was there. He was an accessory, at least. He had a lot of high-profile people supporting him, though. Doesn't Who mean he... anything. Who did he have? He had uh, Jimmy Carter... Um, Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy. Oh, oh, fuck. Well, if Diddy was supporting him, exactly. then obviously. Uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. They're always against death penalty. The Pope's always against it. Yeah, they will. Anytime there's 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 a, a tiny bit of doubt, like we could say that this is a bad thing, they'll support anyone. And, he, and even if you, they, they think you're guilty, they would still say that they shouldn't put you to death. Big Boy. Big Boy from Outcast. Look, I think that maybe while, while Jim said that his opinion wasn't racially motivated... Diddy and Big Boy might have been somewhat racially motivated in, you think this, so? in this cause. Did I would, they say that or no? They didn't say that. This is just my opinion. Yeah, you're probably right. But Big Boy from Outcast hasn't been known to be the most politically outspoken person in the past. Um, they see a black guy being put to death and they want to stand up. And, uh, yeah, and there's, a, a, there's an ounce of, of, of doubt. They're going to be the guys to say, whoa, 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 you know. Uh, doesn't mean anything. Who cares? Yeah. Well, that sounds kind of shitty, but... He wasn't a good guy. Yeah, I mean, he was, no. like we said, he was at least an accessory to murder, if not a murderer. Yeah, didn't he, like, wasn't he fucking pistol whipping a guy for a beer? Some well, that, homeless guy yeah, for that, a beer? That's Jesus. how it started. So he did, but he, well, he definitely no, did it, that. Well, the, the story goes that the man was pistol whipping this homeless man because they got into a fight about a beer. This off duty police officer who was working as a security guard at a Burger King, so you know you're in a good neighborhood. Yeah. When you need a security guard at a Burger King. Yeah. No, that's never the sign of a good neighborhood. Oh. Literal gym. Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the off-duty police officer comes over to try and break up the fight, and Troy Davis getting... allegedly. So, but Troy Davis definitely was the guy pistol whipping the homeless guy. That's what they say. But okay, so that's whoever was pistol whipping the homeless guy shot the cop. Right, and then there's no fucking gun. What happened to the gun? What were you pistol whipping with the back of your fucking? <laughs> Never found the gun. The hard part of your thumb. It's just like Clue. Yeah, it's well, really exciting. <laughs> yeah, there the was intrigue. Yes. There must Colonel have been Troy a gun there. With the gun in shot. the piss stained alley. <laughs> yeah. Um, Brian wants to say something. I don't know where he's from. Brian, you're on the uh, Opie and Anthony show, as it were. Yes. Hey, you guys got to get your facts straight. There were 23 state witnesses that presented evidence that they saw him shoot the guy. The seven people that recanted of the nine were all friends of Troy Davis. You guys got your fucking facts okay. from Amnesty International. No, he didn't. No, I got my facts from Yahoo News. I got my facts well, not, from... I'm not getting shit from Amnesty International. I got my facts from Lib Travis over here. But we're actually... We're actually saying... We're Air Force... We're saying that we don't know. Yeah. There were... There were... Tw well, why? How come every article says there were nine witnesses? Yeah, I, I don't understand. Nine. Where's twenty three? Agenda with the media. This guy was to Jimmy's point. No, it's the media's the agenda. For, 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 All right, but dude, hold on. You're, you're saying twenty three witnesses. Maybe you're right, but don't act like we don't have our facts when everywhere is saying nine. Where is saying twenty three? If you're right, I'll say you're right. I just don't know where it is. Yeah. Well, pull up, pull up Ann Coulter's article last night. Who is a lawyer? Right, who look, okay. Brian. I mean, if you're going to say that Travis is biased for looking at Amnesty International, don't you think Ann Coulter might have a slight yeah she's bias? A, she one leans way? a little right. We're looking at now. We're looking at two ends of the spectrum here, Brian. You're arguing a point, but she's a fucking lawyer that can review cases, and she did. She went through all 187 pages of it. She has a slight agenda. Yeah, she probably did though, and she is a lawyer. Yeah, I mean There's she's not a dumb woman. Witnesses that presented it. Seven of those people were his friends that recanted post case. Okay, you right. can't argue that fact. That's there a were fact. a total of twenty three witnesses to one or both of the shootings. To what do you mean? What to one or both of his shootings? 
Oh, wait, the wait. one that he was previously oh, oh, convicted of. Okay, the for. one he was previously yeah. convicted of. So on this so case... So you get your facts straight. There was only nine on this case. Yeah. So, and yeah, and the other ones are not up to... That, so there's, what, 14 for the other Probably 14 the for the case. other one. So obviously he was a piece of shit. Yeah, I but, mean, that's not... It's not up for debate whether or not he was a shitty guy and whether or not he should not be in society. So, Brian, what's your comment on that? He hung up. Why would he hang up? I don't know. I guess he thought we were done. Brian, we'll call, we'll call back because Travis just raised the point that uh, you didn't have your fact. There's nothing worse than somebody going, get your facts straight, when they don't have their <laughs> yeah. facts right. Get your facts straight and hang up before they realize. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, Joe in Buffalo, you're on ONA. Hey, guys. Hi, What's Joseph. Up? Hey, listen. He, uh... Oh, stick the window. The, uh... <laughs> There was physical evidence. The bullet that they pulled out of the cop matched the bullet that Troy Davis had used in a gun in a previous crime that he was convicted of. Okay. So they know it was his gun that shot the cop. And the witnesses that changed their testimony, they didn't say that he didn't shoot the cop. They just softened their testimony. Well, we're not sure. Uh, yeah, that's what. You know, there may be a lot of that guilt you were talking what, about. What, what happened? The, how, why was he on the street if he was convicted of another fucking murder? I don't, I don't think it was necessarily a murder. It was just a shooting. Oh, oh okay. It was a robbery. Oh, okay. See, that's, okay. What that, that, that's what I keep saying. It's it's tough because this guy obviously wasn't a good guy. Yeah, it's a fucking... You know? Yeah, it seems Just like... because you didn't find the gun, you know, you still... The, yeah. the casings matched. Yeah. You know? It, uh, uh, yeah. I, so, it, if he didn't do it, his friend took his gun and yeah, did it? Yeah. He probably know. shot the cop. Don't you wish it was Troy Kwan we were talking about? <laughs> It's a conspiracy, spiracy, spiracy. I, I just have questions about this shooting. That's all I'm saying. I just, I just have questions. The callers call up, and instead of, uh, like, we're saying, yeah, maybe you're right. Look, I don't have the answers. Yeah. Just the questions. You know, I just don't have time to investigate it. Oh, I, don't, I would love to see, although we would ask Troy for his opinion. I haven't done the research. I don't, I haven't, I don't know. I'm just saying that we might not know what happened. We probably don't know what happened that night. You know where the murder weapon is? Where? Harp. Harp. <laughs> Harp. <laughs> Mark in New York. Hello. Hi, What's Mark. Up, Mark. It's Rob, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> you guys were talking about when this guy was pistol whipping him, mm -hmm. that they never discovered the gun. You know, back uh, in the 90s, early 90s, when we had the crack epidemic in New York, you know, we always had a saying that the gun never hit the floor, because you could be chasing a guy, he throws the gun, you chase him half a block, you come back, that gun is gone, it's in the wind. So just because they don't have the gun, that doesn't mean he didn't have it that time. Not true. We just think that, uh, you know... It's easier if they had it, but uh, yeah, you know, I, mean, I, I don't think that makes him innocent. I'm starting to think he was probably guilty. Probably, yeah. He probably did it. I mean, I, I don't know. And I don't know if it's like, it's important not to kill people, I guess, but uh, no, I don't it's know. It's very important. I don't know. But uh, yeah, but I don't know if you want to like use all this energy and rally behind a guy that was a bum of a guy anyway. He was a bum. It, it's hard. It's like the death penalty again. I feel poor people get it more, so that's why I've kind. Of, but I don't think it's cruel and unusual. Like fucking Amnesty International, all these groups, they say it's cruel and unusual punishment, which yeah. is against the Constitution. But I don't think it is. I just think that poor people get it more, so we shouldn't have it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's definitely accurate because they can't afford attorneys. But I, I, I yeah, I think probably protesting this guy's death penalty might have been a slight waste of time. However, in a perfect system... <laughs> it like, probably was. Where there was, like, say, the video, it was the uh, thing, if you had video of somebody doing something. Yeah. In a perfect system, I'd be all for it. Yeah. I'd be all for dismembering people while they were alive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> torture, even. Yeah. I mean, if you had, like, concrete evidence, like, there's no way we can come back later and say that was somebody else. But Yeah, you listen to Legal Eagles here in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's a big court day for us. It Opie sure Anthony is. of their case... Troy Davis, he's dead, but he, yes, had, he, he had, had his day he had in court. His, he had his day, he lost. Didn't go so good for him. Um, he had like 15 days in court, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he had a lot. Supreme Court did, did something for him they haven't done in 50 years. But, Which I mean, was consider a new trial. Way to stop the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Boring fact, who cares? Well, they considered a new trial, they considered it, but then they didn't give it to him? Yeah, I guess that they heard evidence and they found that the prosecution... Um, was right. Yeah, uh, well, I, I missed this whole thing too because when before, right before I went to bed, it was he had like some delayed execution thing. So yeah. when I sent out the email that goes to all these guys, it was it was that he's alive and That's they're going to delay everything. And then I wake up and he's fried or uh, not fried rather, yeah. but he's dead. And I'm just like, oh well, now I look retarded. <laughs> I got the the news prep email. And it was like, oh, looks like they're cool. going to yeah, they're not going to execute him. And then I woke up, woke up, dead. he's dead. He's yeah. not alive. Well, Obama couldn't have stopped it anyway. They were trying to get Obama to intercede, but he wouldn't because it's a state issue. Yeah. And they and he couldn't have stopped it anyway. The Supreme Court thought he was 
didn't want to give him another trial because they were like, all right, he's guilty. Like, we tried him. Well, they felt, maybe they felt that the trial, I don't even know if it was about guilt or innocence. I think they may have felt that the, the, the trial went through properly. Yeah. Travis, you don't, you don't like that he got killed, though? Uh, I don't really have that big of a problem with it. But, you know, like like Jim said, like, I don't have a problem with the death penalty if, if you know, it's 100% like, you know, this guy is, is Yeah, guilty. like if there's no denying it. Like, like the, the, so guilty. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Travis was a big uh, West Memphis 3 defender for as long as I can remember. Yeah, I still no. am. Because he killed the kids. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way that they did that. Yay. So, you know, I mean, the, there have been cases like the West Memphis 3 where it's it's been proved that there are just... You know, yeah. terrible injustices that, yeah. that happen. But, I mean, there's obviously more Although, evidence that Troy Davis was a bad person. I would have been so happy if the West Memphis Three got out of jail and said, we stupid documentary oh, makers. Yeah. Do oh, Eddie Vedder, yeah, we got you, stupid. We did it. We <laughs> killed those kids. Like, I don't know why Mumia is a big, in Philly. I, it's I, Mumia, it's with a C. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I, I've looked at the Mumia Abu Jamal case, but I've never read it in depth. But I don't know why people are so... Con I think he did get kind of a shitty trial. There's a couple of things that I read I didn't like, but I still think he did it. It's, uh, it's really... Scum I mean, I guess they killed somebody, so there's nothing more scummy than that. But it, it's the worst when somebody does a crime and realizes that, well, there might be a loophole somewhere so I can just trick everybody into thinking that I was, you know, that there was injustice against me. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's I don't know. It's just I saw a documentary recently on fucking... Uh, on uh, DNA evidence, and there's so many people that have gotten out of prison on DNA. Yeah, that's scary. And the fact, what bothers me is that the state is wasting all this money. When what they should be doing is, if you're in jail and there was any doubt for a rapist or a murder or a pedophile, and DNA can help you, any prosecutor that fights DNA evidence, and I know some fucking dickhead convicts will use it just to drag things out and delay it, but any prosecutor that fights DNA evidence in a case like this should just be fucking thrown off the prosecution yeah, yeah. force whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get badges if yeah. you're on the prosecution force? <laughs> and we're trying to have serious conversations. I realized I didn't know what, where it was going. I was going to say shot, but I realized that was too harsh. Maybe disbarred? Disbarred, yes. Thank you. You are no longer welcome on the prosecution force. <laughs> That's like the shitty uh, rip-off copy of the Justice League. Yeah, the, yeah. the prosecution force. Yes. Lawyers in capes. A bunch of women with awful tits and perms <laughs> named Marsha flying around. Uh, Rob in New Jersey. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, you know, listen to this whole debate on the death penalty. My uh, my uncle, his name was Peter Voto, was uh, killed by Thomas Trantino back in the sixties. It was called the Night at the Angel Lounge in Lodi, New Jersey. Is that like confirmed, or are you yes. making accusations? No. No, okay. no, no, no. It was okay. Confirmed. He was convicted of it. His partner was killed in New York City. You know, okay. they found him in a hotel and straightened him out quick. But uh, this friggin' animal, you know, he gets he gets a death penalty. Then all of a sudden, New Jersey overturns the death penalty and says, "Okay, you know, no life imprisonment." And then they let him out on parole. So explain that. Well, they should have had life without parole. Yeah. That's, that's the, but life without parole was that an option when that was done? Yeah. Oh, I don't life know why they didn't go. Parole. How can you go from death penalty yeah. to having a paroled sentence? I don't know. Like, so he only he only got out because they did away with the death penalty, not because there was right. new evidence or. Then they converted his sentence to to life imprisonment, and they put him not even in a jail cell. He was in a friggin' I mean, if you look up, there's actually video. Like he did uh, videos. He wrote a book, oh. and they put him in a in like a camper, or some kind of mobile home on the jail and shit. You know, he's, he married his lawyer. Oh my! Which so he had a happy life. Of. Yeah, that that's sickening. I mean, I'm what? not talking about that. I, How I just, long did he do? Yeah. Three, what, three uh, months? He's in jail for like 30-something years, and he's like 67 years old now. I mean, I, I got a good mind to just go find him and take care of business for my family, but... No, you know. he still should just die in jail, though. I mean, if you kill somebody, you should die in jail. Yeah, and I mean... It's not a that he killed him like, like, a, a, like a friggin' firefight. Like, he jumped the cops coming into a, into a bar, took their guns, pistol whipped them, stripped them down their underwear, and shot him in the back of the head. Jesus Christ. and now he's writing books How and do you stuff? beat up two cops and take their guns? How the fuck One cop was a rookie. They were, go, they were responding to a... Uh, to a noise complaint, and it turned out that they they you know been high on drugs the, the two criminals and they had stole some money from the mob or some crap and so the the rookie was outside and my uncle went into the police that you know into oh. the bar and they were behind the door so when they came into the into the bar 
they got him from behind. The rookie went in without no weapon, came back out, called for backup, went back in to help his partner, and he killed both cops. Oh, he killed wow. two cops? Two cops, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, when you hear a case like that, um, on a moral level, I, I firmly believe those guys should both just be shot in the fucking head for doing that. Immediately, like... Yeah, just my my argument against that penalty range. is not is not about not thinking it's right. It's just I I just don't trust our system enough to know that only guilty people will get it. I agree, you know, and especially from you know twenty thirty years ago, you know, people have been on death row for ten fifteen years. Yeah, okay, fine, maybe you know, convert their sentence to life imprisonment, whatever it costs, and make them sit there and rot. If but, if the prosecutions were going out in these in the cases where it's a little iffy, and and actually being the ones fighting to get DNA to make sure, I would have a lot more faith in it. Like, if, if the state was, was making 100% sure that they hadn't fucked up in the past. Yeah. Like, but when they're fighting things like the Memphis Three because the prosecutors don't want to look bad, it's hard to have faith in their judgment. I think you just called them prosecutions. Did I? Yep. Well, <laughs> I like to pluralize. Um, when they, did I call them prosecutions or what they have done was prosecutions? Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, exactly. No, I didn't. I probably fucked up. <laughs> no. Iraq, could you go back and get that, please? We have to make sure if a mistake was made on this program. One of us just made a mistake. One of us made a mistake. <laughs> we have to find out who did yes. it. We have our own case to deal with. Yes. Here on the opiate. A heavy show. case. Yeah. This guy was like forced out of prison. I'm reading about about this this yeah. guy that the, that he just called in. A three member panel of the New Jersey Superior Court ordered the Department of Corrections in June 2000 to release. Uh, Trantino within 30 days into immediately transfer him to a halfway house oh. on the basis of their finding that the parole board's decisions in the case were unreasonable. So unreasonable. He killed what? two cops. Yeah, it was unreasonable. And they had a weapon. You know, uh, a conviction, uh, confession, everything. And it was unreasonable to keep him in jail. In its ruling, the court stated that that he had satisfied the terms of release and did not pose a danger to commit any further crimes once paroled. What, now now he, look up what he did five years, like three, four years ago, when he beat the shit out of his girlfriend. Oh Jesus uh, Christ! Well, he was he was better though. I thought he was all he's all fixed. Yeah, no, that that can't be true because that's he was rehabilitated. Yeah, he that's was legal nonsense. That, I guarantee that's just legality because yeah. the, the terms of life in prison were probably X amount of years to life, and he probably had offended in jail, so they probably had to let him go. Not saying it's right. Well, he was, yeah, he was. She got life without parole. His sentence was commuted to a single life sentence. He was eligible for, for parole in '77, after serving 15 years in jail. Uh, when did he get out? 2002. After 2000. Years. Wow, okay. Yeah. All right. Somewhere in there. All yeah, right, two, thanks, man. 2002. Yeah. Thanks wow. A lot. This is a. Yeah, yeah. you guys are piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to see? And he didn't go quietly away. Then he got arrested again for beating the crap out of his girlfriend. Or I don't know what the hell happened. I but. thought he was rehabilitated. Yeah, he's, I yeah. think he's fine. Well, yeah. anytime, let, let's be honest here. Any anytime someone beats their girlfriend, it's wrong. But I always want to know what she was saying. First. Right? Like, what? <laughs> what did she do to let's cause not this? Jump to conclusions. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Was he talking? She talking during the game? Yeah. All right. You want to uh, see who made the mistake? Eric's got the clip. Of course he okay. does. If the prosecutions were going out in these, in the case, yep, I made the mistake. Yes, <laughs> yes. If the prose if the prosecutions, they're called the prosecution force. <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm not used to talking this early this much. Yeah, I, I usually get going at like fucking eight o'clock when I have my coffee. I, I wake up. Dude. Yeah, boom. you know what? Dude, yeah, boom, yeah. You got your eggs, your coffee, your mind goes boom, dude. Open and talk. You just relax. Boom. Rocco, fucking idiots on Metafest, <laughs> farting up a storm. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a piece of shit. Who, yeah, Rocco? Bobby you Kelly didn't even talk to him. Piece of shit. Bob? This, this okay. guy, Trentino. Hello? Oh, the guy who just... Yeah, hang on yeah. a second, Rocco. The guy that... Uh, the yeah, I'm, read, I'm reading about. about when he was released from jail again after beating his girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, he's released, but he was still... He was released... Wait, he went back to jail, and then he was released again. Yeah. Oh. But he was still a little cranky, complaining that he cannot shake the cop killer label he carries for the murder of two police officers 41 years ago. Oh my! You, I just can't shake yeah, this. Yeah. You know, one hit wonder, I guess. Uh, Rocco. All right. What do you do? You guys think that if he got life in jail and he actually wanted to get, uh, you know, executed, he should get executed? Like, what do you think the worst penalty? Like, like when guys who want to, it's like guys who want castration, pedophiles. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because a part of me thinks yes, and a part of me thinks like you can't do suicide by cop and you yeah. can't do suicide by state. I don't know. It's a, it's a tough question. I never thought of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you have, because you can't, you can't go case by case every single time. You have to, I mean, I would think, 
there might some be people one. would rather just be killed. Yeah, but yeah. I think it, you you should be you have to just deal with that to kill the people who need to be killed. And and lawyer men's might not allow <laughs> that to happen. Yeah, and lawyer men's and, and prison peoples might fight that. I don't know. There's an Indian, Andrew the Indian, who wants to tell us about the old Indian way of handling. And by the way, they won't let you hang yourself. In. They take your shoelaces. The state has a certain responsibility for you once you're in incarceration. This way they can't kill you and blame it on suicide. Yeah, but I've seen Oz, and I know they can get around that. I know, me too. Remember out of BC? Whose stick didn't get hard when he walked in the room? I challenge you. Yeah, exactly, with his shirt off and his hand down his oh trousers. Oh, my fucking God. If I only knew he'd be on the plane and lost, I know I'd have taken a trip. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew the Indian, you're on the show. Yeah, how we doing, boys? Hey, uh, hey, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, hey, uh, this is that the other. But listen, old W N E W. What I gotta say is, when uh, when there was something like this happening in the tribe back in the day, people were just they would that's it. They were just left. They would put them out on the edge of the camp. Get the fuck out of here. Just step away. I'd take that over life in prison. That sounds much better. Like, yeah. okay, you have somewhere. Yeah, you have to leave Westchester. You, yeah, you got to leave. You got to leave anything. You know what, what you're used to. You out. You're finished. End of story. I don't want to see you anymore. We don't want to see you anymore. You're away from everybody that held you dear. Tough break. We thought it was gonna be a harsh, like fucking yeah. apocalypto type yeah. treatment. It's just go away now. Don't come back, you. We're way better at punishing Jimmy, people. Jimmy, Jimmy, check it out. When there was a divorce, if the wife wanted to move her old man out. He just, she, ju she just put his moccasins outside the teepee. No jokes. But if she, if he wanted to get rid of her, he could cut her nose off, cut the tip of her nose off. End the story, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. You yeah, but then how would she smell things? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. What do I, I like love the enthusiasm know? of Andrew, who's telling these like stories that like yeah. he's giving an example of a, of the death penalty that's much easier than ours, but he's doing it, he's telling it in a way to make it sound like it's this mega thing, like, they made him leave! They couldn't come back! <laughs> yeah, he's like, saying with enthusiasm and, yeah. and, and muster. Yo, on, Pat on the Patrice tip, on the Patrice tip, why? Why? My question is, why are the cops always right? Why is the state always right? They're not. Maybe... Maybe, maybe Mumia wasn't wrong. Maybe, you know, who knows, man? We're all fucked up. But anyway, yo, Patrice, I love you. Jimmy, I love Patrice you. is not here, sir. Uh, yes, uh, yes, he is. That's me. I'm Patrice O'Neill. Uh, I know he's not there, but still, I love Oh, okay. I love Patrice as well, but I, I love him more when he's <laughs> yeah, here. Not when he's a fucking a mist <laughs> yeah. in the air and a memory. <laughs> you don't love him enough to just randomly I say, you know who I love? Too. Yeah, I like to thank him in the middle of real conversations I'm having about other things. That was a funny example, though. Like, their death penalty sucks, the Indians, but they have a, a horrible way of dealing with, like, any type of domestic dispute. Like, you know, if you kill people, they just go, now, don't look at this anymore. Yeah. But if you fucking talk while the game is on, your husband can cut your clit off and <laughs> soccer kick it. Beautiful society. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you. Uh, <laughs> same joke twice. It's funny. Will in Houston. Will in Houston. What's he, what's he Will in Houston, though? I don't think you a problem with something. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to call up and tell you guys about uh, Robert Durst, the uh, guy, uh, the real estate mogul's son in Galveston, who admitted in court to dismembering uh, his victim with a paring knife, two saws, and an axe, and he got off on uh, self-defense. Well, what were they coming at him with? Uh, I think Capital. I don't know what the murder charges were, but uh, yeah, they were they were trying to convict him of murder, and he got off on self defense after admitting in court dismembering the guy. Well, maybe he was in a lot of danger. Maybe he killed him in panic, or maybe that guy's limbs were jostling around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. Like, you check your facts, Will. It might be an easier defense when you can hire the best defense attorney and your dad's a giant real estate mogul worth billions of dollars. It could be, but it helps. Could be what Jim said, too. You don't know. Yeah. Thank I, you, Will. The more money you have, the more you can spend. Good point, Jim. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's not always the most expensive lawyer that's going to do the trick. For instance, today, Club Soda Kenny. Yes, right. He's going to be the guy who goes into that He'll courtroom. He's the dumbest lawyer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Club Soda Kenny is going to go in because... The reason Opie and Anthony aren't here is if you're just tuning in. Yes. They're it, both dead. It's, it's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> they're However, found in a lover's tryst together in a vehicle. Jim and, Jim and I have never been happier because we're taking this gig full time now. They were found, and look, not to disrespect their memories, but they both had their pants around their ankles <laughs> and their hands on each other's penises. And it was just a tragic accident. They didn't realize the garage door was closed and the yeah. car was running. I mean, that happens sometimes, but at least, <laughs> at least they left us like they would want to have left us, you know? <laughs> 
Just tugging each other's puds. <laughs> <laughs> Tragic edging accident. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they said that uh, Anthony was found with his head against the window and, and his hands up in the slow down motion. He was apparently telling Hope to slow down. Hope, Hope was known as aggressive sexually. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Quick, quick jerk McGillicuddy was his nickname yeah. around the office. We kind of kept it under our heads. I mean, there were a few times where there was, uh, you know, physical incidents. Scarring would come in, and we knew what was going on. We just never thought that it would get to this point. We never thought that the tragedy would strike. We had warned the boys many times to always open the because they like to have the music really loud, like in casinos, so nobody could hear them jerking each other off. <laughs> exactly. God bless their souls. Not, they miss will be guys. missed. <laughs> um, on that note, we'll take a break and be right back. We should try to get one of them on the phone if they're awake. Hope he's awake. They're dead. Yeah, or, or not yeah, dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Sam, for blowing the bit. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The Twitterverse going. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, everybody was going for it. We'll be back. The Virus. Virus. Sirius XM. The Opie and Anthony show. Kind of. Sons, Opie and Anthony. Yeah, Opie and Anthony are uh, taking care of the biggest legal battle in the history of New York State, possibly the country. Yeah. The Opie and Anthony show versus Sandy Kane. She's yeah. uh, she's suing Opie and Anthony for a guitar being smashed and a hat being taken uh, in small claims court. Uh, if nothing else, it's hilarious, but <laughs> they'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Eric, have you heard from Opie at all? Yeah, I just got a text because I asked him, if, hey, you have the hotline, do you hey. want to call in? Mm -hmm. And he told me to fuck off. <laughs> well, why don't you call him on the hotline? I did. He's not picking up. Okay. Well, I guess we won't be hearing from Opie then. Well, you know what it is. Um, we have a, we have Brittany Andrews in today. Who yes. I think is really hot. Yes. Big, giant tits. And uh, Levi Johnston, Sarah Palin's old, almost son-in-law. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Brittany Andrews is now a producer-director. Oh, is that what she's That's doing? What it says okay. on, the, on the sheet that Roland just uh, gave me. She looks me. very good, too. Well, I'm I'm looking, her, oh, uh, she's still doing porn. I guess she's... I mean, she I, did I, fetish stuff, too. She was fucking hot, man. I'm assuming she's producing, directing porn. I didn't really read. I'm glad that you brought that question up, because it would have been embarrassing. Yeah, I know. I, I, didn't, I didn't do much research on her at all. I did none, I should say. I'm lying. Zero. Much, much. I did zero. Because I was too busy reading his book, and... Uh, well, she'll probably be more of a uh, go with the flow. Let's just comment on what's in front of us interview than what's his name. I'm trying to get a couple Johnston. of questions. I want to pra practice my Levi interview. All right, who do you want to who do you want to be Levi? Uh, whoever Danny can be Levi. Okay, that'd be great. I mean, Danny, do you want to take the role of? I'll try. I'll okay. do my best. This Are you going to do Playgirl? Yes. Okay. Yes, I am. I'm going to show my big my big Alaskan hog to everybody. Okay. Um, how tall is John McCain? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good question. Yeah. He's no, that's boring. How tall is John McCain? Yeah. No. He met him. Well, I know, of course, he met him, but we could probably just look that up. All right. I mean, do you have any other? Um, do you fly Alaska Air more because you're from Alaska? That's, that's stupid too. I don't like these questions. Yeah, that's a dumb <laughs> question. You know how bad. I wanted to pre-record Chip calling in. We got to do a pre-record Chip someday, so I can do a fucking a Chip phone or while I'm sitting here. Oh, and <laughs> you could just sit here and interview and go. I think we have a call. We have a call, and then Chip picks yeah, up. Yeah, Levi, what do you got? Your own jeans on or something? <laughs> you missed that I made that joke before you came oh, in. I didn't hear it. Except, <laughs> except Danny wasn't doing a character. No, 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 it was, was just, just completely legitimate. It was just being legitimate Danny. humor. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> There's nothing worse than when Chip repeats something you've said in real life. It's yeah. humiliating for all to hear. Yeah, <laughs> we could set that up if you want. Yeah, I want to do that a couple of times like, uh, um, oh no, Troy is pulling Travis away. Why? I just wanted to hear something quick. Oh, okay, cool. So, Troy, are you, do you have any opinion on the Troy Davis case? Yes. No. No. You cool. haven't done the research? No. Any, no opinions, but any questions? No. Okay. It's a conspiracy. I don't like Troy's, conspiracy. Troy's hat fits him because none of his hair is sticking out. He looks like a child. Yeah. <laughs> looks like a small boy. Straight brimmed hat. Yeah. Fucking our gang. Beat uh, it. Um, you know, you know, you know. You know <laughs> I don't no, trust no, anybody. No. There has been an attempt on the life of President no, Kennedy. No, I want to see no, the body. No. 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 Uh, there is no, an agenda no, with no, our government. No, We've been lied to no, before. No. 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 Do you know for sure? You know, it's, it's, you know, it's a little hard know, to believe. You know, you know, I don't no, trust anybody. No. You know, you know, you know, you know. Is 
it the truth? I don't know. Um, what were you thinking? Who hit that? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> big Cole Stogie shirt. What's a big Cole Stogie? I don't know. It's one of these ironic throwback shirts that Lucky sells. Sometimes so Eric's you, wife buys his clothes. For him. Sometimes. I think all the time. All of them. Big Cole Stogie boy. <laughs> Stogie boy. He's a big, <laughs> he's a big Cole Stogie Eric, boy. Why would you wear a t shirt with a word that rhymes with hoagie on the front of it? <laughs> and, 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 it. A, and it has an adjective that describes big. Yeah. It's big and Stogie. And co big Coles. Big Coles Stogie. It was yellow. I didn't read it. I just threw it on. Well, that's an excuse not to put it on. Yeah, it's yellow. I need, so where's, a, where's a yellow shirt? <laughs> To throw clam chowder on you. I you uh, no, I was just going to ask if you heard what uh, Florence Henderson said. Uh, that she had, uh, yeah, I did hear that. She, I, I didn't hear her say it. Well, she put out a, a book, I guess, and she was in uh, doing interviews yesterday, yesterday afternoon, at like 2.30 or something. But for some reason, at her age, she can't just kind of fade off into obscurity and, and be a TV legend. She wants everybody to know everything. And Florence Henderson said that when she was younger, she had a case of crabs. <laughs> that she got, then, and she got it from some politician, like I think. One, that was it was somebody running for mayor, I well, think. Well, we know who she didn't get it from. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, but I mean, what would possess you at this point in your life to be like, you know what? I need to tell the world that I one time had a case of crabs. To sell books because there's nothing else to talk about. You always got to reveal something yeah. to get people to talk about your book. We're all talking about Florence Henderson. There's got to be one quote. I got to buy this book. And then you buy the book and realize the only interesting thing in the entire book yeah. is that one time she had crabs. You realize how boring chapters are like, California, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> With an exclamation point. It's about her shitty trip to California. Isn't it called Brady Secrets or something? Ugh. You know what the book is called? Life is not a stage. Oh, maybe that's a chapter or something. Oh. Life is not a stage. Sometimes no. you get crabs. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes you let a donkey fuck you in your private life. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily just in front of people in Tijuana. She just wanted to cash in on everybody thinking of wholesome Mrs. Brady fucking some guy, <laughs> giving her crabs. At least that's a juicy tidbit. I hate these fucking Brady books because none of them ever reveal anything. Yeah. Oh, Mike Lookendlin revealed that one time uh, Robert Reed said shit because his coffee spilled. <laughs> Ooh. He cussed. Ooh. Or the Saved by the Bell tell all that stupid screech came out. It was just lies. Like He wrote like Zach and Kelly was in a threesome with the show producer, and Slater used to hook up with, like, and then, you know, Lisa would fuck everybody on staff. And, he, like, there's this whole list of things that Screech, I mean, they had to be made up because nobody gave them any credibility. I kind of like the fact that at least he wrote interesting stuff, though. If you're going to lie, make it good. <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. She said she woke up to little black things crawling over her bed and body. It's Anthony's worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Henderson immediately went to a doctor who helped her get rid of the creepy crawlers. And, uh, the creepy and, crawlers? Well, that's, that's, you know. I have creepy crawlers on my vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Please Sorry. isolate that, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and Lindsay, the, the mayor's name was John Lindsay. Uh, what was he the mayor of? Um, he was... Crab Town or something, right, Travis? <laughs> no, no. New York City. Why anybody laugh at that? John, L the, wait, the mayor of New York gave her crabs? John Lindsay, Jesus. former that mayor. Is that Lindsay? Former mayor of New That's York a pretty City. good fucking it's story. It's a nice little tidbit. 66 to 73. Wow. Mike, so it, Mike Bloomberg got my ass hairs greasy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but this guy gave her... This guy gave her... You put a pedestrian plaza in your asshole. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, put potted plants on my balls. <laughs> Theo LaGuardia made my cock swell. <laughs> he stepped on it with the heel of his lifts. <laughs> Is Lindsay still alive? Uh, no, Lindsay died in 2000. <laughs> so oh, he what? went from Eight. 70... <laughs> <laughs> and gosh, noshed on her pussy. <laughs> he went from 73 to 2000 thinking, oh, nobody's ever going to find out about it. And then Florence Henderson has to embarrass the rest of his surviving family <laughs> yeah. by He's... announcing he had crabs and gave it to her. <laughs> he sent her flowers in an apology letter. <laughs> oh, I know. That's hilarious. Scott Sorry, the 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 Sorry babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet they made that Brady Bunch tinkling link noise yeah. <laughs> when they walked on her pussy. Have you? You never had crabs, have you? You've I've never, had it three times. You have? Oh. Yes, of course. Because Ron Jeremy always said that's the only STD that he ever got, is yeah. crabs. Because I remember you saying that as much as you uh, have uh, had sex with hookers with no condoms, yeah. crabs is the only thing you've gotten. Uh, crabs I got three times, twice from the same girl in a week. <laughs> This black girl I fucked when I was Wait, 19. But to get crabs twice in a week, that means you have to be cured and then get them again. Yeah. She wasn't really... Uh, I, I knew I had them. I felt them the next day. Like, I felt something, and I looked down, 
And it's really a violating feeling when there's insects on your pubes. Because I have awful straight pubes like a Chinese man's hair. Yeah. My pubes are an abomination. And, so you, I, and you can see them. Of course you can. They're black. The and you pull it off and the little legs were going. Run, run, run. Those little tinkle toes. No. <laughs> um, so I pull the crab off and I went and got rid medication, which is a... Uh, it's like a weird shampoo, and you have to run this comb through your balls to get the nits and eggs. <laughs> oh. And you have to hot... They're laying eggs in your pubes? You have to hot wash everything really hot. And they, there was no recurrence, but a week later, I fucked the same girl again. I had a feeling she gave them to me, but I was... <laughs> was it, I had a feeling. I wasn't a, I wasn't a pussy getter at 19. <laughs> so you're like, well, I'll just use the shampoo again. <laughs> but I went home. It's amazing my dick stayed hard for that. I really was a trooper when I was 19. Yeah. And I went home, and I saw one of my pubes. But I already had the... I already had... So I'm like, okay, it was her um, who <laughs> gave them to me. You were like, you're like, look, it's probably her. That makes the most sense. But I'm not going to jump to conclusions. Let me do a little Let investigating. Let me fuck her again and see if I can reinfect <laughs> and <laughs> cure yourself of crabs. And then you just went and caught them immediately again. But, I, but it wasn't bad the next time because I just fucking I hopped right in the shower with the shampoo and the and, and I was gone. And then years later, maybe four or five years later, this girl I was dating shaved her pubic hair. So I think she cheated on me and got them. Yeah. And then I wound up getting them. But I was I think I was just starting stand up, so I was like, it might have been from a hotel or something or. She didn't know uh, where she got them. Hotel? She cheated on me, I think, and got I think, them. I, I bet she did. Which is fine. Um, well, at this point, I think you're probably moving past all over it. it. And that's why I fucking, I like that uh, all chicks should shave their pussies. Well, I was going to say that if you just you shave your pubes, pubes yeah. would, you'd get rid of them, right? Yeah. So you would you have to shave it. No, they could be in your ass hair or your legs oh, God. or your fucking yeah. eyebrows. Did you ever right. get crabs? No, no. Oh, okay. But but I love was always, you too. And that, that beard. <laughs> how great Wonderful. would that be? That's something that I was thinking of because I mean you could shave your pews and balls and stuff. But I mean you know a lot of people have body oh, hair they, that's I'm sure perfectly capable for crabs to live in. Crawl yeah. into your ass and nipples. I hate to be Greek and have crabs on my back hair. <laughs> how fucking awful! You know how much fucking like uh, Egyptians and Palestinians uh, must hate crabs. I don't know if they're hairy or not. Some Egyptian will call it. I'm as smooth as butter. <laughs> <laughs> See, does that mean Florence Henderson? <laughs> to take Raid shampoo. Rid. Rid. Uh, raid. Rid I'll should be Raid. Has, it's bug spray. I'll bet you she has really long ass hair. And she had to comb it out. <laughs> she had to comb it out. <laughs> Eve Plum had to come in and trim her asshole hair. <laughs> and Ann B. Davis yanked them out and fed them to Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of the dead crabs hitting the toilet. Yeah. And she punched herself in the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's them marching off her clit into the toilet. And their dad had to sit the kids down and explain to them, Your mom has yes, crabs. Yes. Well, Sometimes. you remember that free trip to New York we all took? Well, that didn't come without a price. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I don't mind if your mom cheats on me. <laughs> exactly. Because he <laughs> fucked me in the ass, too. Yeah. So your mom has crabs in her vagina. <laughs> mine are in my ass. Yes, and mine are in my poofy perm. <laughs> yeah. This my hair that was amazing in roots. Do they crawl up your whole body? I imagine if enough time goes by... Like if you don't wash? You can get them everywhere. If like, you... If you, but you'd notice, I guess, right away. But if you just kind of pretended they weren't there and you just showered regularly, no way, you wouldn't get rid of them. No, because they they burrow into your balls like. Oh. <laughs> but you can pull them out like they, they they're like, not like little ticks. They're or not like ticks. No, I think they come out. I remember pulling one out, and I'll never forget the legs going and pulling one off my pubes, Ugh. and it was fucking violating, man. Yeah, because you have little bugs just crawling on you. They must feel like they're inside you. But they're not. To me, they're they're not nearly as bad as like bed bugs would be, because crabs are get rid ofable. Uh -huh. Like what you got to do is throw out your fucking sheets, or like they're not going to infect your whole house like like fleas or nits. But they're even, just gross. Even like I feel even when you put new sheets on your bed, don't you just feel like they're there still? I don't remember. I think I just really hot hot washing my sheets were okay. Bed bugs would freak me out a lot more. What about lice? Never had them. But again, kids would get them in school. Yeah. But my, uh, my th sister had lice when she was a kid because she had hair that was long enough to like sit on. Ugh. So she had really long hair, and she ended up getting lice when she was like in second grade or first grade or whatever. And the whole house was just covered in plastic. Cause she had she ended up cutting all of her hair off. Yeah, fucking lice are awful. You just don't want them. But I, crabs are worse. No, I think lice are worse because uh, lice are. Uh, I think don't lice jump. Yes. Lice jump. Crabs don't. Crabs just grab onto your balls and drink. <laughs> <laughs> crabs are like actually good chicks. Somebody see, are crabs just lice that live in your pew? Like, do lice travel? 
Off your head? I guess. I mean, I, I don't think it's a hobby. <laughs> like, oh, it's going down there. Yeah, they'll pack and leave your cock to go somewhere for a weekend. <laughs> going up north yes, for the vacation. Yes, we're vacationing in Bob's asshole. Uh, I just pictured <laughs> crabs in Danny's beard. I, I can't stop thinking about it. Just up his chest and up his neck hair and into his beard. And it just keeps itching while he's trying to talk. He's doing, he's doing show prep in the office without yeah. realizing there's little bugs falling out of his yeah, beard. they're fucking getting stuck in the phone as he talks. If, if he had crabs in here, if anybody had crabs in here, and they fell out of his beard, like onto his keyboard, would we be in danger of crabs for sharing an office? Nah, I don't think so. You'd see them. I, I, you can get them from a toilet, though, I think. I've heard that, yeah. I had, how, where do they live off of, though? I mean, if there's someone before, use it right before you. I imagine the porcelain is hard for the little guys to hold on to, because they're like skin and hair. Do they hurt when they bite? No. They just tickle. Because their, like, their little feet are going like, ee, lee, 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 <laughs> on your balls. You feel it? Of course. Oh. That's how I knew I had them. I, you itch. And you can, like, like you're, you're scratching because they're walking. You feel like there's bugs moving on your groin. Yeah. And then you look down and see, you can see there them. are bugs moving A on your groin. A lot of times groin. you'll see them and they're in the very base of your where they are is where the hair meets your skin. Oh. And you'll see a black bump and you're not sure if it's just a, a hair bump and you pull it out and you go, oh, no. That wasn't just a hair bump. I mean, pardon the interruption of, of crabs talk for a second, but Kenny, are you... Speaking of crabs, you should have said... Are you had, Have you ever had crabs? I don't have any STDs. I mean, I'm not asking if you have. Have you had? I mean, crabs is something you get rid of. I said I've never had That's any not what you STDs. Said. You said I don't have any. I've never had any. Oh, okay. Are you headed down to the courthouse? You have to have a sexual relation to get those. <laughs> I hate your fucking, I hate your double-tied manila envelope. It's got the two red things on it with the string between them. It's secured. It's the, <laughs> <laughs> That's the evidence. It's all right here. Oh, my God. You're going you're gonna to set our boys free today. Yes, I am leaving now. I hope he gets them fucking like eight years in real prison. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Like that's contempt. illegal to shoot a hat. <laughs> to shoot a hat that has been defecated in some old law, like the Western days. He's just going to get everybody in contempt of court. No, what do you think? I'm going to be like Al Pacino in that movie? What movie? I don't know. What movie was that? I'm not helping you. <laughs> <laughs> so are you headed down there? Yes, I'm going to get the talent. and then I mean the defendants. Uh -huh. And then we're going down there. Where's uh, Ant? We, we're doing some trial preparation. Why? Well, no, no, meaning where are you? Are you me I know where Opie lives. You're picking Opie up. Are you picking Ant up there? Or is he meeting you down there? Kenny has, like... <laughs> He, it's he not a secret. He won't give information that is not... Oh, I forgot. The, okay. Like, you could just say, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I hope I'm not incriminating everybody. Ant stayed in the city last night. <gasps> That's right. What? I know you didn't want the information to in be the out there. In the same city that he's going to court in? <laughs> New York. Kenny, how could you let that leak out? <laughs> New York City, and I'm sorry that I let this out before the trial began. Anthony's in the Big Apple. Oh, great. That's right. Yeah, this. this <laughs> and he just <laughs> stares at the microphone. <laughs> he, he just shrugged to the microphone, pretty much. He could have just said the words "I don't know." That would have helped someone. Yeah, where is Audible he? medium. I'm leaving. Now. <laughs> All right. Well, nice. uh, best of luck, and please uh, call with updates. Call in, yeah, because Opie told Iraq e to go fuck himself when Iraq e yeah. asked if we wanted to get an update. Uh, I haven't had the balls to Ugh. call Ant. Good one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, we would love to hear from you guys. Even if Opie and Anthony don't want to talk, just to hear from you would be a blessing. I'll, I'll, I'll put status updates on shitty Facebook. Why don't you just call in? I hate the new fucking Facebook. You do. You, you've gotten more angry as the days progress. It just annoys me. Why don't we get Zuckerberg on the phone? Uh, Eric, on, Sam. can you get me Zuckerberg? I'll see what I can I could actually Thank get you. Zuckerberg. You He's could. He's one of my shows, yeah. Zuckerberg did? No, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what that would feel like I, to say. I could actually. The big me. shot came to see me. <laughs> Everyone was really excited all of a sudden. You know, it was actually Ted Zuckerberg. It was a different guy. <laughs> Jim, I'm a big fan of your, of your comedy. I have Facebook, but there's a comma between. They're different sites. Bull. Oh. Hey, comma. Book. <laughs> How do you visit that URL? <laughs> Face. Book. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> well, Kenny, Godspeed to you today. I know that Opie and Anthony are going to come out unscathed because Club Soda Kenny attorney at law is on the case. Don't misrepresent. Yeah. Well, you're acting as I'm, an attorney. I'm not an esquire. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, well, what can we call you then? Well, I, I do have s certain kind of professional licenses, but the, the, that is not one of them. All right, well, you're acting as an attorney today. 
No, I can't act. You're filling the role. They're acting as their own attorneys. Uh, so what are you doing with all that evidence in your hand? I'm like a legal aid. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, good luck. You uh, won't need it. I like it. the other kind as well. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? All right. Have fun with the show. Bye. Thank you. And I Bye. hope we hear from you. Bye. Um... Real quick before we move sure. fully on from crabs, yes, uh, a couple of people wanted to share their oh, good. stories. Uh, Gordon in South Carolina. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Jimmy, like you, I was 19 when I first got crabs. Unfortunately, however, it was my first time having sex. Uh, I actually lost my virginity and got crabs in huh. return. And uh, I was still living at home with my parents, so I and I didn't have any money, but we I found some dog shampoo, flea and tick shampoo, under the sink in the bathroom. And uh, believe it or not, it actually worked, and I got rid of the crabs using dog shampoo. Wow. My well, yeah. I mean, Let that be a lesson to all of you out there with crabs. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Just get some dog shampoo. Dugan in New Jersey. Good morning, boys. Hello, Dugan. I have some, uh, some fun crab facts. That there's actually two types <laughs> Thank of God. I was just thinking yeah. that... Uh, uh, the jam show with Jim and Sam, or what, jam in the morning, whatever yeah. they called this show, didn't have enough crab fun facts. We had stories, yeah, no fun facts. You should go on a menu, you know, like at Arby's. <laughs> yeah. Fun facts about crabs. Yeah, there's there's pube crabs and there's head lice. Yeah, we know that. I, I mean, I know they both exist. Yeah, I know those. That's not a fun fact. Head lice and them. pube crabs. Yeah. Yeah, but pube crabs stay in your pubes. They don't leave. They don't crawl like other places. That's yeah, why we, you got. Head. Head lice and pube crabs. But what about in your asshole, like Jim suggested? Yeah, exactly. Well, the, you know, the, the nether regions. Okay, so they will crawl in the taint area. Yeah. But what if you're a hairy guy and your hair kind of... I mean, there are guys who have enough hair that it kind of connects... They probably like the warmth of your crotch and asshole. Especially if you wear, like, tidy whities Yeah, and especially if you're, like, say you're, you're uh, an ethnic, like you're from the Mediterranean. <laughs> you have nice, warm, hot balls and ass cheeks. Yeah, and just cozy in your briefs. <laughs> Well, I imagine if your whole body smells like ass, they might like that. Maybe. Uh, All right. Thanks, boys. Punching out. Goodbye. Yeah, All right. Thanks. Props to Kenny. No, Kenny's not here anymore. I'm not an Esquire. <laughs> Kenny, he's just, he has a way of saying things. They're both hilarious and completely de derailing. Yeah. Like, there's... You laugh at what he says, but there's no place to go after no, what he says. nowhere. I mean, he, he does nothing. Um, I wanted to mention something from yesterday, too. Oh, yeah. Because we were asking <clears throat> why we couldn't get Jonah Hill in studio. And, yeah. Uh, I, we don't have an answer. I, 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 think, I don't think it was him personally. I think it was probably, I don't think he said, fuck Opie and Anthony. I think it's just... No, I mean, I talked to Roland, and he said that it's Roland's understanding that he had a limited amount of time to do some stuff. He did a bunch of TV. He's been a Howard fan forever, and he's never done Howard. So he did Howard. I have no no issue with. I, I don't think guys should be. You, you guys like the fans. We appreciate you guys being loyal, but you don't have to attack the guy on Twitter because it wasn't like he said anything bad about the show, or said he didn't want to do the show anymore. I wish he would have come in a little, like come in a few minutes early. Yeah, like, there's a balance because I, again, I do other shows when I'm on the road, uh -huh. and I wouldn't I wouldn't blow off a show that I had been loyal to, to do any other show. Yeah, I would try to do both. There's a way to do both. Yeah, I think there is. Yeah, I mean, but don't I, kill the guy on Twitter is what I'm saying. Because, I mean, yeah, let him have his day in court yeah. if we're theming the show. Because he did, like last time he was in here, the first thing he said was, you guys are great, You're, you guys had me on before anybody else would. Like, he remembers the show. So it's like he didn't come in this time, he should have. Yeah. But he didn't. He'll, I'm sure it's not, he'll come in next time. The hard thing, the hard thing about it, it's a really weird line we walk. Like, you know, because radio has egos like everybody else. But Roland had been, it wasn't like it was a last minute trip and, and, oh yeah, he just decided to go in and do that and he didn't have time or whatever. Roland said he had been trying to get him and he couldn't and he was repeatedly told no. Mm -hmm. So it's like, again, I think that was probably somebody on uh, his, I would say, team or one of those people behind the scenes probably just going, no, no, he's just doing this. But it's like, why would you just have to do that, like, instead of a show that's taking care of you? Yeah, I so mean. I still wish he would have come in, but I'm saying don't. You know, don't kill you. Yeah, he, he's plus. I mean, a lot of it probably has to do with his, he doesn't make his own schedule. But I can't see myself going to Seattle and blowing off B.J. Shea. Yeah, who's a friend of mine who's taken care of me when I was there for any radio show, or or, or I can't see myself blowing off Toucher and Rich in Boston, or uh, any of the guys that were were good to me. Like I'm sure I'm I'm sure that he knows we're here in New York. He may not remember that we're in the same building as Howard Stern. He knows. 
You think so? Yeah, absolutely. Um, people always know. Um, you you could forget at times. Yeah, you know what? I've actually gone to, I've gone to studios and not realized that I was in the same building I was in the last time I was in town. Especially because he hasn't done Howard, so that whole wing of the building was foreign to but him. But when you're a fan of Howard and you come into this building and you know he broadcasts right there. You're right. He knows. No one doesn't know where Howard works. You're right. You're right. So I kind of wish he would have come in. And also, there's we, we, we've been bitching about a video element to the show. This is where it kind of hurts because the video department here is small. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we have Amy Schumer on. And she's great as always. She's very funny. And she's talking about something that's topical. It's in the news. It's like, you know, her, 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 the Ryan, the Dunn, Ryan Dunn joke and her reaction to it. And she had mentioned it on a couple late night shows, but we have her here in studio. We're filming it and we have nowhere to go with the video. Yeah. It's just really, you know, this is a media company and they do a great job with a lot of things, but their video department just is not up to speed. They probably should get another person because if somebody's out for whatever reason or even, I mean, it slows down. If it's just a matter of editing video, I don't see there's any reason why they can't bring on a couple web team interns and just edit. Like, there are lots of college kids who know how to edit video. That's a missed opportunity. And what happens is when you miss opportunities, it's like this, this company's all about getting press. Like, they hire people to get press, for, which are it's smart. Yeah, we should be all about getting you press. You should be getting press because it's free. But when you have chances like this and you miss them, it's like not that the Amy Schumer thing is dead, but the more time passes... The more she talks about it other places, you're not associated with it. It's just... Yeah, and I mean, and, and, and people do have an extremely short-term memory. Yeah, it's I was not about like, to say, the, the, like, the attention span of, is very short. Uh, of people who visit sites, I mean, it's n nil. The so you need, I mean, something like that would need to change almost on a, on a, on a daily, on, like on every other day basis for right. it to be relevant. And Machine they, Roast was huge on Monday, big on Tuesday, still talked about on Wednesday, and today we're, like, mentioning it, like, every day. Yeah, it gets it's less and less. Yeah. And, uh... The show does not have a proper website. But then again, I don't need to eat a bullet. I appreciate Paul Field did some just to work to spruce it up, and I, I appreciate him doing that. But I need to have a real overhaul on it because mm -hmm. I keep forgetting, like, the website, you do need it. But, like, all that chip TV stuff, like, I've been kind of fucking laxing on it. Like, I'm always saying to open it, like, you guys got to fix that website, but I'm, I'm not doing it for mine either. So it's hard to well, I, I, get moving on that stuff. Obi and Anthony are developing separate websites, I know. Are they really? Yeah. It's it's so weird with a partnership. Yeah, because it's people think like, does that mean the show is breaking up? No, no. they're not breaking up because they, they both also have major side projects, and that's healthy. Like you have a side project as well. It's not like when you go and do stand up or promote your Leno gigs, it means you don't want to do the show. It right. means you do O and A, you do Leno, you do stand up. I think it's weird. Like I would love to ask those guys because I've never asked them, and I know them both really well. And mm -hmm. but I've never even said to them, what is the, when you're part of a team? Is there a part? I think what happens is because it's like a marriage. And and creatively, you both are you love doing what you do, but Opie has his life, Anthony has his life, and it's like they both have other interests, and you want to creatively, you don't want to have to call another person every time you want to do something at three in the afternoon. Yeah, I mean, as a comedian, your whole thing, like that's the one performer where you're completely by yourself. Like, completely. You write your own stuff, you go up by yourself, you do anything. Can you imagine, like, being part of a comic team? Like I didn't realize they were on... developing their own. I didn't even know that. They are, yeah. They're, they're developing, but, you know, and that's kind of... Along what they've been doing, like Anthony with the compound stuff and Opie with the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, so I just think they should have a site with both of them on it, and then yeah, I, I mean, I definitely think that the show needs a website. Drive traffic to those. I don't think the individual sites are bad to have at all. No, I just didn't know they were doing it. But it'd be nice. It'd be nice for the for the show to have a website. They yeah. do. There's a Facebook page. Facebook is just not the same. Yeah, but man. that's yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna. It's just not the same. It's not. No, I mean, you, sure? you, you need, need a website. With the links, your Twitters and your Facebooks. Nah, that's and irrelevant. It. There's a really weird <laughs> thing with videos. Like, viral videos are so hard. Like, Louis has tapped into something because you know, he's really great at doing them. I mean, like, when he walked into the pool. I mean, he's just a creative fucking editor, director. Yeah. But, like, once you start, once you latch on to that, if you have one place, I mean, Opie has Opie Radio. That's but a thing. website would drive more traffic than Opie Radio because more people know Opie and Anthony as a brand name. Like, And all those videos could be on the Opie and Anthony site. So many viral videos don't mean anything because you watch them and you, they get millions of hits but in the end you don't know what where they came from you don't care who posted them and you forget about them when you're done you do need a home base like you need to be able to say oh what what's this guy from one click away i found out recently um a girl i dated years ago while i was working here and uh we never had you know we broke up and we kind of remained casual friends 
and I find out she's fucking got these online videos. They're exercise videos. Uh -huh. But, like, you know, they have like 800,000 hits. You think they're all being watched for the exercise part? No! <laughs> she's actually really good at what she I don't want to say what she does, but okay. she's really good at it. But uh, it's fucking amazing to, like, and she has, like, this central place that everybody goes mm -hmm. to fucking. Uh, I'm like, wow. And that's her all videos she does. have a lot more hits than ours. She's do. not famous for other stuff? No. Wow. No. It's just, and a lot of guys probably jerk off to them. Yeah. I know I have. I would think so, yeah. I'm like, how dumb am I? Exactly. Oh. Before you got to the website, they each had like 50,000 views, and now <laughs> they have 800,000. But it just, I, I, I was just amazed at like, this is what you can do on the web without a radio show even. You can have yeah. a fucking real web presence and a real fucking career without a radio show. But you do need a home base. You have to have a fucking home base. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure I could find a web guy, and there's 100 web guys who would redesign your website, but... I know one specifically that would like to. Yeah, do. my my agent handles a lot of bands, and they have people that have been offering to do it. That do, but I I want to get it done. I keep saying I'm gonna get it done. I just got to put the money into having it done. Yeah. Um, there's a couple people who are desperate to tell crap stories. They okay, well, you know what? We can never get it. And look, Brittany Andrews is coming in. Yeah. And she did porn and fetish. They they have probably dealt with. I think Belladonna one time said she had one in her eye. A crab? Yeah. Oh. But How it was did actually at a seafood restaurant. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was Jim realizing that was a chip joke yeah. for, and quickly covering. <laughs> That's the best part about chip, that like you can bomb and then real quick in the end just add it. Yeah, I know. Then all of a sudden say, I'm oh, a big a cold joke. stogie boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is stogie boy in there? He's doing okay. By the way, that's what happens when, when you have a... Uh, a big cold stogie boy is a nickname <laughs> for the rare but 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 feasible very solid flu shit. <laughs> you say I dropped a big cold stogie boy. Eric, did you know that before you got the shirt? It always comes back to me being fat or shit. I'm not saying you're fat. I'm hey, saying a big cold. Yeah, I'm not saying that either. I'm saying that you're a fat shit. Yeah. Oh. Oh, Dan. 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 We weren't going there. I did it. <laughs> uh, a fat stogie. <laughs> oh, Travis. Well, I think that. No, I'm just asking. Oh, I just want to know what big cold stogie sounds like because I mean I know I know what Eric sounds like obviously and I know what the virus sounds like but I've never even heard Big Cole Stogie. I, I would love to hear it. No. Yeah, there's no. <laughs> oh, hope he's not here to force him to do something. <laughs> we technically don't carry boss uh, juice. So yeah, there's, there's no way I'm doing anything and and. You. A, a big cold stogie. That's that's a flu shit that is really solid. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you step back from the bowl, it comes above the rim. Ew. That's a big cold stogie boy. <laughs> Eric, you knew that before you got it? <laughs> no, I didn't. And they're really dark because oh. you've been taking Pepto because you have the flu. Oh, that's disgusting. Why, why is the shirt yellow, Eric? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It should be dark brown. I just wore it because it was yellow. That's all. <laughs> I didn't why, know but why is that it? a good thing? Like, why, exactly. Like, <laughs> I don't have any yellow shirts that I would certainly wouldn't wouldn't Big wear it because. Big cold stogie boys, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I feel bad. Eric is like because I've got shirts that like if I wear them, I'm like I know I'm gonna have to be prepared to explain it or take shit or at least have an argument for it. So yes. sometimes I'll wear them, sometimes I won't, depending on my mood. There's no way that Eric thought that that shirt would draw any attention, because it shouldn't. It's just, yes. <laughs> Eric happens to be wearing it, and it says Stokey Boy on it. By the way, uh, let's, let's, take these, even. let's take the crab calls, because I'm going to want to take a break before... Um, Miss Brittany. I, I, would not, I would not like to make her wait. Of and, course uh, not. We may have to go right from her into Levi if he comes in after, so let's, let's take a couple calls and take a break, and I'll make love. All right, we got a plan for the rest oh, of the show. I love a plan. Mm -hmm. Larry in Florida. Hey, yeah. Uh, love you, Jim. I can't Hi, Larry. stand you, Sam. Oh, wait. Hey, uh, Dad, good timing, because we got a hotline call. Oh, hotline call. <laughs> Larry should have insulted Samuel. Put him on. Take oh, take him off hold. If, take him off hold. Take him off hold. Take him off hold. Put him on hold. Let me pick him up. No, 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 no. It's a real comedy of errors here, guys. It might not be for the air, Sam. Oh, so why wouldn't he call a cell phone? Does that mean I have to talk to Larry after he insulted me? Well, let's hang on. Sex man, or I'm sorry. I haven't hung up on on you big yet. Cole, Larry. Big Cole Stogie. Uh, no, Ken, it's Kenny. He's uh, asking Sal to go grab something from the office and bring it downstairs. Oh, boo. why would you call the hotline? We boo. just. Oh, Kenny, I saw Hi, sir. Larry, what do you want? Okay, start start well, your call over from the beginning, sir. Yeah, nice. repeat what you said. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's, that's not funny. Okay. I love you, Jim. Thank Sam, you. you're all right, I guess. No, I got <laughs> crabs like when I was 19. And uh, I had no idea what they were, so I went to the what doctor. What could they have been? 
What do you think they were? Small dinosaurs? <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid. I didn't know. So it was a really, really bad infestation. Oh, okay. So I went to the doctor, got this stuff, put it on there. About two weeks later, I feel this shit crawling up my chest, into my beard, and it ended up infesting in my eyebrows, too. It was so uh, Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. They were, like, infested in my eyebrows, in my beard, in my chest. But they weren't in my pubes anymore. So Commissioner Gordon, he, he don't know what the fuck he's talking about. They how, will travel. How do you get them? Your hair's at. How do you get them out of your eyebrows and beard? Uh, well, I use this, medic, uh, this uh, medical shampoo that the doctor gave me, and it killed the shit in my, in my pubes. But... I didn't know that they had moved up my chest and about a week or so later. It chased them out like when an exterminator comes and clears your house and all the mice <laughs> run to your neighbor's house. <laughs> they ran up to your beard and eyebrows. Yeah, it was pretty disgusting. I, I, I got to admit it was like the worst thing I've ever had. That's horrible, Larry. Horrible. Yeah. Um, uh, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it, it's not anything good. If anybody gets them, go to the doctor, get them taken care of. Don't be spreading them around. And the bad thing was I was still fucking this chick about a month later and her pubes grew back. I didn't know why she had shaved her pussy. That's kind of the same thing that happened to me. Yeah, she shaved her pussy. I came back. I I didn't know why. And then about, you know, a few days later, I'm infested all over the place. You know? oh. And she wasn't even a whore. She was a really fucking nice girl. Yeah, but I mean, she had crabs. She was probably a little bit of a whore. Uh, she was fucking around on me, but... <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Hey, you know what I was just thinking? What's that, Dave? Like, you know, a lot of people, they sleep, uh, and they have pets in the house, and I'm, and I'm not making any peanut butter jokes, but, like, you know, dogs sleep in the same bed with people. Yeah. That's just a fact. Now, can crabs live, like, in, in, your, in your pet? Oh, my God. And then Larry, give it back to you? Like, can that happen? Can crabs live in your pet? I don't think so, because they're more, I, I don't know, they probably could, but they're, they, you know, they get fleeced. Crabs just like how human balls smell. Because <laughs> if the dog sleeps on the bed, but do crab, crabs don't jump, though. But they can still live I mean, on they a sheet. I mean, they I would go on a sheet if, and, if you're that close. Not, I mean, look, if they're making it to eyebrows and shit, they could make yeah. it to your dog, right? Oh, they can definitely crawl. That's horrible. Oh, boy. Yeah. Jim, I hope you don't mind a little controversy on the Ooh. show. Because uh, Seth says that this guy is lying. Seth. Oh, I'm lying? Okay. Yeah, hey, uh, Jim, you had a beard when you were 19 for uh, some crabs to infest the, there? He means Larry, not Jim. Larry, yeah. not me, sir. Yes, yes, I had a beard at 19. Why do you want me to say I'm a hairy motherfucker? <laughs> I don't know about that. Hey, nah, that's, that's fine. The that's, that's believable. Shut up. Yeah, I knew kids in high school. Uh, yeah, I knew beards. kids in junior high school with full beards. I knew guys in, in, in other schools that had them, too, right? You're just trying to one-up Elementary, right? Ship. He's trying to one up it. Don't pay him no attention. My elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> you see, Dan, I told you not to pay any attention to him. Thank you, Larry. Why, would, why wouldn't you? It's the best in the world. No, because he just keeps going, and he doesn't realize when to leave well enough alone. Just go to the well or something. What, are you going to get some water? Are you thirsty? I'm not, no, I'm not now thirsty. Now you're doing it. Um, what's up, Dave? <laughs> hey, fellas. How you doing today? Uh, hi, Dave. <laughs> I was good until, until Chip showed up. Oh, sorry about that. So... I, had, I was kind of like in the same position as Jim, only I think I was a little bit more of a sex addict. I used to have hookers come into my parents' basement while they were upstairs asleep uh, in, the, in like 1, 2 in the morning. I had, I had like no fear of getting caught. I did the same thing. Really? <laughs> yes, I had a pregnant prostitute spark up a crack pipe. In your parents' house? <laughs> yes, where my grandmother used to sleep before she died. <laughs> was your mom and dad at home? It was fast asleep upstairs, <laughs> dreaming that their son wasn't garbage. <laughs> and, a, and a pregnant prostitute had a, was smoking a crack pipe. Eight months pregnant. Yeah, oh, oh, my God. God. No bullshit. Oh, you have life experiences, Norton. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right, so now that I've been one up, so this girl comes in. We get. I, I can tell she's dirty, but does that stop me? No. I go ahead and hit it anyway. The end of the night, she's leaving. She's cold out. Not only does it cost me $150, she steals my socks. I wake up the next morning. I am itching like like there's no tomorrow. But you knew she had crabs. No, I knew. I knew I had crabs the next morning. I didn't know she had them oh. until the next morning when I. Had. But man, these. This is an itch. It's unmistakable. You will never forget this type of itch, uh, Jim. You remember? Yeah. Is it that bad? So, oh, my God, it's brutal. So, But I didn't know nothing, so I just went, I said, I said well, what is this? So I, what do I do? I asked my mom. You asked your... 
And yeah. did she tell you about when she had them? Yeah, she was there. No, she didn't say she had them, but she she was able to identify them rather quickly. Which is <laughs> oh yeah, your mom, well. <laughs> your mom and Florence Henderson were fucking the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what these are, son. No problem. Matter of fact, I got the shampoo right here. Hey. Yeah, exactly. It's in the cupboard. All right, thanks, Dave. There. Well, listen, uh, we got a bunch of guests coming up. Brittany Andrews and she then yet? Levi Johnson. Uh, I don't think her, her person is here. All right. I don't think oh, she hello. is. Uh, Laney? Uh, Laney. Mm, okay. Maybe. All right, let's take a break. We'll I come back in a couple minutes. I did want to... Uh, we were, were just putting things together uh, because Kenny just left to go to the courthouse. Yes. Because as we talked about in depth yesterday, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, Sandy Kane is suing yes, Opie and Anthony. Uh, and that's why Opie and Anthony aren't here, and Jim and me and everybody else is. Yes, jam um, in the morning. Yeah, jam in the morning. And we're jamming in the morning. Um, and Troy did this. Twatogate, 2011. Well, yay! Well, you know, I mean... So we'll be covering that <laughs> all, all morning long. He also, just because I guess he heard us talking, uh, wanted to make us happy. And I, I think he sees the future of this show, Jim. This is this the future show. of radio. Um, and this is what he heard. Get up, folks. It's Jim and Sam on the Morning Jam. We'll be right back with more. I like it. Of the morning jams. <laughs> Sirius XM. Sirius XM. The virus. The Opie and Anthony Show. What's going on? You got the production wrong. I, I mean, I guess this is the Opie and Anthony Show, but Jim, I mean, I didn't know if they wanted it brought to air, but you brought to air that... O and A are no longer with us. Yeah, and I, and I think the fact that we've immediately changed the name of the show yeah. is very important. Should, going, I think you should, yeah. Okay, I'll bring it back the way it should be brought back. Eric, if we could Please. bring down the music. Uh, as you know, Opie and Anthony died uh, last night. Mutually masturbating. Mutually masturbating each other in a car with the radio loud like in Casino. Yeah. Because <laughs> they, leave, they yeah. leave the car on when they as do Danny it. Danny said it was a case of edging gone too far. Yeah. Anthony was found with his face against the window mm -hmm. and his hands in the whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. Oh, <it's> too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> they should have had a safe word. But this is your new morning experience. The Morning Jam with Jim and Sam. It's about time we added a little personality to this show. Am I right, Jim? Had a boy, Sam. <laughs> oh, I just got an amazing t uh, text. What's that? I had uh, patience with uh, crabs of the eyelids. Oh! The medical term for crabs is pediculosis. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Pediculosis. It's kind of like ridiculous, but with crabs in your eyes. <laughs> Look at Steve. It's Dr. Steve, of course, his show's on at, uh, Saturdays. At 10 Eastern. Weird medicine. As much as we talk about Dr. Steve, he barely gets a plug in. <laughs> I know. We should plug him a lot more. <laughs> never plug his show. But I, I, my own uh, theory is that that's because you guys don't remember when his show is on. Um, I don't. I, don't, I never think about I probably it. wouldn't remember if I wasn't here on Saturdays right. when Dr. Steve's show would be on. But um, we do have Brittany Andrews coming in soon. She's on her way to the building. Oh, is she? Okay, good. Yeah, she's not here yet. And then we have... Uh, we thought we were going to have more time with her, but she's late. Yeah. We have... Levi, Levi Johnston's coming in at nine. Yeah, I mean, unless she just wants to sit. I mean, but we're gonna talk to, we're gonna ignore her if she stays in here for a little while at least. But he might only have till nine thirty. Then we could talk to her again after if she yeah. wanted, if it goes good. And I think Kristen Davis is gonna be with her. I like Kristen. I haven't seen her in a while. That's the uh, the madam from New York, that, or the ex madam. I don't know what she calls herself. That she ran for New York governor. Yeah, yeah. She was in the debates with. Uh, uh, Jimmy McMillan, the rent is too damn high. Oh, yeah. That's right, the rent is too damn high. <laughs> she was she was trying to go for that ridiculous ticket, like, oh my God, there's a madam running, and Jimmy McMillan just came and stole all of her thunder. Yeah, he he really did fucking. Uh, it was hard to ignore a black guy talking in cadence with white hair like that. You could yeah. not pay attention to him. What did his beard look like? Some historical figure, Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Douglass. Yeah, but no one thinks about him anymore. No. Then that's that. Look, that's the viral video age that we live in. Jimmy yeah. McMillan was a viral star, and now it doesn't matter that we got photos with him, does it? Who's that guy, this guy in that photo? People will be like, "Who's that?" Yeah. No one cares. Remember, rent is too damn high. No, 
No, no I don't remember. With his dumb gloves. He was a martial <laughs> artist. Ah. He was was a, he? <laughs> yeah, he was an interesting guy. Uh, Interesting guy. He was either a martial artist or a liar. You didn't. It was one, <laughs> one, of, yeah, one, one of the, of the two. two. You can never be positive. But Kristen kind of turns me on. You like her? I should say kind of. She turns very me much on. so. Yeah, she does. She's very sexy. Well, and then Brittany Anders, I love. Yeah. Well, they're both going to be here. Um, and I noticed during the commercial break, you informed Travis that he'd be shooed off of his point. Off well, of I requested. His uh, because we had some girls coming in. If you have two people and you always want to have them at the console, well, I don't like having them behind us because we, you know. What if we sandwich you? We put one of the girls in Ant's seat. Yeah. I know that's sort of an in memoriam seat right now I would after sit, the edging incident gone wrong. And I would sit where Ant sits, but I'm just comfortable being here and yeah. talking to them on my right. I mean, that's just where. It's like when I would get escorts, so prostitutes, I would always <laughs> get them on the right side of the car, they would have to lean in. Well, you explain that to them when they get here. See, yeah. I was going to sit you on the other side, but it's but, like escorts. I feel yeah. more comfortable with you here. Yeah. So, uh, well, hopefully Roland will be on top of it today. I'm but sure. I guess. Uh, Brittany Andrews is uh, now creator, producer, and director. It's amazing when these porn stars just... Uh, branch out. Branch out is the word. Um, she's been called one of the top three females in the adult industry by Entertainment, well, by Entertainment Tonight. Do they really? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, never, I didn't realize Entertainment Tonight was ranking uh, porno Porter. stars. I didn't either. I haven't watched in a long time, so I don't know if the format of the show has changed at all. She is a pretty, a pretty legendary performer. Um, yeah. I, I would like to have sex with her. You would. I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me just write that down. Question one. This is Jim Norton. Would you possibly have sex with yeah. Jim? Yeah. Like that should actually be followed. <laughs> would you possibly have sex with Jim? Eh. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what she's promoting, actually. Yeah, all I'm seeing is producer, director. Porn star DJ, Miss B, her oh. bio. Oh, okay. Oh, here it is. So she's got a Twitter, a Facebook. Oh, good. We'll promote her MySpace. I'm glad that's on the... Uh, <laughs> My, where, where, where do you see this? Brittany Andrews plugs. Where is that? I don't have that. Oh, thank you. I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. I was panicking. She's got her Twitter, Facebook, and MySpace that she's promoting. Oh, uh, Club yeah. Brittany, pay Miss Brittany .com. Oh, I like that. Exquisite feet. Does she have nice feet? I would love to find out. Do, do you like feet? I mean, no, not specifically. Have but you ever touched your girl's feet. toes? No, but I would, but I haven't. I don't have a specific thing for it, but I'm not grossed out by feet either. Yeah, I'm not a big... F I'll, I'll suck... F I kind of like feet if they smell a little bit. Yeah, you, you like body odor. Sometimes. Like it's, a little a little, a little, little bit of female a, musk. A, a little bit of uh, a stink. If it's really bad, I can't deal with it, but I do like a little bit of it. Yeah. You know, um... Like you don't want, like, for somebody to be sitting next... Well, what if they're sitting next to you? I don't and there them, is a hint of body odor. That can turn me on. I don't want them to smell like Tippy Tom, but I mean, they give me a fucking... <laughs> Shit in their pants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just fetid, rotting flesh. But I like a little bit of a, a sting. Like, like, if, bit. like if you're eating dinner and you're just hanging out and you, there's a little, from a a girl? little whiff yeah yeah it, it could turn me on you like that not yeah. from a guy though no never <laughs> no I don't want to smell a man I don't want to smell a man's cologne much less his fucking body odor I guess uh, Br Miss Brittany Andrews is a DJ too um, yeah I thought that's what she was promoting but I guess uh, not she's a major mover and shaker in the international DJ club scene who's bigger DJ Miss B or DJ Troy Kwan <laughs> hmm. I don't know I think I have a better shot at fucking DJ Troy Kwan. <laughs> yeah. Right now, I think you might. Um, do we have any update on where she is? No. Still, kind of, still on her way? Because we're literally... Because Levi's supposed to be coming in at 9. Well, and he is coming in at 9. Like, we're not going to push him back. No, no, he can't. Because this is... Well, Levi's the whole reason you came in, pretty much, right? Yeah, because... Um, He's only in New York today, I believe. That's yeah. what Roland said. Watch, we should watch. He goes, no, no, I'm here for a month. Yeah, <laughs> so I, live <laughs> I moved here. Yeah, I live here. What are you talking about? Oh, I see a couple blondes walking up the hallway. If it's a couple, then she's here. It's a couple. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, one of them was Eric. I was... No, yes. <laughs> Roland... I was both of them. Roland's, <laughs> Roland's been making fun of Eric's dyed hair. And uh, saying, don't worry about Eric, he's a blonde. He'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> Just accusing, accusing Eric of having blonde the, uh, moments. Yeah. Hey, um, oh yeah, you filmed Lovely Britain. Yeah, get the tripod. Yeah, I'm multitasking. That's what I call myself. <laughs> Very clever. Here they are. Welcome to the show, ladies. Right Hi. next to Mr. You? Norton. Hey there, gentlemen. Hello. Hi, Thank you for you? having us on this morning. Did you do traffic? Are you staying in New York? I live in New York now. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I oh. did your guys' show like 
Was I here though? Yeah, you were. Okay. When was it? When was that? I wasn't here. You guys aren't. No, we're, we're live now. We're actually on. Oh, you are. Yeah. People. Make what can that I? Mistake. Can I say anything? You can. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of reminds me, like you know, when you've been a porn star as long as I have, like I have to have sex with people at least three times to remember who the hell they are. Oh, really? In you know, twenty years of being in the business, you're like, did I have sex with you? And the other person's like, I'm not sure. Did we? <laughs> it's like, let me see your penis. Maybe I might be able to remember. You I've know, had the same thing. Right oh, they also. <laughs> You know what? Me too. I happen to be a bit of a tranny lover. Oh my god! I've just met my wife. Wow. Uh, hey, no, I'm I'm serious. You know, it's uh, I kind of I, I do the DJ thing now, porn uh. star DJ Miss B, which is why we're here today to promote our event. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I I'm known to be a strap on queen as well. I actually brought my penis with me today. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> and it's one of those things I always say to guys. I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, my my breasts are made out of silicone, and so is my penis. So if you can. Suck my tits, you can suck my dick. So that's you're how I kind of feel. You're preaching to the choir. <laughs> <laughs> Do you meet guys that haven't had that experience, but they're willing to take a strap on from you? You know what? At the end of the day, I have date rape drugs. I really don't care. It doesn't matter. They're going they're down. Gotcha. Ah. Okay. <laughs> I kind of like that. I like yeah. a girl who's willing to fuck you in the ass and drug you. <laughs> exactly, right? If, if Brittany Andrews date raped you, would you consider it date rape? Or would you, or would you, no. would you go to the police lucky. and yeah. tell on no. me? Like, <laughs> what are the cops really going to yeah. say, right? Like, I, uh, a porn star raped me. It's like, dude, go home. Yeah. <laughs> I'd go on Twitter and talk about it, <laughs> how great it was. I woke up with cum all over me, and it was mine. Hey, now. <laughs> so, um, what, have you fucked trannies or no? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, being that uh, I, I have the whole... Uh, strap on penis uh, dealio. Uh, quite often, yeah, exactly. Quite often when I'm with a gentleman, um, I'm always trying to take it to the next level. Right. So I'm like, okay, if you suck my dick, let's say you suck a real one, baby. So now, what was uh, this, by the way, Brittany, <laughs> Brittany, Brittany, Brittany is what you call it. Sorry, this sorry. <laughs> Christian's like, you know, I, you know, it's we're supposed to give it clean here, girlfriend. Sorry, it always like, goes straight to my penis. <laughs> no, Brittany's a good egg. Um, so wait, what, now, what right. trainers have you slept with that are that are in in the business? Not that I. I've seen any of their movies, but just from them. Exactly. No, people out there might recognize their names. There's people out there have no idea what you're talking about, and you're like, yeah, I know a lot of trainees in the business. Who have you slept with? Because yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, quite often, usually it's, you know, like sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the middle of the night. You know, right. hit up Euros.com or something and get just, you know, so your local like, hooker. Oh, some Jennifer Paris or somebody. Uh, just, just some local local tranny <laughs> hooker. Whatever shows up at like 5 a.m. in the morning when you're like totally wasted. Like, hey, it's Venus. Woo! You guys really <laughs> do have a lot in common. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> he likes trannies. She likes trannies. A really funny movie promo. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you're, uh, you're, Oh, good. You do a lot of fetish stuff too, right? Uh, yeah, I do. I, uh, you know, I used to own a dungeon for like ten years in in LA. I had a five thousand square foot studio, and one of the uh, the portions of the studio was my dungeon. And it's one of those things of like where I had that dungeon for ten years, and I had this feeling that the day that I no longer had it, I would really miss it. <laughs> And I'm right. I do miss my how dungeon. Many, oh. How many doms did you have working for you? Um, you know what? Primarily, it was a, a studio for uh, photo and film. So, like, it was mostly just for shooting videos. Okay. But, you know, I did rape a proper amount of asses on, on my disciplined horse. And, you know, I remember one of my favorite scenes. I was like, I had these two young girls, and they had never seen, you know, a girl truly peg the hell out of a guy's ass. And so they asked if they could, you know, be, you know, voyeurs and watch the scene. And I was like, yeah go ahead, you know, take a seat. And I mean, it was so hilarious because the discipline horse in the middle of the scene like broke, but I did not lose my rhythm at all. I just dropped to the floor and just kept going, man. <laughs> That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies. <laughs> Sounds like a good one. Yeah. It's kind of like Apocalypse Now, but with a dick in the ass and a horse breaking. Hey. Like, the way it should have been. <laughs> oh, my. Let's stay away from the bestiality. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant the, 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 what's it called, the thing? The discipline horse. That's what I mean, the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Is this, oh, yeah. I just Sorry, my mind just my goes in wrong. I'm still half asleep. No, you don't I understand. Got, we've, been, we've been working really hard on our event that we're doing, which is uh, the Players Ball this Friday. And like I said, I DJ now, porn mm -hmm. star DJ Miss B. So I was uh, working on my, my set last night kind of late. What is the Players Ball? <clears throat> the Players Ball you know, is where pets? everybody where everybody dresses up like pimps and hoes. Oh. And so me oh, and yeah. Kristen decided to get together because, you know, we are the, the number one players here in New York City and we're going to do a ball and uh, just celebrate, you know, all the pimps and hoes in New York. 
Are you guys <laughs> my birthday. It is also a birthday party. And it's her party, birthday. So. Woo, we were going to bring a birthday cake today, but somehow it didn't uh, come it together. Go with my muscle sorority diet plan. Oh, okay. <laughs> exactly. I'm on a cleanse right now, too. So. Are you on Metafast like Bob Kelly? <laughs> no. That fucking dumbbell like, has food being delivered to him. That's funny. Now I'm like doing no drug, sex, or alcohol. I've been nothing but fruits and veggies. I'm on like day 25 now and I am I was really good the first couple of weeks where it's usually the opposite way, like where in the beginning you're really frustrated. Right. I'm the exact opposite. I'm like so over it right now. I'm like, oh my God. Last year I made it to 28 days. So Of only fruits and vegetables? Yeah, primarily just fruits and vegetables, like soups and juices. I got a Vitamix, so I just throw everything in. I made something really gross. Like, in the beginning, it was, like, fun and interesting to throw shit in there and just eat whatever comes out. Like, now, it's just like, okay, this is really gross. I'm really over it. But how are you, how, how is that a cleanse? It just makes you shit more? You, um, do, uh, you don't yeah, need yeah, to take any fiber, I will say that. Really? <laughs> but, no, I mean, it's kind of like the, the Gershon miracle. So, I mean, it's just like... Not eating any processed foods, everything that's just from the ground, and just being a really good girl. I'm like doing a bachelor party tonight, and I can't drink any alcohol. So. What do you do at a bachelor party? Just dance, or do you do like a show? No, with a girl? I'm. Uh, it's for my girlfriend, so it's a bachelorette oh, party. Okay. So we're. I got like a male stripper coming. We're going to a restaurant. We're like we're doing. It's gonna be fun. Just rape the groom, maybe. That's a great bachelor party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> rape. <laughs> Just sodomize the groom. The stripper. <laughs> like he's pretty hot. Like hello. Is he gay? Uh, I asked him specifically not to send me a gay guy. So okay. a lot of them are gay, right? But you know what? At the end of the day, I have a penis. So whatever, bend over, piatch. Yeah, I guess so. That's the, the advantage of being a girl who's got a strap on. You love raping people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much a win-win for you. It works for me. You know, I'm happy. At the, I can totally bust a nut from it, so. I mean, you that can, you come from, can you come from somebody sucking a strap on? Yeah, I totally can. Hardcore. But you need... Is there like, like more a, so than almost getting the toite licked. Really? Yeah. So wow. you like the whole humiliation aspect of it? Yeah, I love men with small penises. Do you? Yeah. Wow, fucking... Can, you just walked into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> It's all we have around here. Yeah, there's nothing but small dicks. So what are you doing for your birthday, Kristen? I'm here. I'm here and <laughs> promoting this event. So that's what I'm Where is so, the event? Yeah, can you tell it's us at, where the event is at? Because I never remember the address. It's at Hotel <laughs> Chantel, which is at 92 Ludlow off of Rivington. It starts at 9, which is officially the media event uh, from 9 to 10. And then we will be continuing the after party, which is the player's ball from 10 to 4. Is there Dennis a, Hoff going there from the Bunny Ranch or no? No. You never uh, know no. who might show we up. We have, We've got we have a, a lot of a celebrity lot of, pimps and hoes that are coming. And you know? we also have a, stars, got a bunch Alexis of porn Ford. stars. Yeah, we got I've got we've got I got two limos. So we're gonna be coming in proper. So yeah, we got like Alexis Ford. We've got um Natasha Starr that's coming in. We've got Kendall Brooks, a Playboy model. We've got we got a bunch of girls. We got fifteen girls that are gonna be And see and I, and I asked you to come with me. Yeah, you guys oh, gotta you did come. Invite me. I asked when you to it? be my date. That you did. When is it tomorrow? Right? Uh, it's tomorrow, and you're like, I have I'm to work. Working. I am working. Uh, you know what? Because we're hoping like, on, to do this again, you, and like maybe do like a, a a costume contest. So maybe you guys could come and like MC it with me. Oh, like the best pimp and hoe costume in all would of you New come York City. Looks like a leather collar. No, yeah. I would dress up like I'm not really a sub. I suck my cock, baby. <laughs> I, like being, I, I like being humiliated, but I wouldn't consider myself a sub. Yeah, um, yeah. But do you, wait, do you, what do you have under your under your uh, under the strap on to make you come? Do you have like a, oh, a vibrating thing? I don't need anything. It's one of those things. If like I'm a very vaginally orgasmic woman, so oh. I mean, like I come when I'm sleeping. I mean, the the, the toite, it you know, it contracts, expands, contracts, expands. Are you doing kegels in your sleep? I totally do hardcore. I wow. mean, but it's just my mind is connected to the toite, and it, I don't have to think about it. It just does it. So I don't need anything inside of the toite in order to bust a nut. So I mean, and it just really. Stimulates my mind, which stimulates the toite. Can you have? Can you come from having sex, actual intercourse? Oh, hardcore! I can, you know, all night long. I can ruin that. Thirty to fifty. Yeah, <laughs> you can ruin that. I beg to differ. Oh, you know what? <laughs> this is one of the favorite ways I love to humiliate men: is if their penis is too small or they can't, you know, oh. fuck me. I make them put on a strap on. Oh, I Jesus. love it. Now, Jim. I said before Sorry, he, I cracked myself up. He kind it of, is really hot, actually, because it's so humiliating. It's like, your penis oh. is so useless that you need to put a, a proper cock on. Jim, ah. Jim likes has said that he likes sometimes when he's fucking a girl, uh -huh. if she brings up men... 
that she's oh, fun. cuckold. Yeah, a bit of I a love cuckold. Little... Oh, I'm not even going to start going there because it is way too early to get that dirty, nasty, no, and disgusting. It's not, no. <laughs> We've been here for a while, so it's, it's, like, it's late in the morning for us. Last night, yeah, I like, yeah. I like the cuckold. I don't know if I could watch it. It's one but of those I like things that, it. like, where it's a fan, it's a better played fantasy than maybe doing it in real life. Yeah, because you don't want to see that. You don't want to watch your woman get fucked really well by someone, and then all but, of a sudden, you know, like I was going to get even more. Yeah, like because if I'm going to do that, and if it's going to be in person, I'm going to make sure that you're truly, really humiliated yeah and yeah why do it half ass yeah exactly <laughs> oh she's the best i wish she, she said how much she likes small dicks i wish we had bobo in here just to show her oh that would have been God, who we have knew? a we have a guy uh -huh, he's got a really small Bo penis he has yeah. the smallest penis you've ever seen oh my seen. god you know what i actually oh. ended up having sex with a virgin midget in a taxi cab <laughs> in the middle of times square ages how? ago how, how? Not, yeah how you said i ended up did you plan on it, or where were you, you sharing where a cab? Where did you find that virgin <laughs> midget? Like, where, like, uh, he was a corner? fan of mine. It was for a film that I was doing. And, um, mm. yeah, it was one of those things. It was really kind of strange. I mean, but it, it was like a tampon. I, mean, I really couldn't feel it. But, I mean, the guy was really sweet and nice. And However, now, like, ever since I've done that, I've got all these weird, strange virgins for, like, the last 15 years that all want me to, like, de-virginize them. But will you tell a guy if you're fucking him that other guys are fucked you better? If they're into humiliation, yeah. then yeah, oh. that's hot. What Fucking type of what type of stuff would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Oh, uh, let She's me see here. The hour right now. Yeah, exactly. That's very I just sexy. Throw that out there. So? Kristen, get my money, the man. The value of this conversation. <laughs> former uh, madam. Yeah, exactly. Former madam. She's like, yeah, you're gonna have to pay me for so she, That's what she used to do. <laughs> used to. Used to do. Now she's running for governor. But, yeah, she is. Yay, governor. for legalizing prostitution, marijuana. And cuckolding. Woo! And cuckolding. And cuckolding. <laughs> so now, how would you humiliate a guy if you were humiliating? What would you say? Like, I know I'd probably take it like one step too far and just say something a little too you know harsh what the, that wasn't the sexy. The best thing to do is like with the cuckold thing, like just have the other guy bust a nut right on you. But I mean, if the guy or is like, or you know, one of my favorite things is is to what? bust a nut on the on the feet and then make you suck it off my toes. See, I can't. I've had girls want me to like. I licked my own cum up on video once for a girl, like out of my hand. Yeah, that's hot. And um, I love that. You see the smile on my face. I like do. I love that. I, I have a photo However, of my hand with cum in it. It's really <laughs> cool. It looks like I'm, I'm, I'm an unlucky beggar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bragging about there. your photos with cum in your hand. One of my favorite things is to do that with the toes. However, I had a guy. I reverse snowball me once. Oh wow! Wait, wait, wait! Hey, right. oh. Am I this bad? That's because a, my, my that's a football agency term. only dealt in like vanilla, vanilla. So oh, what the hell like, is a snowball? Okay, so a snowball is typically is, yeah. when a girl, when a guy busts a nut in a girl's mouth, right. she comes back is a sign of oh, revenge and spits it back in. So this guy I had him do it off my toes, and he waited like I don't know, like three minutes, gave me a kiss, and. <laughs> Right back, and I was so like, oh, my it around God, in his mouth for I've three been like, snowballed. <laughs> Hope he didn't have tartar <laughs> breath. That'd be awful. <laughs> yeah. Cum and tartar. Ew, I that's how you do garlic. I don't want to do xylenitol for the teeth by Trident. I don't want to. Oh, yeah, I always chew things with uh, no aspartame. I, um, <laughs> uh, fuck Trident. Don't go with Trident. Go with... Uh, uh, they got xylenitol, extra. though. It's, a, it's good no, for your teeth. No, there's better ones, though. There's oh, vegan really? gums. I'll, I'll turn into some vegan gums. Um, you promised to cuckold me, and I'll get you some vegan bubble gum. I got a big black crack for you, babe. Maybe. We were Fair talking trade. about cuckolding and, and, and taking cocks and stuff. I'm glad that you brought it back to vegan, vegan. gum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I'm like, Thank I was God. trying to bring up her running for governor. <laughs> She's like, okay, I'm no, not doing any earlier. more radio programs yeah. with Britney ever again. They mentioned that earlier. They <laughs> yes. were very nice. Jimmy was very nice to say that he likes Kristen Davis, which was nice I compliment. Do. I was oh. actually with her, with you last year when we but, were But then you when had we to were degrade accounting. it by saying I was in the debates with Jimmy McMillan. Why can't we say we were in the debates with Andrew Cuomo? Well, he said that. Well, no, I... Difference. We had so Jimmy you, on the show, so it was just a point of reference job. for the he's listeners. A, but I, I thought that he, it, like, I thought there would have been a lot of press for you as like an, an unconventional candidate had Jimmy McMillan not been there stealing all your heat. Well, the real press, like the Washington Post said I was their favorite fringe candidate, the right. LA Times, I'm the only one out of the debates that made the LA Times. So there were, there was a lot of real press. He got the uh, novelty right. votes in the novelty press, yes, which we were both running his, to create a new political party, which is 50,000. Uh, the rent is too damn high. Oh, but he yeah. didn't even pay any 
rent. <laughs> right. Like, come on now. Your rent is the perfect rent. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, he, did, he, did, he didn't pay a lot of rent. No. And especially if somebody was telling him how, like, other people they've had sex with were better fucks. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> it's always got to come back to that. He didn't even bring that up. By thought, the way, you say that. Or you talk about oh, that no, a lot, right? I up. do. No, Jimmy did. He did bring that up because I asked him about it. And he said that he had had sex with girls in front of their husbands. Oh, that's right. He did, he say, did that. say that. Who yes, he did. had sex with him? We have two gubernatorial candidates Let's talking about cuckolding. So we are the show for cuckolding. <laughs> yeah. And politics. Yeah, cuckolding and politics. and politics. They yeah. go hand in hand, man. Yeah. <laughs> Britain's fantastic. However, I, I met you once at AVN years ago, very, um, very briefly. But I, we've never I'm pretty before. sure that uh, you were here the last time I did the show, though. Because, you know, I think I was here when, um, do you guys remember Porno Dan? Or no, Dan. No. no. The name is familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name is familiar. And uh, I think I was like doing something with him. He was in D.C. and uh, we came by. But yeah, you know, I come to the building all the time. Yeah. I was just uh, actually, it's funny because I'm going to be doing a DJ set on the DJ Woo Kid show. Oh, I'm going to be wearing. He's a friend of the show. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to be wearing my strap on and I'm going to be DJing and I'm going to have two girls sucking my cock. So it's going to be like a DJ happen? orgy. Woo Kid is the greatest. Like, he, how do we make that happen? Yeah, you guys got to like come and visit. We can like cross pollinate or something. Yeah, cross kid, like, pollinate. You know how we kind of have to bring girls in and try to figure out how to get them to take their clothes off or whatever. Who kid does something called the naked interview, where he just has girls come in and he'll interview them, but they're naked. They're well, it was kind of funny. Thing is he has better. He's got game. He's got and you game. Have none. <laughs> Much better game than that girl. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> But no, actually, just I, it was so funny because I went in there and they were all giving. I said something about penis, and they're like, "Bitch, we only got cocks up here." So like, while they're like doing their thing, like I put my strap on, I don't say anything, and then like they turn around, they're like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I'm like, "Biatch, it's a pink penis. It matches my pussy." Let me tell you something. Do you want to see my pink penis? Should I put it on? Well, Do you want to? What? What? We might how, might have an issue with that. We have a time that? issue because yeah. you're late. Oh, okay. We, can I'm you sorry. hang out a little bit? Yeah, I can hang out. We have to. Uh, I can rock out with my kiaki <laughs> We have uh, <laughs> Levi Johnston. Is he here or no? Yeah, he's here. Okay. So I was thinking, uh -huh. can you guys hang out? We'll talk because Levi will only be in here for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm cool. I don't know about her, we'll, we'll but I'm totally in. fine. Are you All cool, right. Kristen? Oh, I'm cool. I'm cool. always cool. All right, good. So hang, and the, and the big event is tomorrow night, Friday night. Um, Hotel Chantel. 92 Ludlow off of Rivington. And you're still, if you want to come by after your show or yeah. whatever. Okay, maybe come I by. will. Yeah, we'll, we'll, like to. we'll be pimping and howling. I'll save you, t you know, uh, a tonic and water, whatever. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to be, I'm going to be yeah, cleansing I still. I so. Oh, good. I don't so I'll either. have a pineapple juice with you, dude. All right, and I'll bring you some vegan gum. <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. 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 The fair trade he's, that he's already he's trying to come establish. Up. He's going to come to the hall now. <laughs> okay, Levi Johnston uh, coming up in uh, just a second. Do you want a break? A one minute break, yeah. Point. Okay, we'll do a single. All okay. right. Brenda. All right. The Virus. Virus. Sirius XM. This is the Obi and Anthony Show. Uh, now okay. you are. We are back. And uh, Levi Johnson has just come into the studio. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Do you uh, like or hate morning press? No, uh, it's it's uh, it's all right. Let's make sure we got you up here. Okay. What? Uh, when did you get to New York? What am I doing here? No, no. When did you get in? Oh, I got in on Sunday. How long are you staying? Uh, till tomorrow. Okay. Yep. I was uh, telling you, we met very briefly in the hallway, uh -huh. and uh, it's weird. We get a book usually the night before, so we don't have time to really read it, but I got this a few days ago. And uh, I guess I got 200 pages in, like, actually really reading it. And the last 90, I perused and just picked up notes. It's fucking great. Yeah, thank you. Your Thanks. book is really good. Um, well, it's also like, and I was telling you this before, it's almost, for a lot of people, this is like the dream book because everybody at some point has wanted to write a book about their ex-girlfriend's family and how they were treated. Like, <laughs> there is no guy. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, but nobody would have interest in reading it, but yours happens to be the Palin, so people right, do want to so read that. Right, people care. Like, I would love to trash every family of every fucking ex-girlfriend I have <laughs> who hated me. How, yeah. long, how long into it? And you, you really, she's not going to be happy with this. Um, probably not, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, uh, what would you say... About stuff you said in the past and in interviews, um, are they comfortable with you revealing stuff, or are they are they, they hate that? Uh, I'm sure I'm sure they don't like it, you know. But uh, the book is the book is the truth, and um, I'm glad it's done. You know, I, I did it. I did think we did a good thing with it. Do you feel you've been treated? I have a bunch of questions written down. Um, <laughs> one thing I want to say that I like. You don't need to announce that you have a bunch of questions written down. But I have to, because I'm a stand-up, so as a comic, you know, you have to be honest Address with people. everything. You yeah. have to. So if I'm ever in front of an audience and I'm trying a new joke and I actually have a fucking piece of paper, yeah. I'll go, look, I'm just going to read this, and I'll tell yeah. them. I can't lie. 
Is that is that noise going to stop? No. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's not. So uh, in the opening of the book, you, you, you talk about this birthday party you're going to in Vegas mm -hmm. with your manager. And you said, uh, yeah, he, had, he and I had both gotten another 15 minutes of fame. And I kind of like that you said, like, how do you see your fame or notoriety? Do you see it as something that's going to be fleeting or something that's going to stick around for a while? Oh, I'm sure, every, you know, probably, I'm sure it's, it's gotten into it, but, you know, when that happens, I have no idea. I mean, things keep coming, and, um, you know, I mean, I'm getting more calls now than I ever have, so... You know, it's going good. What are they calling you for? Is it for acting work or? It's reality shows to you know commercials to music videos, everything you know, and it's you know, I've got a lot of stuff too that you know from pornos to everything. I mean, there's a, <laughs> everything's out there. Well, it's funny. Like, do you resent when they're calling you because? Do they want you to do things that are going to make Sarah Palin look bad, or has it gotten to a point where they kind of just like you just being yourself? It's it's getting more to that point, yeah. I mean, a lot of it is still they want dirt on the Palins and they want all that. But you know, it's after this book, you know, I, it's that's a direction I don't want to go anymore. So you know, we're going to start picking what I do, you know, a little differently. Do you do you regret doing Playgirl? <laughs> no, no, I, it, you know, that's that's something I, I chose to do. I was I was young, and you know, I learned a lot from it, and it was a. It was, a hell of an experience. Fifty grand. I mean, how do you say no? Yeah. And you didn't do full frontal. No. I, don't, I, I don't. Let me. I'm not saying that in a disappointed fashion. I think that came out what really are you bad. Thinking. Yeah. Come on. Why? What uh, about the fans? <laughs> uh, did they want you to do full frontal and you said no, or did they not want to do? Oh um, no, they they definitely wanted me to do it. But uh, you know, I promised Mama wouldn't do it, and that's not something. <laughs> that's not something I wanted to do. Oh, okay. And uh, this is what I was amazed. I, I read this. Um, you got offered, you took 50000 to do that, but you did show some restraint. Uh, could you tell people what they offered you $300,000 to do? Who's this, Playgirl? The, no, 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 the, the videos you got offered to make, the three videos. Or was it 100000 for three? It was, uh, I'm sorry, $100,000 for three masturbation scenes? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I heard one that, uh, you know, I had the, yeah, the masturbate in front of the cameras and a couple other things like that, and then... Uh, do a uh, do a porno with the Sarah Palin look alike? You know, I got a I got a lot of stuff like that. Well, there is a porno with her. Yeah, Nalen Palin, I think. Is what it's called. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's seen it. I, have you seen it? No, I'm talking. About oh <laughs> yeah, I do my research. Would, now, would that creep you out to do that? Oh no, that's that's uh, no, not gonna happen. You you wouldn't do that even no, for the no, right, you know? No, no. I guess that's taking it a little bit too far. That, that's crossing the line. Yeah, I don't I don't think uh, my family would ever forgive me for that one. Oh, it's family. Okay. Do you find it hard? Um, you know, like when people are talking to you, and I mean in real life, not in an interview, to judge what their motives are. Like, like, do you, is it hard to figure out if they really like you and are getting to know you, or if they're only trying to get you to say something that they can run out and blog or run out and talk? Definitely, about? definitely. You know, I, I mean, even, it goes as far as my friends. You know, I've lost, you know, I've lost a bunch of them. You know, I don't, you don't know who you can trust anymore, and you know, every everything you do is like under a microscope, and everybody's watching you. You know. Yeah. It's tough. What point did you realize, too? Because this, like, you're a regular dude. And I'm reading this book, and you grew up in Alaska. You like to hunt and fish and just do things that regular dudes there do. You hook up with a girl. Her mom was, the, what, the mayor, I think, when you met? Mm hmm. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's a small town she's a mayor in. And then a couple of years later, she's almost the president of the United States. What was the first thing that happened that you realized, like, fuck, I am, everything I say now matters? Um, well, she started, you know, mayor to governor. That was that was a pretty big deal in Alaska. And then, um, you know, when I got when I got thrown on that that private jet all the way down to the RNC, you know, that's that's when it really uh, started hitting me. You know. Now that was when uh, it was going to be announced that she was McCain's running mate. Yep. Well, she had already announced it. Yeah. Now we're going down for uh, the speeches and all that, all the good stuff. And oh yeah. You said you got pu you pulled over like three times to puke. I did. Yeah. On the, <laughs> on, the, on the way to Anchorage, on the way to the airport. Yeah. I was I was nervous, dude. I was like, no, this is not happening. And Bristol was pregnant by this point. Yeah, no, she was definitely pregnant. Did you say that uh, sh you think she did that to kind of get uh, to upset Sarah or to match it Sarah? Was, it was more. Uh, it was more of um, jealousy. I mean, she we had talked about it, and uh, you know, she'd always wanted a kid, and Sarah, Sarah just actually, you know, she had trig, and that really what sparked uh, Bristol to get going on it. And I was dumb enough just to roll with it. <laughs> so you were dating for a while, and uh, I know the, you know, I don't wear bags either. I hate wearing them, <laughs> yeah. especially in a relationship. There's nothing worse. <laughs> And uh, were you just kind of going on in faith that she was taking birth control and like? 
Oh yeah, I was just I was just kind of going, you know, if it or happens, it happens. Not you know. thinking at all. Not We're thinking just at all. Like whatever. Yeah, at, at seventeen, who's thinking, right? Right. Yeah, I guess that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't. You you actually were like, I hope she's taking it, but if she's not, yeah. oh well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't. I got to get mine. <laughs> but I I would freak out about that, and I'm 43. I mean, I know I look younger. I appreciate that. But I mean, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm 43, and it's like it still terrifies me to, to knock a girl up. But you know, here you are at 18, you got a girl pregnant, or 17, and you fucking handle it like, oh, I just got to get a good job. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we were dating for a long time. We were in love, and uh, you know that was always the plan. It just happened earlier than we thought. But that's also because Levi is a man. Like he hunts, he does outdoors. <laughs> that you, on the that's other true. Hand, me, we would handle it differently because we're not men. Yeah, <laughs> we're I, weasels. I, I, I wore cologne into a radio interview because we have a porn girl, and <laughs> I really am a fool. Exactly. Do you think you've been kind of vilified in the press? And I, it, reading this was really interesting to me. The book is called "Deer in the Headlights." My life in Sarah Palin's crosshairs. And I like the fact that you're not shying away from talking about it. Like, a lot of people will talk about somebody, but then act like, well, that's not why I wrote the book. But this is why you wrote the book, was to kind of set the record straight with your relationship with that family or what happened. Definitely. It was, it was you know, I wrote it to give my side of the story out there. You know, everybody was sitting there talking about me as far as Palin's the press. And, you know, everybody who doesn't know me is hating on me. So, you know, that, that was uh, a way to get my side of the story out there and the truth. What was, um, do you feel you've been treated, uh, treated unfairly by the press? Have they been too rough on you? Oh, you know, definitely. I mean, I mean, they they don't know who I am. They just you know come up with stories and lies, you know, just to uh, make them a dollar. So, you know, that it, that's uh, you know the biggest reason I wrote this thing. What was the first thing you can remember seeing about yourself or about your family that was just completely untrue? Well, I tell you, the, about the only two that really bothered me was um, I was a bad father, and then um, you know one came out about my mother, how she was a druggie, and. A bunch of stuff like that, you know. They, they can sit there and say what they want about me all day long, but uh, you know, when you start getting into my my son and my family, you know, that's that's when you cross the line because they don't right. they don't know me and they don't know us. Your mom, I know, I you talk about your mom and she had gotten uh, arrested. She made a bad decision. Right. You know, she had uh, sold, I guess, oxycotton or whatever. And I thought that did she really get like three years? I thought that was a pretty harsh sentence for something that was kind of. Yeah, she's obviously I, not a drug pusher. Well, she wasn't in jail for three years, you know, and I don't, I don't know the whole uh, details of that, you know, so I'm not going to get into it. But, uh, you know, she had to do some jail time, and she's on probation. But, um, you know, she's she's handling it well. Do you think that there was um, more of a target on her because she's your mom and because of the whole connection? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely a much bigger fish out there. You know, she, she apparently sold a couple pills to some kid one time and got caught, and, you know, she got in a lot of trouble. I mean, I feel like... Um, they definitely had it in for us. Do you, th do you think the people who had it in for you were uh, pro Palin and pissed off at you, or anti Palin and wanting to embarrass her family? Um, no, I definitely pro Palin. You know. Um, oh, okay. There, you know, everybody who uh, pretty dislikes Palin seems to love me, and I don't think they'd want to hurt me like that. <laughs> it really is an odd effect she's had on the country like i think the media has made her bigger because they attack her so much that they force people who would normally just be like ah, eh, she's whatever to rally around her um it's been an odd well you have to have an opinion you like they won't have... allow anybody to be like whatever like you either have to hate this woman or if you don't hate her then the people who hate her say well then you love her but if you don't love her then you know and I'm just repeating myself. Yeah, I'm, no, but you're right. I'm kind of in the middle. Like, I, I would not vote for her. I, she's way too conservative. It, mm -hmm. It's funny. I was reading. You, you said something about uh, you had some fucking good digs in this book, man. There, <laughs> this is really. I was reading. There's a few. I was like, oh, <laughs> that was ballsy to put in print. Um, do you think she'd be a good president? Uh, no, I don't. You know, I, I, she's. Um, you know, I think a lot of America's just voting for her for her looks. You know, and. Um, you know, she's a she's a governor of a small town. You know, and to be honest, I don't think she's overqualified to to run this country. The media has, and again, you can never completely trust the press because they're all they're motivated their own way. But they've painted her as kind of an idiot. I mean, that's you know whether it was the Katie Couric interview or they harp on mistakes she's made. How unfair have they been? I'm going to ask you a two part question. Have they been really unfair to her? And what have they gotten right? Um, you know, I, as far as her messing up in small interviews like that, you know, that's just her not coming into it. Um, you know, with her head on right. I mean, she's she's she is a an intelligent woman, um, with a, with a lot of things, and um, she's achieved a lot of stuff that uh, many women won't. So, you know, to that to that point, you really got to give her some kind of credit. But uh, you know, a lot of things in her book and Bristol's book, you know, there there are a lot of flat out lies she's told. What did she say about you? Because uh, I, w I was reading that you said that uh, what, what can you do? Match her lie for lie or something? What was something Bristol said that really bothered you? Um, or that you felt was just to, to cover the family's angle and she didn't care about hurting you? Um, well, this was, um, we, you know, we got back together a second time. We got engaged and whatnot. And this was actually, 
you know, I went and apologized to the Palins, you know, Sarah and Todd, and, you know, in person. And then uh, apparently that wasn't good enough, so we had to send out an apology letter. And and uh, she had her ro- her lawyer write some write write something up, and they actually sent it off to People Magazine without me knowing about it, saying it was from me, you know. And uh, you know that that you know that that wasn't right. And then you know she uh, recently comes out and says she's going to find a new father for Trip, and you know it's it's all she says a lot of horrible stuff. After dealing with lawyers here, can you imagine? Having to deal with lawyers when you're trying to—it's your personal life. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is that how often do lawyers and things like that enter into your personal life? Uh, quite a bit. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, you—they they were coming after him, like, uh, with, with with the stuff about. But you know, it was all being funded probably by by her mom. And here you are, you know, you're, you're again a working guy. I mean, you're making decent money, but to have to pay lawyers in a family court. Yeah. Um, I guess, are you done with that legal process or no? No, no, the legal process is still uh, much running, yeah. yeah I mean, it, we haven't went to court yet, and, you know, I, I am going to fight for 50-50, and, um, but that's, uh, you know, that's coming up. And it's hard because everything they say, you have to answer, whether it's true or not true. Uh, and they, you know, and a family that has a lot more money than you do can probably afford to, to just keep coming at you with, well, I think you said in the book that uh, they just <coughs> keep coming at you. Someone said they're going to keep coming at you just until you're broke. That's probably true. And they hope to get you to sign something over. Yeah, that's probably true, but oh. uh, that's never going to happen. How do you address the bad father rap? Because I've heard that before, but obviously there's you know, two that's, sides that's, to every... that's something that you kind of really got to, you know, I've learned to brush off my shoulders. You know, the people who are saying that have nothing better to do with their life. And, uh, you know, they clearly don't know me, and, you know, they really don't even know Bristol. Um, so, they're, they're, you know, they're just kind of running their mouth. Yeah, they're just because they've heard, they hear one thing, they pick it up and they yeah, run with well, it. Well, they're just yeah, or they just made it up clearly. You know, they they don't see me with my son. They you know they don't they don't see anything. Well, didn't you say too that you there were times where you wanted to see your son and spend time with your son, but after a while it was like the baby was just with the Palins, and then you would go there, and instead of spending time alone with him, they would just be kind of sitting on the couch staring at you while you had time with your son. Yeah, that was, that was you know, when he, was, when he was first born, within a couple months, you know, first couple months he was born, I'd go over there, and, uh, yeah, it was like I was just there all watching me, you know, like a like a damn hawk, but, you know, now now it's, you know, I, I see him without without them around, so, you know, but that, that what you're referring to is, yeah, that was, that was kind of weird. And there's, um, I, I tell you, I, I actually wrote this thing down, I just wrote the word, uh, you, have, you have her painted as pretty phony in the book, and I guess everyone's public, uh, perception is different than they are at home to a little bit. I mean, you have to right. be, I guess, in politics. But I, I put a few things that you wrote, which I thought were amazing that you wrote these down. Like, you didn't, you, uh, anybody who wants to read a book that is brutally honest from a point of view, it, you don't pull any fucking punches in this at all. And the book is called Deer in the Headlights, My yes. Life in Sarah Palin's Crosshairs. It's out on Amazon. Are you doing signings or no? Yeah, I did, uh, did a signing in Jersey. Um, Probably bookends, day. right? Yep. Yeah, in Ridgewood. And uh, what are you doing in New York signing-wise? Uh, I don't think I have a signing Nothing? in New York here. No. Do you have anything coming up uh, signing-wise? Uh, I have one in Anchorage on the 29th at uh, Barnes & Noble. Okay, well, we're on uh, everywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Are we yeah. on in Alaska as well? Yeah. Okay, well, Anchorage are uh, the 25th at Barnes I'm sure you 29th. Don't. 29th, sorry. Yeah. I'm sure the uh, people come see you. Um, there's some amazing, unflattering lines. Uh, you said something about her wanting to bring up your kid, and you wrote, It was ironic that Sarah offered to be a mother to another child, considering that she basically ignored the one she already had. Are you talking about when she tried to adopt mine? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was something that, you know, it uh, pissed Bristol off, and then she gave the phone to me, and I just, I just went off on her. I and mean, that's, uh, she's clearly doing that just to cover up, you know, Bristol's whole pregnancy. You know? Now, do you, uh, you said she ignored the one she had. You paint the household as kind of, uh, Cold and and distant it was, and you said like the house you grew up in was kind of a much warmer and a different vibe than they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there uh, you know Sarah was always gone. Granted, she worked a lot, but uh, you know even when she was there, she was uh, on her blackberry on the couch or in her bedroom. You know, I mean uh, Sarah was definitely more the mother to Trig than you know she was or Bristol was. Bristol was. Uh, Bristol was. Did they have? Uh, did did really the husband? Uh, did Todd really sleep in the living room while she stays in her room most Todd, of the time? <laughs> Todd Todd Todd's bed was the uh, the black recliner. Yeah, in the middle of the living room. And then she's up in... Oh, uh, she's, she's, uh, she was in her bedroom, yeah. And he sleeps in the... That's weird. That is weird. That'd be a very weird arrangement in the White House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of creepy. To, and it's funny that you said some good things about Obama, too. You seem like more of an Obama guy. If you had to choose between the two, you seem like more of an Obama guy. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll probably... You know, I'll definitely vote for Obama, yeah. Oh, it's not good. Wow. It's not good when somebody who really knows you well will vote for the other guy. No, yeah, because <laughs> if you knew somebody that was running for president, you would just vote for them because you knew them. Yeah. I would just vote for them to not have pictures with them, and I could say there's me and the president. Right. 
But it's 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 there's no media spin that puts any of like your feelings about her have nothing to do with the media. It's all from your personal experience. Right. Yeah. And uh, you say here, Sarah comes off. She comes off as religious, but you're saying you never saw them say grace, and you don't think they prayed a lot. And there's one great line after she got the nomination. She told the world that being chosen was God's plan. It would be the first time I had ever heard her mention the fella. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I, re I really haven't. Um, she went to church on uh, Christmas Eve, and that was, you know, that was about it. So this whole this whole um, thing with her being like religious and this kind of spiritual thing, and that being part of the religious right is not. No, that's that's all part of the show because that that wasn't going on at the house. It was there was not a lot of God talk or no. I mean, she had a cross or two in the house, and you know, they went to church on Christmas Eve. But that was it. She really has a tanning bed in the house. <laughs> she, I don't think that's did. bad. I mean, she did in Juno at the at the governor's mansion. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that actually. <laughs> the governor's mansion. <laughs> yeah, there's a tanning bed. Maybe that is a little bit creepy, but you know. Um, and uh, she, her complaining uh, with the baby, she wrote, uh, "Oh, you, I'm sorry. We watched her on the stump with Trig, her accessory." It made my stomach turn to see him displayed like a designer bag, then passed off to a nanny. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a harsh, harsh line. It is. Um, it is. And I'm not saying you're wrong for writing it, but can you elaborate on that well, a little bit? You know what? Just, you know, back home, she, like I said, she's always in her room. She's paying no attention to him, whether it's Bristol or Piper or, or you know, Todd playing with Trig, you know, that, um, she rarely would ever do it. And uh, even at the GO, you know, the GOB, I mean, she, uh, you know, she, everybody would be playing with him, and once it was time to walk out on stage, here, boom. You know, she'd have him in his arm, and then when we got off, you hand him right off to Willow. Um, you know, it was it was pretty clear to me that she was, you know, she was kind of using him as, you know, that's the best way I could, you know, kind of describe it. Yeah, that because cause you didn't just say, like, she didn't hold him a lot. There was the wording I thought was fucking really yeah, was great, was uh, stomach turning, and you see him use, like, a designer bag. That's a definite statement about you really don't like this woman. Oh, well, it's not that, you know, I don't hate her by no means, right. but, uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely not fond of her. Do you think your relationship is ruined? Because you do have a child with Bristol. I mean, mm -hmm. you're going to be tied in for at least 18 years, if not more. Is your relationship, do you think, ruined, or is it possible to salvage it? Or after this, do you think it's going to be a rough ride? Oh, no, I'm sure it's going to be a rough ride, and it's <laughs> over. <laughs> it's gonna be, do you regret it at all, or no? No, I don't. I'm glad my side of the story's out there, and then, uh, you know, the truth. Yeah, it must be frustrating when you hear yourself being spoken about and by somebody who has the entire media at their disposal. And it's bad enough being trashed on Twitter. Yeah, it would have been a rough ride for him regardless because if he hadn't come out with the book, he would have just had to sit there knowing everybody just believed the Palin story and he still has to put yeah, up with the family. Everybody so. hates me and thinks I'm a bad father. You know, right. that's, that's, that's something I didn't want to live with. Well, here's, a, here's another fucking gem. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I'm not being polite, I fucking loved this book. I never ripped through 200 pages in two days. I could not <laughs> stop reading this. It said, uh, you, you say that uh, when she was speaking, people were baffled by her run on sentences uh, whenever she talked off the cuff. And you write, that's what happened when she began a sentence and then lied halfway through it. <laughs> Oh, dude. Is that what tend, was tend to happen? She would just kind of start off and... Uh, oh, she, she was good at it. You make know? it up as she yeah. went. She was good. I mean, a lot of people bought it. You know? Wow. The, the reason, by the way, I'm taking such joy in this is I really don't have much of an opinion on Sarah. I really don't. I don't have a political agenda. I love the fact that somebody is writing just really brutally honest things from their point of view. Like, it's nice to see that you're not fucking stepping around any of it. And she's not getting attacked for, like, politics or something. Like, you're saying, I spent time with this person. I know her as a human being. This is my character evaluation. You don't hear that about politicians ever. No. Because nobody nobody's gets as close, and nobody can no. be like, this is the truth. It's honesty in politics, for once. There's nothing worse, by the way, than when you're a politician. And, and you say something in the book, which I think is interesting, too, about how you were keeping a mental... Like, while they were saying stuff about you, you had all the stuff that you had seen and the conversations you had heard. And uh, did you realize at one point that you were kind of stockpiling that stuff, like, as ammunition in case? Was there a point <laughs> where you realized you might need it? Not until I wrote the book. I mean, you know, it all started coming back to me. But, um, you know, they, they said a lot of nasty things about me. And, I mean, you know, Sarah Pan's a lot older than I. And, uh, you know, for her to come attack a, you know, 20, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-old kid is... is uh, you know, it seems pretty immature for, to me, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I paid attention. You know, I'm glad I had some uh, some ammo to come back at her, you know, because uh, she said a lot of bad things about me. Well, there was also, you said, too, that you were, you were close. 
when you were younger, you uh, you guys had a real relationship. You didn't. He didn't just walk in and all of a sudden, like, hey, she's gonna be president. Let me capitalize on it. Like, you know, you guys actually had a warm relationship. Yeah, I've, I've known them for a long time. You grew up with the, kind of around the family. I grew up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I played hockey at track, and then I started dating Bristol. You know, when she was, you know, uh, mayor. So, I mean, I, I knew her for a long time. And how was your relationship with her dad? Uh, you know, we we rode snow machines every once in a while, and you know, but. Um, you know, he didn't. He didn't talk much, and come and find out, he didn't like me well, very much either. So maybe because you were with his daughter, I mean, well, that makes sense, right? <laughs> when, at what point did you feel the relationship change a little bit? Um, it definitely started going downhill once um, they lost the. Uh, you know, she lost the vice president nominee. But. How hard is it to have? Like they told you, say nothing. When you, I mean, you said that too, when you got there to the Republican convention, they say say nothing, don't talk. You have all publicists and press agents and all these people just speaking and thinking and dressing you. Well, that was kind of easy for me. I didn't want to talk to anyone anyway. <laughs> oh, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, I was I was nervous. I mean, uh, you know, they just said smile, wave. You know, we're gonna get there, cut your hair, you're gonna do spray tan, get your nails done. I said, uh, no, we're not. They want you to get a spray tan. Spray tan? No, that didn't happen. I didn't do the nails, but I did get the hair cut. Manicure. And, <laughs> yeah, I put on the Armani suits, and I I went out there and smiled. And waved and you know I was, I was there for Bristol but uh, yeah I don't think I want to talk to any of them anyway. <laughs> yeah you don't seem like a manicure I can see putting a nice suit on but you don't seem like a fucking manicure spray tan guy I, I've done the spray tan for Playgirl but uh, that, was, that was the last time I think I'll do it um, they, the pictures I saw simply for research <laughs> well, let me, yeah, I have to fucking clarify oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to look like they're on my wall um, they had they good are. cheeks by the way but, you know. <laughs> um, did they, were they black and white were they, were they just maybe little copies I saw uh, probably just the copies you saw. There's, there's, yeah, no, there's colored ones. Did the magazine sell well? Uh, you know, actually, I don't, I don't know. It's weird too, because and you acknowledge this again. I love the fact that you acknowledge this. That the the majority of people who read Playgirl are men, and you're like, oh, I don't care. No, you know, and the, you know, <laughs> it, it works for me. You know, I mean, uh, they're all people to me, and you know, they're all, uh, you know, whether they like, you know, guys or guys or women. You know, it's. Um, I'm totally fine. You didn't that. care if there was a bunch of guys looking as long as they paid. <laughs> That's fair <laughs> That's enough. A good way to put it. I mean, yeah. they're not looking at him in the face. Like he doesn't have to watch them looking at him. <laughs> that would be yeah, in person would probably be very uncomfortable. Yeah, even fifty thousand. Like eh, maybe a little more. Than yeah, that. a little bit more than that. Maybe for one guy. All right. Uh, <laughs> this was to me a, an, an amazing line, and uh, I, I think first of all, the, uh, like because I like John McCain. He seems mm -hmm. like an honest fucking. He's a vet. You know, there's things about him I like, but his age was a concern because he's an older guy and. You talking to her, and you said exactly what does the vice president do? Did she really smile at you and say, "Take over when the president dies"? <laughs> Something like that. Yes, I mean wow. she she said it whether I, you know it was a joke or not, you know. But uh, there was definitely something that was said. So she was very aware of the fact that she, was, as they said, was one heartbeat away from. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't know what she was thinking, you know, but. Um yeah, at the time she told me that, I bet she wouldn't think I was going to put it in a book. But yeah, you probably don't say something like think that. Like you, you probably don't say something like that and say, make sure you get that quote correct. Yeah, <laughs> make sure you get that good. Don't paraphrase. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, it's what you do. You take over when he dies. Uh, did you like McCain? I did. You know, I only met him for a brief second, but he's a good guy. He, you know, he seemed. Uh, you know, I respect him a lot. Yeah, you said he took your hand and he looked at your hand and he said that you had fucking like rough like working yeah, man hands. Yeah, that's working man there. I was. Yeah, thanks. And you do. I shook your hand when you came in. He does. He he's like one of those Levi's, one of those guys that would fucking like rock hands. Yeah. Like certain people just have like those fucking granite hands. You must throw a big punch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I'd like you to do that. Yeah. I'm just saying you must pack a good punch. What did you think? Didn't Bristol just come out and say you like stole her virginity? Yeah, that was you know that was one of the new things in her book. Yeah. And that was, you know that that's that's hard for anybody to you know they even respond to. That's hor That's a horrifying thing to say. You know, we dated for for you know many years, and uh, we had a child together. So for someone to come out and say that after you know everything we've been through, it's this just flat out lies and yeah. disgusting. Do you think that's coming from her, or do you think that's coming from the family who's trying to kind of wreck you? Um, a little of both. You know, I, I, the, Bristol, I you, you know used to knew. I mean, we were in love. I mean, that would have never came out of her mouth. I mean, it's just this lie. So whether you know they're trying to uh, get me in trouble or you know hurt me or whatever, you know. I mean, that's that's clearly what they're trying to do. Yeah, and there's no way to argue it. Like, oh, okay, uh, they say we have uh, X amount of time left. Yes. Shit. Oh, oh my God, it's 925. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask you a couple of questions because you hung out with Kathy Griffin. I had, did you bang Kathy Griffin? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't, no. Okay. But I, you know, she, she's great. And I, you know, I mean, she's never a dull moment with her, and I, you know, I love her. She is very funny. I like she her is. a lot. Um, okay, we talked about that. We talked about that. <laughs> we talked about almost everything. Okay, cool. Oh, was there any indication... 
like the, the whole Glenn Rice thing just came out about Sarah Palin that she had uh, was it, uh, she's, some kind of relationship. Allegedly, we'll they say she slept with him. Yeah, in, oh, uh, yeah. And that, I guess that never came up. Um, that uh, like you uh, never came home and found like menthol cigarettes and fungus <laughs> laying around the house. No, I didn't. No. Okay, none of that. but there was no indication that she had had any kind of a hookup with athletes. Um, not that I've seen. No. no. All right, and I, and I, we feel bad kind of because we talked to. It, it sounds like we're really trying to. Uh, uh, just attack Sarah Palin, but that is what the book is. You have firsthand knowledge, and you well, because she attacked him uh, brutally. So is that, this is more like him saying, "Well, look, not only is this not true, but this is what is true." Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, um, and you said at one point, girls, you know, think that she had like a cougar thing for you, and that was coming from girls you knew. Yeah, that was coming from not only girls, but a lot, of, you know, some of my guy friends too. That was definitely an issue that everybody kept bringing up, but I never <laughs> seen it till you know. No, I mean, I still don't, you know, I still don't really believe it, but I mean, it's. You know, what a lot of people have told me. They think they, they, that she kind of wanted to... Maybe. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Kind of gross, but... Uh, really? I, I guess so. If your girlfriend's bomb. I mean, from my point of view, like, yeah, I'd probably do it just for the credit. <laughs> just to go on Twitter. All right, the book is called Deer in the Headlights, and you're very forthcoming in the book. You're very honest in the book, and I, and I love the stuff you said. Whether you like or don't like Sarah Palin, I mean, this is coming from somebody who has intimate knowledge of, of her and is saying exactly what he wants to say. It's called My Life in Sarah Palin's Crosshairs. And um, the 29th is a signing at Barnes & Noble in Alaska, Anchorage. Anchorage. Yep. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that that will be promoted there. And uh, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, and I, I really, me. honestly loved your book. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. We'll go to break. Serious XM. XM. This is the Opie and Anthony Show. Yeah, it is. We're back without Opie and Anthony. It's They're in gym. court. Yeah, we actually uh, we have a little update. I guess we should play a sweeper if we're going to do the update. Yeah, right? quick update. Sweeper, yeah. yes. To Autogate 2011. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love Sandy Kane trust. Twato can call Twato Gay? Yes, they're in the courtroom. Uh, Opie and Anthony are getting sued by uh, a, 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 a performer <laughs> who is uh, in her 70s, I, I think. She has a growth by her vagina. Who has, yeah, a, a genital wart uh -huh. um, yeah. near her vagina uh -huh. that we named Twato. Because okay. uh, Opie broke her guitar a year and a half ago, uh -huh. and so she decided to sue Opie and Anthony. So that's why for they're what? not here today. Breaking for breaking her guitar. her guitar and for Anthony shooting bullets into her hat. He took her hat to a range. They stole her hat allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> and uh, he allegedly shot it at a shooting I'm range. I'm sure he probably filmed the whole thing as he You're was right. doing it, right? Yeah, well, yeah, it's actually <laughs> this photos the of allegedly. it. Allegedly. Yeah. So <laughs> Kenny called in while the Levi Johnston interview was going on. Uh -huh. um, but obviously we couldn't talk to him. And now we can't get a hold of him because he's in the courtroom. Any update from Kenny beyond that? Um, the only th I said, is there anything you could at least text me over the phone? And he goes, we are in the halls of justice. Okay, so they're in the halls of justice. Yes. And Opie justice just, is being served. Yes. There's and no such thing as justice. I've been there. O Opie just <laughs> tweeted that they have entered the courtroom uh -huh. and no sign of Sandy Kane yet. Okay. We will continue. Maybe it'll just get thrown out. Maybe. If we'll she doesn't show up, probably, we'll, yeah, definitely. We'll continue. Maybe she's like, nah, I mean, you said with, she's like uh, 80 years old or something. <laughs> with Twattogate coverage. <laughs> Autogate, <laughs> 2011. Sometimes a woman needs to be raped. Oh, Jesus. Hey. <laughs> I feel that same way about men's asses. <laughs> well, Which is why this time I decided to wear my penis. Yeah, Brittany she, Andrews is back. Yeah, we had uh, Brittany is, is back with Kristen and um, they were. I'm the only one here I'd like to mention without penis. Yeah. Yeah, you really are. That's right. She's the only straight up pussy in the room. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but you have a little pink penis. That's not very threatening. It's almost. It's not. Looks it's, like my, it's my Britney Andrews strap on starter kit. Looks like Japanimation. Because uh, <laughs> I, I know that you're a little slut, but what about taking you down over there? No, I mean, I, you know, I have so much to do over here. Yeah, that I can't, yeah, you know, yeah. That's it's the right. only problem. You know what? Actually, the good thing about it is, is I could still do it while you get everything else done. Well, I just don't know I if saying, I could. It's a slip on. It's a slip on tool. Yeah. You know? No, I just don't know if I slip could handle. In, yeah, you could. Alder. It's a small. That's why I wore it small. It's a, It's the starter kit. It's what? a Brittany Andrews strap-on starter kit. I appreciate you doing that, but the problem is yeah, uh -huh. that we left the last 
part portion of our interview unanswered. And Which I feel was like that? What, you were, what part? You were just about to talk about what you would say to humiliate a man. Oh, exactly. Yeah. When, when you well, were... bend over, bitch, and we'll start. Okay, well, no. <laughs> See, the thing is, what I like about a strap-on, I've never been fucked with a strap-on. Yeah. You haven't? No. Get out of here. No, my ass just won't. I've tried, but my ass is just too, uh, <laughs> it just doesn't happen for me physically. Um, oh, you know, I can shove, I've raped over like a thousand. Oh, no, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that an object couldn't be forcefully shoved into my well, asshole. I'm, I'm saying, saying it's, 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 no, but I'm it saying, for enjoyment purposes, it has no. not happened for him. Exactly. Right, yeah, but I, I mean, like, that's my point. Like, this is really my strap on, my starter kit that I always start with uh, everybody that's soft. never. Yeah, right. exactly. That when people haven't done it before, this is the one that I always use. And I've never not been able to. Well, I'm, I'm, so I'm, gra proper uh, spit. Oh, I'm grabbing the one that everyone no, this has is used. A, this is a brand new one, babe. I like this. If I'm going to look at, I a girl put it to, in the dishwasher. If I'm going to look so. at all the strap on. I like her to be like <laughs> naked. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like the. Uh I like the straps the way they fit around a girl's ass. There's something sexy about a, a girl. It's not even the dick part that's sexy. I was about to ask you what about the dick no, part. No, but that's, that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> He's like, no, really. It's all about the, the straps no, I, around the ass. It's the straps, like, baby. <laughs> there's, there's something really sexy. It's the big sexy. black cock that's just looming in front of your face. I've never had a black one in front of me. You oh, haven't? No. I was going to bring my black one, but actually, I wasn't going to bring a penis at all. And then as I was like running out the door, I was like, just in case I might want to wear it. Cause, yeah, that's what it is. Because, you know, the it's thing about it is, is like, I'm really attached to my penis, but my penis is not always attached to me. I understand. I see. Yeah. I understand. I'm kind of sad about that. I would love to be a hermaphrodite. You would. I so would. It's a great bumper you? sticker. Uh, <laughs> 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 Brought to you by DJ oh Miss B. Oh my God. You could just like, you know, stay home and just fuck yourself, right? You've got everything. Well, you need to work on your flexibility too, I would think. <laughs> yeah, because your dick probably wouldn't get hard. Hermaphrodites are a mess. <laughs> They're a mess. The whole thing down there. It's like, what's happening? Yeah. Nobody knows. Oh my God. The, but that's just, I mean, because that's like, that's what I'm more less doing all the time is, you know, I've got the penis and the pussy, right? Sure. So, like, I love, like, shoving my cock into guy's mouth and then, like, having yeah. him suck the cock and then taking it out and then moving the, the, the penis over and having him lick the toite, spitting on him, shoving the cock back in, oh, taking it out. Oh, you spit. I like that. She spits on guys. Oh, it's I fucking hot. Yeah, I spit. I piss. I love pissing on Good guys, girl. too. Yeah, yeah, I fucking love that. Have you ever had that Good happen? Good biatch. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not had anyone ever give you no. a golden shower before? I've never been pissed on, but Norton is, 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 is <laughs> then we're in the same boat, but these two, on the other hand, Norton yeah. is an old pro when it comes to being pissed. I on. haven't in a while, but um, yeah. I, I just peed on a really hot girl. I peed in her ass the other night. It was really hot. I would never want it in my ass. I would just feel but silly. It's so hot. I, like I, I belong to like an Italian's house. Face down, <laughs> ass up with like, a, you know, after you got done, like, you know, plummeting it and it's gaping and you just, yeah. Do you shave? How, 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 much, how much do you shave? <laughs> Where did that come from? Because I meant to ask you before I'm like, I forgot. I'm talking about pissing in somebody's ass. He's like, do you shave? How much do you shave? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been bald forever. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. I'm a bald bitch. That's cool. Like, are, are you bald? Or do you have the running? <laughs> do you have the runway? Or, or you can't talk about that? Sure, she can. Politicians wow. can mention pubic hair. Style. Yeah, they always do. It's like, <laughs> that's the sign of a good platform. As a matter of fact, that's, that's the one yeah. thing yeah. that Sarah Palin was not upset about Levi Johnson exposing in his book. Your yes. wife was it? Is, is how he yeah, trims yeah. his ball here. She has a Hitler mustache a and there's a monocle over it. <laughs> Too funny. funny. So, so how was the interview with the guy? Me and Kristen, cool. we were we were we were talking uh, we were talking the players' ball talk back there. So he was so, very he was fine. He was good. Is there a website with all the players' ball information on it? Um, no, not at this time because it's our first one. But uh, okay. we are planning on uh, you know doing it on a more regular basis. So we well, also I'm sure, are you going to tweet about it and stuff? Oh, we've We're been tweeting, tweeting like nuts. Well, what tweeting, the, Facebooking. You can uh, yeah, go on Facebook, MySpace, Manhattan, thing, Madam, or tweet at Manhattan. So how, Madam. What would you say to, to humiliate somebody? Ah, That's a great, we question. Go back. Know, That's a great yeah. question. I want to know because to me it's got to be. Well, like I said, I really love small be, penis humiliation. It's got to be real though. There has to be some. It has to be something organic. You have to be looking exactly. You have to be. Like looking in the guy's eyes, spitting on him, shoving your hand down their throat, you know. Oh, the but hand like, on the throat. If you were yeah, with, if you were with Jim um, and you were being intimate together. Yeah, I just talk about the small penis, man. But would you talk about <laughs> other men that you had been with? I'd talk about a big black cock fucking me. Yeah. Like I don't like it goofy either when I'm being dirty. You like the real fucking like perverted. She's telling you a yeah, real Yeah, so you got to be looking dirty. into, you know. I'm gonna like make him go be a uh, be a whore for me. Like if a girl ever spanked me, make him in... suck cock for me. Yeah. Oh, Bring come on. Bring mommy back the money. <laughs> oh. At well, a cheap enough. hotel. <laughs> and a cheap enough. hotel, like in 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 the Bronx or something. Okay, and, and I would go, but mother, where will I get a cab? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and and, and then I would say, my... don't worry about it, Mistress Mommy has got a ride for you, baby. Ah. Uh, 
<laughs> it's weird sometimes. Yes. Yeah, it does get a little weird. But sometimes. I, I always, I always okay. say, no, no, I always say unsexy things during it though. Like, so, all right, so you would say, um, well, sometimes like when you are role playing, like you just some fucked up shit comes out, and the two of you look at each other, and you know, it's been really intense, and then it's just you crack up laughing because it's like, right, let's try where the bit. hell did that come yes, from? Let's try, right. let's let's try a little bit. Because uh, I don't role play much, and I don't understand. All right, how but it I works. have to like put him down yeah, in the ground and like shove my cock in his mouth like I that's where we it. have to start no i won't suck it but i, I normally it's would if i knew though it's Come still on, no it's, it's been in the dishwasher it's been in the dishwasher no, you can <laughs> rub it on my she's rubbing it on my face and she's rubbing it on the outside of my lips but no i can't suck it but it's, you can suck it well he just doesn't know where it's suck been it, i can understand that yeah. no, i won't suck a strand that's without a condom new, on actually that's so, the one. Uh, that's the one time you'll use a condom when it's not a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> blowing a strap on. <laughs> but you're not done I know, that before. I do I actually put him in. I put all my dildos and everything. I put him in the dishwasher. I know it's great. This so cascade people, on it. <laughs> exactly. So when people come to my house, they're like, uh, you know, I don't really want to drink. White you know, water any stains on it. Like cups we can drink from. A dildo with no spots. That's what you look uh, for. All right. Funny. So how would, what would you say to me? Like, how would we role play? Like, all right. Uh, Okay, you, you start because I wouldn't know what I was doing. Like, I was just kind of in the corner sheepish. Sheepish and crying. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> like, how did, like, how would you start the role play? I'm not, like, a very good actress to, like, do it on Me radio. Neither. I have to be, like, involved in there in the okay, moment. Okay, just kind of what kind of things would you say? You don't have to say them sexy, but what um, things might you say? Well, you know, I guess, it, you know, it just starts off as you're my dirty little whore, my little fuckhole. Right. Nice language. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say back. <laughs> Let me see that ass, my little fuckhole, my dirty little bitch for mommy. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> Okie doke. Lost the sex. Giving her there. nothing. <laughs> I lost the no, sex. Is that, is that unsexy if I say Okie so, doke? Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's when you get slapped and you say, talk appropriately to your mistress. Don't be a stupid little whore. Yeah. Which, mm. of course, we already know that you are. Suck my cock. Yeah, Things like good. that. Would you like that? I would like that a lot, actually. Does, does it look like I give a fuck whether he likes it or not? No. Exactly. Miss, Hello. Mistress, no, it doesn't. Miss B. No, Miss B. No, Miss B. No. No, it does not. Bend over OTK. You know what OTK is, over right? Over the knee, of course. Exactly. I know and that. then, and then I, you know I, what? I didn't know that. And you know if it. you don't act good for your mistress mommy, then you're going to have a little CBT. What CBT? CBT is cockball torture. Exactly. I didn't know that either. I can only handle, Did by you? the way, no. for the record. <laughs> I'm doing a lot right now. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Okay, this is S and M one on one here, Hold people. On, on the opening, opening Anthony show. Woo! Yeah, very light CBT. I cannot handle um, rough CBT. It's not yeah. My there's thing. a pretty. Oh my god! I remember I had a guy back in the day on set put a freaking grip clamp on his balls. Ugh. A grip clamp, you know, Ow. like for when you're shooting. He was shoot. never going to have children. <laughs> no, never gonna definitely die. not. On the ball itself? And it's so funny, too. Like, I had this other guy one time that used to come to me, and he used to bring a briefcase full of weights. Okay. And he's giving me a hand job. Right here. Jimmy well, Norton is Mike now Mike Twate is getting wet. Oh, Miss B I'm just a hand job. Yes. On the well, that totally makes mine. I totally like rocks. I like. I love that. That's so hot. My Twate was starting to thump. Jim was giving her a yeah. hand job under the table. Yes, yeah. he so was. He's playing with my penis. But the way you do it, you have to look straight penis. ahead so nobody knows what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, yeah, none of us could see that. We're, it's like, if you can't see me, I can't. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Oh, my God. But, I've, yeah, so I had this guy, right, that used to come to me with, like, a briefcase full of weight. And so he's got, like, 30 pounds hanging off his freaking balls. And he goes to me, and he looks at me sincerely in the face, and he's like, I'm not sure if I'm really into this or not. I'm like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me? Who the hell can have 30 pounds of weights on their balls if yeah. they're not into it? I'm like, dude, you're into yeah, it. You're, you know? you're deep into it, exactly. Imagine going through airport security. Oh, my God, like I that. had that happen to Write me. That down for your set. I had that happen to me. I was with the, I had this fuck buddy in London who was like really into it, and I, I, was his name Big Ben? <laughs> oh, hey, actually, he's like a guitarist with like this famous band. And so um, I totally forgot. I had it in my carry-on, and I was running late, and I was going through security, and they stopped me, and I'm like, what? You know, da da da, da. And they're like, you have a fishing bait in your in your uh, bag here. I'm like, that's a, that's not fishing bait. You know, yeah. because I'm like in the rush, and they're like, well, what is it? I'm like, um, yeah, that's a, those are weights for cock and ball torture, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they're have like ever, all of a sudden they like dropped it immediately realizing that that had been on somebody's penis have you ever been with a guy that does characters because yes. a lot of people I've always wanted to have sex with John Leguizamo have you ever because you know he does like the Asian guy and I have a huge like Asian fetish he does the tranny thing really well and we know I have the tranny fetish you know you and ever, I love Latin so I mean 
But mm. he runs away from me like I'm the crazy stalking fan or something. Because you talk very rapidly. Yeah. That's why. You don't seem perverted. I'm not saying you're not, but right. you, you talk very rapidly. You seem very... Um, it's because I'm like, I haven't slept in like... For, I'm like on sleep deprivation high. Yeah. Because I don't know if he wants to... If he's going to... But Chip Chipperson is a guy who does a lot of dirty talk on our show. Uh-huh. He's a guy. Yeah. So, but like when we've had girls on Pal Talk or on right. the phone or something... And Chip will, like, kind of have a little phone sex with them. Yeah, get them all wet and stuff. So it's actually... (laughs) (laughs) Puts you to sleep? But no, I just, it's a character I do. <laughs> oh, I see. You do the character. I thought there was somebody what? else. <laughs> You're killing the illusion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah uh, nobody knew. Apologize. Uh-oh. Sorry. I, I just keep looking down at a little pink penis. <laughs> I, I don't like the color of it. If it was white, it would be fine. But just What's pink, it looks, with pink? It, it matches silly. my hair. It's like a dog's bone. It matches my penis. It matches my pussy. Get the mailman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is something creepy about a pink dick. Uh, what, you don't, what, like would you prefer it to be green? No, I don't like fucking... I don't like fluorescent colors. I'm dirty. I don't understand with a lot of these um, like dildos that they have out for women. Like they make no sense to me whatsoever at all. Like they're shaped like holes, like frogs and like animals and like dolphins. Like I don't want to fuck a dolphin. You exactly. know, yeah. like what the hell? And I don't it's want like, a pink penis that's in my not mouth. Not. Yes, you do. Don't <laughs> no. talk back to your mother. Uh-oh. I will make you know. Don't even start with me. Your mother is. Hey, hey all right, you going down? Oh, uh, oh uh, no! Uh, uh, all right, her hands. <laughs> Bad boy, bad boy. She just shoved her hand down my throat, which is kind of hot. Did you like it? <laughs> I did. Because I, I, I was going to spit on him, I but saw, I thought maybe that might be a little bit of so I kind of just gave him a whoosh. How would you feel if she spat in your mouth? I probably was, couldn't until we were talking. Like if I if I knew her a little bit better, yeah. I would allow that. Okay. And then I spit it. Then I shove it in my hand in the mouth and then spit on it. Get it all nice and wet, and then it goes in the ass. The hand was deep into his mouth, though. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't really bother me. Yeah, I've me. got his goo. You can see it. That's right. My mouth okay. is pretty clean. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, but he won't. Okay, so you won't suck the penis that's been in the dishwasher, but the hand that's been on the penis that's been on the dishwasher, you will put in your mouth. I don't see or the, the hand difference. That's been in the ass already. Of course. No, no one says speaking. that you're not going to have gubernatorial logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, it's like the hand is much dirtier than the dick is because you're opening doors the whole time yeah. and shaking hands. But again, I wasn't thinking in that moment. You were thinking you're you were going coming from flow, a, a sexual. But when you look at the fluorescent pink penis, you can't really quite wrap your mouth around it. And you know what? When you're, when you're completely you're naked, yeah. the pink penis is pretty hot, actually. Is it? Yeah, I, I have pink shoes that match it as well, and my hair is pink as well right now, so it all it works. What if she was uh, accessorizing with the penis? Would that be? It wouldn't or bother you, me. It's all the it's all the mentality that. You just need to me. see the boobs, probably. No, uh, I would love to. Yeah, but I, I, it's all the uh, it's all the mentality. It's the uh, dominating somebody is not like. Uh, yeah, it's all about. I had a dom one time tell me, Neil slave. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> no. I'm <a> slave, you <laughs> zilch. Like she just didn't know how to read the room. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm a like, yeah, I mean, guy. like, yeah. I, I like to use the word pet more. My little slave, pet. Even slave is okay, but the way she said it was yeah. so like fucking cheesy, well, like somebody doing exactly. a dom impression. Conan the Barbarian. Yes. <laughs> what do they say? Like dominance? It's like it, it's not like a commanding somebody. It's in it's a being in a sense of commanding. You uh-huh. know? What, I guess I'm not saying it right, but you, you know, it's like not making somebody do something. It's making somebody want to do something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's That's very very difference. subtle. I think real domination is very subtle. Someone can put you in that. There's very few people. Have ever been able to put me in that that really zone where you're high? It's fucking. It's hot when you're there. Yeah, like, I can is. put women in that just by saying sexy dominant things when I spank them. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. Really? You don't like being spanked? No, yeah. you're dominant. That's fine. <laughs> but I like to say things like. It's so funny because I recently did a scene because I'm I'm kind of like semi retired from the the business. Sure. I primarily produce mainstream films now and just DJ. But I did a, a scene for Brazzers promoting their <laughs> their condom campaign, even though they don't allow condoms in their films. Um, <clears throat> so I did the scene with them. And like, you know, films have become so with the man being so degrading and dominating towards women. Yeah. Like me and the guy, the entire scene was like me and him fighting. You know, at one point, I, like, turn around and just clock the bitch. I was like, seriously, you're fucking with the wrong bitch. Like, no, 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 no. Was that because you were just taking liberties because that's the way things are done now? Yeah, and I'm just like, that's not the way things are done. Taking liberties, that's real porn talk, Sam. Well, (laughs) he was taking liberties with the young lady. I think I have a little gubernatorial logic myself. I'll say. Taking let's liberties. Hear it. Yeah. Let's, let's hear it. Let's hear your whole uh, philosophy that there. That liberties. was it. That was it. <laughs> Just saying the word liberties. Uh, like when I dominate a woman, I'll say things like, uh, take that, you. 
Take right. that, you I'm, bitch. Yeah, yeah, you. I'm going to do this until you have cancer. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's not hot. Yeah, that's not hot, babe. That's how you read the room. <laughs> exactly. Just bum everyone out. <laughs> like, not I'm going to die. Yeah. Why? Why would you keep doing this until I, just I have cancer? Like, I really want to give her, like, she it's knows like, she's getting spanked. like, if you're going to go there, good. then, like, you know, lock them up in the bathroom, like, in, in, in cold water till they're crying. Have you ever shit on anybody? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, uh, have you? Oh, my God, I have this great story. I did this uh, film <laughs> where I had a stunt shitter. Because I couldn't do it, so it was like so funny. Oh, no. I like had like this chair and over the guy, and I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. How are you and- doing scat in America, by the way? How are you doing those kind of films in America? Um, yeah, you know, it, it wasn't my production, so. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and the girl that did it is a girlfriend of mine, so I'm not going to say which production it was. <laughs> I almost did for a second of them, like, yeah, maybe not. Was it on a person or was uh, it into an object? No, it was on a person, and so it was, like, hilarious, because she's like, oh, don't worry about it, just get your ass off of there and I'll do it, right? So I'm like, okay, cool, so they cut the shot, she sat down, shit on him, and then cut back to me, like, for the, the scene, so it looked like I did the do. Wow, are there links to this? Not that I would see it, but. <laughs> not that you would. I think, it's, I think it's I called, look out of curiosity, I think it's called man attack or something like that. Man attack. Man yeah. attack. That sure is a man attack. We should also but plug the Twitters while we have a sec. It's uh, DJ Miss B X X X. Is DJ, that your real Twitter? Yeah, DJ Miss B Triple X. Um, and then you're also on Facebook, just Brittany Andrews. And, yeah, I've got like 10 I mean, Roland, Facebook accounts, so that, good Roland luck. Roland, put your MySpace them. plug on here. That's yeah, great for 1988. I mean, actually, you know what? Internationally, though, it still says really good for yeah, so it's a lot Miss, of It's Miss Brittany Andrews on MySpace if you're still... Everything is Brittany Andrews, Miss Brittany, except for the Twitter, DJ Miss B. Why don't you have Brittany Andrews that taken? What? Was Brittany Andrews taken oh, on Twitter? Oh, for Twitter, yeah. DJ Miss B X X X is the go. Twitter name. Yeah, and I'm just like really using Twitter a lot to promote my DJ stuff, so it yeah. works out good. What kind of legitimate films are you doing? Like what? Uh, oh uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a film that I, I should say legitimate, like mainstream. I should mainstream, say. mainstream, yeah. So yeah, I produced a film called Crumble, which uh, got into the Cannes Film Festival, it won six awards, and then I got another film that's been doing a small theatrical, uh, independent theatrical run called Trick of the Witch. Uh, I had another film that was about 9/11 called Blindfold that won two awards. I've got the film that what, what are they short films they long films or? uh the, the horror film that's a feature film uh the one in Cannes that was a short film how long is the short film 20 minutes uh yeah around 20 minutes what was it about um Crumble. it had Stephen Bauer in it from Scarface Oksana Lada from uh The Sopranos and um it was about you know kind of um uh, getting outside of your boxes and perceptions. It's a very kind of gritty uh, art house film. So, and then I've got a documentary that's coming out uh, called Stage Brother. It's starting its film fast run. I um, mean, it's got uh, a Jersey princess from the Bad Girls Club on Oxygen. She's in the. My ex used it. to watch Bad Girls Club, so I did yeah. kind of get roped in. She's going uh, to be at the Players Ball. Yeah. She's going to be in the limo with us at the Players Ball. She's fabulous. We love her. And uh, so, yeah, I got quite a, and I'm, yeah, just uh, got different things going on. So That's cool. Yeah. A couple that, of reality pilots uh, that I about, did. About, about what? Doing uh, adult movies or something else? Uh, the reality pilot. Yeah. Uh, one of them is called True Cougar Life. You're not a cougar, are you? I mean, you I'm so a cougar. Are you really? Yeah. I've, I've been a cougar since I've been like 28. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you look, then you obviously look a lot younger than you are. You look very young. Thank you. The Botox is working. <laughs> yeah? Woo! Yeah, because uh, it's definitely not like my healthy lifestyle. I mean, I'm being really healthy right now, but that's only because any, I'm so non-healthy. Do you, draw, do you do drugs? <laughs> well, I'm here supporting Kristen for her, you know, legalizing marijuana. So, oh, fair, okay. Uh, you know, it was like funny. Like last night, I took out the garbage really late, and like everybody on my floor at my apartment complex all smokes weed. So you can smell the different strains of weed. Like, okay, like apartment over here. Like, and I'm like, like literally, and I haven't smoked any, you know, for a month with my cleanse, and it's like. <sighs> Okay, which one has got the best stuff today, you know? And then this morning, too, when I was leaving, like, the, uh, like there's, like, everybody smokes weed on my floor. You can't smoke weed on the cleanse? Hot, no. Why not? Oh, geez. It's, like, no drug, sex, or alcohol. No sex, no sex? cleanse? No sex, yeah. Why? No drug, sex, or alcohol. I meditate every day. I go to church every week, and I feed the homeless every Saturday. So it's, it's like, like my Ramadan. cleanse. How long it's is a, it? It's, it's an 30 awful days. cleanse. It's 30 days. What day are you on now? 
Like 25. Well, you're really easing your way out of it with the strap on, aren't you? Ah. <laughs> yeah. Did you just shove your hand in his mouth? Yeah. yeah. Did you just shove it in his suck a dick? There was no penetration. What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You uh, force his head down Clinton to your crotch. Your and I was filling up when she first walked in and started just talking about the cuckolding. I was I was actually filling up, and I very rarely will fill up just chatting with somebody. What do you mean, fill up? It, my penis was doing this. Oh, <laughs> throbbing. I know when like, you started no, giving me the hand job, my, my toit was like, throbbing. Like a little bit of blood rushed down to the penis. Yeah, it, it jumped. It was like, it was like, that's, yeah. That's, that's, to me, that's the right, that's. You know, the the toite might be a little bit different than the the cock because you like the idea of her talking about her other experiences while she was with you. There, there were more. Yeah. Did your vagina? Any- did your vagina get bigger when you're turned on? No. Swell up. I like that. No. I like it large. No. <sighs> Not unless somebody's been like sucking on it. Do you have a big vagina or no? Uh, I have a medium sized cunt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You can say that here. You can, but I no mean, problem. I tend to like really giant ones. I don't know why. Because they remind me of a cock. Is that why? It's a, no, the cock thing? it's not. It's 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 um. I'm very oral. I talk for a living. What about I, you? Hold on, hold on. What I, 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 he's, he's normal. He's, he's, he's not normal. A, no, he's yeah, not. not a, but he, he doesn't talk dirty. In but me. you know what, though, a lot of times people like yourself, that's sure. vanilla. You just haven't been appropriately introduced to it. I just need the right person to shove no, a dildo true. up my ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's true. Maybe you just prefer to keep your intimate details private. That's right. Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking maybe for a career down, in politics. Maybe really a freak and no, I right. talk to him in private. I can see that. You look a little freaky, dude. You got Thank that you. little creepy kind of freaky thing going on behind those eyes. In a good way, though, right? No. Okay. In a, I think no. in a good way. I got Thanks. your back. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He's a type that's walking out of the kids' room with an erection saying, <laughs> oh, nothing to see here. Oh, <laughs> right, I'm, oh, yeah, no. It's my freak. I'm getting my freak on, right? We're all just having a good time. Yeah, I was just picking his rattle up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like Maybe infantilism too. I'm down with that. I've never. I'll put you in some that. diapers. Well, yeah. Infantilism. Yeah. yeah, there's something that's kind of hot about it. You did would, dress up Big A as a baby that one time to promote my book. I did. That was yeah. for humor value. It was very creepy. I think it's still on YouTube if you look around <laughs> for it. Disgusting. Yeah. We had a. We had a. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Like the whole changing the diaper thing can kind of be hot though. But I can't tell how dirty you are or if you're just really, like, uh, like you know all well this versed. stuff. Yeah, like, uh, are, are you a pervert or are you just really, really good at um, understanding perversion and what it looks like and portraying it? I, I can't tell. No, if you're I mean, on the radio, it's hard to tell. I started, I started doing this at a very young age. Well, I'm, I'm, not saying I'm Facebook not. friends with the, the first guy I've ever raped in the ass. Really? Cool. Yeah, it's funny because I didn't talk What's to him for Facebook like... What's his Facebook name? Ouch. I, yeah, exactly. Ouch. I didn't talk <laughs> to him for like standing. 20 years and then I reunited with him on Facebook and I'm like, dude, you're so famous. I've spoken about you in so many interviews over the years, you know. And the guy, you know, pretty much doesn't have much of a life, so... How did he take like, it? that's his claim to fame. <laughs> How did he take being raped? Oh my God, we were like 13, 14 at that time. Wow. And, Ugh. you know, it was one of those like things that? of yeah. like where I didn't know anything about strap-ons or dildos. How could you at that age? So, yeah, <laughs> thankfully. 13. But like every time I go to Home Depot, I say a small prayer to God to say thank you that nobody ever got hurt because the way that I first started raping guys in the ass was with um, these fluorescent light bulbs, the long tubey things. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, exactly. That, like, going to the hospital with shards of like broken <laughs> yeah. fluorescent Light never, the ones, the it ones never that, happened. Thank the ones you, God. That you can throw into dumpsters, and when they break, they explode. <laughs> yeah, yes. probably. Gotcha. Did exactly. one ever break? No, nothing ever broke in anybody's ass. I guess I've just always been good at penetrating. So you like that? Skill. So, uh, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. I've been doing it a long time. I was like a total punk rock chick when I was younger, and like me and my girlfriends would drink like Jägermeister, and we used to like wear all these. We used to go to like Ace Hardware and get like all these. Um, you know, like chains and, and make the chain is very punk rock right, to like right. make your own. We like drink Jaeger and like beat up guys. And my mom would like come knocking on the door like, what are you guys doing in there? Like so what position is a guy normally in when you fuck him? Like, is he on his stomach or oh hands and knees? Oh my God, this is the really hot thing about how good I am at like the whole ass raping thing is I have really big tits, right? Sure. Language. So, <laughs> hello, right? So I have really big breasts. So I have the guy on his back and I can fuck him in the ass and then put his cock in, in, in his penis in between my boots. So I can fuck his penis with my boobs while I'm fucking him in the ass. I would just hate looking oh. at my own stomach girl curled up like that. I wouldn't even <laughs> think about getting fucked in the ass. I just think how awful my gut looks. Your roll on the side. Uh, like yeah, a I, basset I, hound I fell asleep highly, on me. <laughs> I highly doubt anybody I've ever done that to has ever thought about their belly. Because, I mean, they get to bust a nut two ways at one time. 
Yeah, but I would rather, I would rather, I heard that prostate makes you come harder, but for me, it's like, it's just hard to not have to shit when someone's putting a finger in my, I don't mean to say that, I don't mean yeah, to turn no. everybody in the room on, but. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I prefer a cock in my ass over a finger. Two fingers are uncomfortable, but a cock just fits in perfectly. I guess. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know either. Yeah, he's only yeah. had small animals. <laughs> yeah. Sam doesn't even talk dirty. Yeah, I know both of them yeah. are just like being voyeurs. Kristen's like, I can't talk about this. I'm well, running she, for governor. But at least she understands. <laughs> Sam won't talk I'm dirty. I'm like, you're not mad at me for being the dirty bitch or a porn star that I am. She's like, no, girlfriend, we love you for all you are. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what nationality are you? I'm total mutt. I'm like a mixture of everything. I'm primarily German, though. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Caviar Guten party. Tag, Kinder. <laughs> you speak German? Hey, dozo. <laughs> I don't know if that's yeah, yes or no. That, that's a, that's a, I speak a little Japanese. But then, oh. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Roboto huge, taught me. I have like a huge Asian fetish. I Why? was in Tokyo when. They're awful. <laughs> oh my God, I love them. They're not oh sexy. My oh my God, I think they're I'm so turn, hot. They're they, not. Yes, I'm they on by are. Asian people. Why? <laughs> because oh they're not God, sexy. Their skin, their hair, their body types, how thin they are. They're just. Their asses, their, I mean, everything. Flat asses. Yeah, yeah, what, what asses? Oh, exactly. my God. Oh, they my God, the same like the hair on every one. The pinkest little butt holes right. you've ever seen. Really? Oh, my God, and their skin is so soft, and their bodies are just so... You like a billion <laughs> hairdos all the same? I, I understand liking somebody slim. That's that's one thing. Yeah, I love, like, Japanese guys, like, I love uh, Japanese guys with long hair. Well, they probably love you, too, because you're a big yes, blonde dom, they so they do. fucking must crave you. I had mm. this Japanese slave boy for, like, uh, almost a year. And I ruined, I just fucked him up for life. <laughs> Do you mind the guy kissing your hiney? You know, kissing my ass? I expect yeah. it. Okay, good. I'm your fucking mistress, bitch. Kiss right. my fucking ass. <laughs> Hello. Oh, cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Lick the latex and kiss my ass. Hey, do you ever not wear deodorant? I think that's really sexy, too. Uh, and what, like, have you licked my armpits? Yeah. Like a dirty bitch? It depends. It's a chemistry thing, though. Sometimes women smell horrible without deodorant. It's great. <laughs> women getting the wrong message from this show. Just <laughs> know, not right? wearing deodorant and stinking <laughs> up the joint. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. A bunch of rotten It's like pits. after you've been, yeah. like, doing drugs for, like, three days. Lick my armpit, yeah. slave bitch. Yeah. Smells. <laughs> Nothing worse than Gross. period pits. <laughs> oh. I didn't realize period pits were so they, they, I, I didn't, didn't either. I don't, I've never it's, it's had like that. It's like she's smuggling two sub sandwiches into the room. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Kristen, did you know about? Period pitch. I never heard of that in my entire life. No, and I'm hoping that most people listening realize that it's Brittany Andrews that's speaking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's all I'm thinking. Kristen's right like now. being oh. really quiet. She has nothing to do with any of this. I've been creepily staring at Kristen's legs the whole interview. I apologize. She's looking well, fabulous I, I looking today. Did you? You know what? Your legs look that, really good though. Like it's easier. I want to see your ass so bad. Me I too. swear to God. I look there too. You have really great legs. Thank yeah. you. I'm thinking you must have really nice butt. Like we need to like find a way because. She's running for governor, so she yeah. can't be naughty. But we can like do something like at a swimming pool one time at the beach. Did you hear? I got to see that ass because I mean it's I'm I'm scrunch obviously an bikini. ass woman. It's all about the so she has legs for What's days. a scrunch <laughs> butt? It's like the bikini that's it's, it's a scrunch and it's got a oh. seat in the middle and it pulls your butt up. Oh, I need one of those. Ten times better. Yeah, I just want to get the implants. Do you wear thong underpants? <laughs> <laughs> no, she wears my penis under My penis is a thong underpants. Oh, yeah, it kind of is. It is, totally. Those are very sexy material pants that you're wearing, by the way. Thank you. They're What's like the, spandex. I like that. It's a throwback to the 80s, babe. Yeah. Right. When you're a DJ porn star, you can get away with it, though. Fantastic. So tell us again about the party. The party. It is called the Players Ball, and we are encouraging everybody to come in their best pimp and Ho uh, ensemble. Are you guys going to be pimps or hoes? Uh, I don't know. That one's a that's hard a difficult question for me to answer. I'm a combination yeah. there, hub, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming I'll pimp as a bitch myself, out, but so I'm a hub as well. Enough, exactly. The Manhattan <laughs> madam herself. So, yeah, so, um, and it's going to be uh, at uh, 92 Ludlow. And that is at Hotel Chantel, and it is Friday night. It and starts at 9 promptly. Ooh. If you get there at it's 9, it is free. Free After for an 10, hour. It is $20 at the door. And proceeds of it is going to? To two charities. Uh, we're dedicating part of the proceeds to Jordan Sapino for his bout uh, with cancer, and the other is for Hope House, which is my nonprofit for the victims of sex trafficking. Yeah. Wow, okay. So, and we're going to have a ton of porn stars there. And a couple reality stars, you Woo-hoo. said, too. 
too. Yeah, exactly. We've got we've got like twenty people coming in the limo with us. We've got Pablo Escobar Jr. Woohoo! And, Great documentary, uh, by the way. About we got his some father. dominatrixes that Did are coming. That? My girlfriend Lola. Hold on a second. Right here. Sorry. <laughs> Did you see the Pablo Escobar documentary about his father, where he met yeah. the sons of people it. his father had murdered? I would love to see, it, but I didn't see it. Yes. HBO. I saw you. I saw your, you know, comedy on HBO too, and I, I got to tell you, I got through about half of it, and I felt em- embarrassed, and I had to turn Why? you it was off. Very dirty, I don't right? know. It was very dirty, and because I know you in a different capacity. Yeah, I'm dirty. So how, how do you guys know each other so well? That's oh, a good question. I know, right? Yeah, she caught me smelling her shoes and masturbating, and she had me arrested. <laughs> Jim did say that no, he friends. found Kristen very attractive. I she do. is freaking yeah. hot. Yeah. Hello, look at her. Yeah. Yeah. She's like half naked here today. Like she looks so yummy. Uh, it's wonderful. Well, the first I I've had sex in on. like a month. I'm going to like eat her alive in the green room. <laughs> the first I'm like, I got I my on penis show, on. I was in a suit <laughs> and everyone thought I would. And then Cheers. the next time in a dress and everyone was like, you've lost so much weight. And I said, no, I'm just <laughs> right. in a suit just showing some leg. So I realized here that I must dress appropriately. So was my special which is, too dirty for you? I'm sorry. No, no, no. It was, it was good. I was like, I was impressed. I was impressed, but a little embarrassed. So I, I turned you off. She's I didn't bashful. get through the whole thing. How cute. She's bashful. Yeah. What was that? Wait, but which one was it, though? It was, I think, your most recent one. Was I wearing a black shirt? You're always wearing a black shirt. <laughs> I know, but I wasn't wearing a long sleeve shirt. No, you were wearing a black shirt. Okay. That was, yes, I know which one that was. Was that a dirty one? I, I you know what? I actually did a little <laughs> of comedy back in the day. I, I worked at the improv for a while. Did a little Melrose? bit of stand up. Yeah, Melrose, and I actually did like a tour of their different, um, of all the different improvs in California. When did you do that? Ah, uh, that was quite a few years back. But I've done a couple of roasts since. I love doing comedy. It's a lot of Why fun. Why did you stop? Um, because you know, I actually like did that show. Um, oh, it was on MTV. Your mama knows something your, like that. Your, was it new? Like in the last couple of years? No, it was quite. Uh-huh. It's probably like maybe ten years ago or something. But yeah, for a while I was like doing the whole comedy your thing. Mama? And it's really. Remember really, that show on MTV? Yo yeah. Mama? But no, that Yo was Mama like... Yo Mama jokes? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. So... Wilmer Valderrama was the host. Yes, exactly. It was yes. on that show. Exactly. Okay. So... Oh, wait, how many years are we going back now? Because yeah, you guys exactly. are aging yourselves. Let me just throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though? I, at the end of the day... That was before my time. Let yeah. me throw the that great out thing, there. The great thing laughing. about it is, is that... <laughs> yeah, exactly. I poked out of a box. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? The good thing about it is, is the cougar and the MILF is fabulous right now. So I'm just going to rock out with my cock out and it's all good. I don't good. see you as a cougar. You Why don't you see I don't see you as a cougar, you as a cougar you either. Much, you have a very cute smile. You don't have a cougar mouth. You have a very cute little smile. That's because it's, it's, it's been on a lot of ass. Oh. That's a great reason for it to be that way. I'm an ass looking woman. I am. Are you? I am. You look guys' asses? Yes. Good for you. Yeah. I'm what a trooper. Job. What about you? Do you, look, do you look women's asses? No, they asked me about that. I think at some point in my life I might, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> You're not there yet. You're no. working your way up. You're working yeah, your way up. Yeah, just you not there. Just like go like from the, the knee right now. I was just going to say, <laughs> like, go <laughs> from the toite. Yeah. your way up. What is yeah. that thing called? It's like in between the toite and the ass, that piece of like. It's got a name. You need okay. to work your way down oh, that. The place taint? for your gum. The taint. <laughs> yeah, the taint. You got to work your way down the taint, babe. Yeah, I think. Like, each time, just, you know. But I'm only 28. I have a lot of life ahead of well, me. Dude, I was eating ass when I was 15. I well, you know, were also right? sober by the time you were 19. We all take different paths. <laughs> <laughs> I love eating ass. It doesn't even have mean, to be fucking showered. Can no. we after a good bout of the flu and a bike ride? Hey. Yeah, you also, like, nice. pit, like armpits as long as the morning's not on the I'm like, yeah. I'm I'm like into the armpit thing, too. There's something about like just doing dirty things. And, yeah. 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 I wish I'm we were best friends. It. You do? Yeah, I could be best friends with Brittany. Hey, yay. Would you be best friends with Jim? You want to come as my date? I can. I'm going to be alone. You can, you, we can take both of you. Yeah? You can come as double dates. Well, Arr. would you hang out with Jim? Like... In life? As long as he sucks my cock and is a good little bitch for mommy. Well, I'm sure at some point he'd be willing uh, to do both those things. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say that could be a safe bet. <laughs> that could be a safe bet. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I would do that even if you didn't want me to. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't happen, babe. Um, Carolina Man summed this up on feedback by uh-huh. simply writing, I want to have sex with both of these women really badly. Yeah. And that's how I would do it, really badly. <laughs> yeah. Really badly. <laughs> Poorly done. Yeah. I always get the ass. I love DPing. But I always get the ass. You do. Um, have you ever DP'd uh, a, a girl with another girl? Um, no, I have not. Me and my friend Porno Dan used to do that all the time. He'd take the twat and I'd take the ass. This Porno Dan, this porno Dan mm-hmm. sounds like he's done a lot in this Guy life. sounds like a real Svengali. <laughs> yeah. he, he sounds like he's got game. <laughs> well, we used to co-produce stuff and travel all over the world together. And man, we and he will fuck anything. Like anything. 
That anything. Is not a bragging point. Yeah. But it's it's interesting. <laughs> like, resume booster. It's like interesting it's to see like what Dominic he will Strauss do. Colin. I'm sorry. No, like no, and no. he can like be on any type of substance and like and he still will get it up and he will have sex with anything. So I mean, just you know, saying that it it was always uh interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Traveling around the world with Porno Dan. Yeah. I can't always get an erection. I have to kind of He can of always get an erection. And it's like, really? You know, like, I hear... <laughs> he did like an eight ball, and the, the bitch is like ugly behind the bar. And he's like going for the gold. It's like, really? Wow. They say pomegranate <laughs> juice is good for erectile dysfunction. Yeah, some uh, guys I are just that, like... I they said you have to drink it. I'm like, oh. Some guys are just like really good woodsmen. That's what we call it in the business. Good woodsmen. But Great nowadays, things. they they have Viagra. I mean, back in the day when I first... woodsman ever. Back in the day when I first started, they used to have to like shoot up their penises with needles. A cabbage oh. jet. Yeah. Oh. Like, yeah, because it was like the things that uh, the people that are handicapped would oh. use. What about Paul but now it's. Rams? Wait, 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 well, no. you know, they, they like did like a lot of broccoli, like Rams. Peter North for the big busted nut scenes, right? Oh, there's vitamins. Well, it's it's always been said that it's broccoli. And he's probably just lying so people fart on yes. stuff. He doesn't want to give away a secret. <laughs> he doesn't want people to know because he wants to have the big lows. So, what do you think? Wait, who's the best performer ever? Who do you think is the best, the guy that could. I, I would, I'm going to guess Nacho, but who would you say? Um, I really, yeah, I'm not really amused by porn guys. No, but I'm saying, who do you think is the, can fuck under any conditions? Yeah. Oh, like my friend Porno Dan, more than anybody else I've ever met. Well. Is he, is he in movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. he, he produces films. I mean, I mean, the guy can do so much drugs and his dick will still work. I mean, that's a real talent. And he'll fuck anything. That's a great, that's a, that's a, that's yeah, a great I mean. video testimonial. Yeah. <laughs> he can do so much drugs and his dick will still work. That's like a late night infomercial. Yeah. yeah, and like with a really ugly bitch, you know, it's, it amuses me completely. The talent. Oh, well, I guess that's we did it. true porn talent, man. Yeah, if you want to show is over. If, um, if you want to get all the info, you guys will be tweeting it, right? Yes, it's, we will. DJ Miss B Triple X, please yes. sign In up. Manhattan, madam. It's Manhattan Man, Madam. Is it Manhattan Matt, Twitter yep. dot com, Manhattan and Madam? It's DJ yeah. Miss B X X X. Yes, The word exactly. triple is not there. It's DJ yeah, Miss exactly. B X X X Yeah, exactly. Thank you. DJ Miss B triple X. And I've always got really fun stuff on Twitter. Lots of pictures and, and stuff. And then go to the party because you may go end to the up banging someone. Go to the party. Chantel, 92 Ludlow. The party. Yeah. yeah. I have to plug a gig at Tampa, Florida. I'll be at the Improv 29th of September through October 1st. Um, and then Pittsburgh at the end of, I think, next month. I think. Or is it hey. this month? No, it might be this month. Well, this is the end of this month. Right. Oh, September. It's in October. I'm in Pittsburgh then. I just <laughs> wanted to say a super duper thank you guys for having us on today and yes, letting us promote you. our party You're and welcome. our Twitter. And and I hope you guys can make the next one. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And we can do like a big, you know, costume party and you can MC it with me or something. And like give out some up. free prizes. I'll dress up as Uncle Paul. Exactly. You can be my bitch. You can be my whore, and I'll be your yeah, pimp. Okay. I'm going to make you do dirty things with the glory hole in the back in the bathroom. Sounds <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> well, Jim, thank you for coming in and carrying me through this. Oh, it was a <laughs> good time. Thanks to Levi and his uh, book is Deer in Headlights. Yes. My Life in Sarah Palin's Crosshairs. And uh, I guess we will see you tomorrow with the two hopefully not convicted fucking creeps. Greg and Tony will be back. We've got a big update. Oh, do uh, we? No, no, no. We will have a big update By tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. There's still nothing. Uh, I guess they're still in the courtroom. All right. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Serious XM. Serious XM. Yeah. Yeah. This is the OP and Anthony Show.